How's it going, pal? Fuck off. <laughs> That's pretty much my response. I, I do totally agree. What do you think about getting an interview while you're getting makeup? Does this seem counterintuitive? I really didn't expect this, honestly. I don't know why you guys are trolling so much. Listen, I think you look great, if that's any, you know, consolation. Uh, apparently, media people doesn't take that, so I need makeup. How much makeup, though? How long do you think it's going to take? Well, it's probably, like, half an hour, an hour. Damn, do you think it takes that long for Rihanna or Beyonce? <sighs> uh, no. Well, we can't all be perfect, I suppose. Hey, um, so Hooksy, yesterday. You're really going to take this out, huh? <laughs> it's kind of have to. My bad, man. Hey, um, 
yesterday they had the whole thing. Actually, personally, I just like this interview because your eyes are closed. It makes it way more entertaining for me. Because, yeah. see, like, I'm here, but also <laughs> I'm over here at the same time. Oh, my God. And, like, you have no idea. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, Nico took off his headset. It took, like, this big hole. Everybody started smiling. Tell me about that feeling. Uh, Happiness, they call it. What? When, <laughs> when Nico took the headset off because he thought we won? Yeah. Um, uh, that was a bit weird. But uh, it was all good and fun, and uh, I think we would have been miserable if we lost, but we didn't, so it's good. <laughs> so you rush up or twice? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, second one, you're just like stick it, like just stick the landing on the second one, right? I, it took it took some balls to call it the second time, yeah. but uh, <laughs> you know it worked out, so all good. Can't even be mad. Hey, uh, I guess I'll just let you get makeup now. Is that all right? Yeah, that's totally fine. <laughs> Let's get this over with. Funny that. All right. Good luck, man. Uh, so what are you next? I think I am. I don't know. I think I am. Then I have some some interviews, I think, with Nico or something. So, yeah. I think you guys are getting to calligraphy, too. Did you see that? Yeah. That's normal thing, I think. Always. Every media, we have some things to sign. So, yeah. Multiple things to sign. And, you know, it begs the question, do you know where any of that stuff goes? I don't know. Not Just really. signing it. Yeah. Just doing, doing my job. Doing what they, what they told me to do. Sign it, ship it. Okay. Speaking of shipping it or maybe just carrying it with you. I think you said something about taking the panda home off the desk, right? Sorry? The big panda from yeah, the desk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to take it home, but it's too big, so yeah. You got to find smaller ones. I mean, both of us are dads, so. Yeah, we need to. We need to. I don't know how big is your suitcase. Not that big. <laughs> Not even close. But it begs the question, are you going to go see the pandas while you're here? Have you, have you got a chance? or? I've been here, like, not in the same city, but, like, close Chongqing. Okay. Just, like, two hours away from here, and I've seen pandas already, so I'll see if I'll go today again to see them. But, yeah, I, I did it already once, so, yeah. It's like playing the same single-player game again on the same difficulty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, at least you guys look like you're having fun, right? Everything coming together. Everyone's like, oh, where's Hunter and Nico playing CS2? I mean... Today is kind of day off. We have just this media and we'll have some time to spend outside because we couldn't go at all since we came here. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to see some things today in the city. Is that overwhelming? Like when you can't, I don't know, kind of function? Like you can't walk out of the hotel or you're getting rushed or like you're at the venue and people are, you know, or people are trying to wait outside of your hotel room. All kind of crazy stories I've heard. Um, is that is that overwhelming to you? I, it is a bit, but it's nice to see that we have a lot of fans and uh, that we have a lot of support here. And I'm looking forward to play even more events. I think Major will be crazy. So, yeah, it is a bit overwhelming, but feels good at the same time. On the scale of fan interactions, would you say the wilder fan interactions happen here in China or maybe another country? I think China is number one when we talk <laughs> about fans. <laughs> I, see what, I see what you did there. And you can quote that. China, number one. Uh, yep. Yep, indeed. All right, well, I'll get out of your hair. Oh, he already skipped you. Yeah, what do you think about this guy? He's pretty good at the game, huh? He's the best. <laughs> I can I, say it here at least. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, how you, you guys play what? Six maps, right? Not all seven. Ah, uh, we'll see. Maybe in plus we'll play seven. Yeah, but then how are you guys going to play seven at the major and he's got the best stats on all seven? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's who he is. Check faces stats. Yeah. <laughs> some freakish stuff going on, I got to tell you. Um, but it is fun to watch, very entertaining to watch, because sometimes you're like, yeah, no way, this round's turning around. And then, oh, well, there's a chance, right? Yeah, he's doing everything, I don't know, crazy. Everything is possible if he's alive. Fair that. Well, Hunter, I'll leave you be, man. I'd go annoy him, but he looks pretty busy, so. He's not busy. He's just faking. <laughs> faking it. <laughs> Who, me? Pretending, pretending to be busy. <laughs> yeah, next, what you doing over here, pal? You're reading the forms, huh? No, I'm actually waiting for you. Oh, really? <laughs> I even made you a Look, oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot better than me hanging around right over there. Oh, my God, what happened here? Yo, let's go through the forms together. What do you think? Forms? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. The HLTV forms. Nothing, nothing interesting. Nothing like nothing. Nexa, this. Like, what are your favorite headlines when you like, I might click this, I might read this, but probably not? Uh, like, never read anything. Just interesting to see. When uh, we lose, everyone's shit. When we win, everyone's still shit. <laughs> so it's a lose-lose situation going on the forum anyway. Well, it's kind of like, a, I think, a Counter-Strike lore is like you win, you talk shit. If you lose, you just talk shit. But either way, like it all kind of comes together at one point. Um, so at least you guys made the playoffs, right? Yeah. I, I think we made playoffs every time. So it's good.
And uh, on that note, like, it looks like you're having fun doing it, especially like I was talking about Nico pulling his headset off yesterday before the game was even over. You guys, uh, a lot of smiles when things like that happen, even though it is a, a high pressure situation, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm here for the good vibes and I have to do my job. <laughs> See, that's the thing about G2. Like, you guys like to put on a show. And sometimes it's not even just in the server. Yeah, you might take three maps, 90 rounds of Counter-Strike, high octane. But uh, in that regard, yeah. Anything that you can tell us about uh, G2 that perhaps we don't know? I mean, everyone knows it, but it's all about entertainment, you know? That's what we are in the entertainment industry, even. Exactly. Uh, favorite part of China so far? Um, it's going to come up after this media day. I'm going to go to the to the zoo and see some pandas. That's for sure gonna be the favorite part of it. Yeah, I think um, I need to do that too. I feel like I, I have to almost, I feel like I'm obliged. Yeah, I mean, everyone's saying that this is one of the best like reservoirs of, of pandas in, in China. So I'm excited to see it. Interesting that. Hmm, a lot going on around here, man. What do they got you getting makeup next? Yep, I'm up next. Is that your favorite part of media day or is it just signing random things and this that or the other um no i think just signing stuff and getting done with it as soon as possible so uh pre-game let's just pivot here let's go pre-match what are you doing are you listening to music what are you listening to when you do it um depends like what part of the the, the pre-game um if you're like all together as a team usually don't listen to anything try to you know communicate uh with people you know and like talk as much as possible be a team they call it yeah, exactly. And then, like, when I sit down, Spotify's on and blasting some music in my ears. And well, let's talk about let's talk about that Spotify. But what's on the playlist? Um, it's actually a, a joint playlist from like okay. all of us together. So it's like a lot of variety up there. You'll find some uh, Serbian classics, yeah, some uh, you know, like Bogi Batina. That one? <laughs> no, no, not that one. That okay. <laughs> Uh, fair enough. Uh, maybe uh, maybe one day I'll get to peer into the playlist. Uh, but it always interests me because everybody has their own vibe, right? I think um, it's like in the open. Like if you're going to Spotify, there's like the the, the playlist. Um, it's a collaborative playlist. I yeah, think yeah, just yeah, add. Yeah, yeah. Oh my bad, bro. Yeah, man. I, sorry about that. Here, Hooksy, please, sir. Right here, sir, please. Oh God. Appreciate your time, Nexa. All good. Thank you. All right, it's media day here. We are just shy of the playoffs, which means, you know, that's tomorrow. So in the meantime, I'm working on putting together the uh, Chengdu Constitution over here. I think I'm going to try to work on this one myself, put my own John Hancock here. Uh, what am I doing exactly? Uh, so, so calligraphy 101, you have the paintbrush. Okay. Right. You have the ink. All right. And you have the piece of paper. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Go. So I can just go to town on this. Hey, man. Do but your I, worst. I'll do my worst. Oh, my God. What am I going to draw live on air? Okay. Yeah. So you dip it. In yeah. the ink, but not too much. Not too much. There's a finesse to this. So this is fun. Yeah. <sighs> all right. So what are we writing here? I'm going to go for the one thing I know how to spell, which is my name. Some style with it, okay. Ooh. okay. Boom. Now what? Checkmate. Thank you, man. Um, Hold this up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. All right. So, like I said, there was there was not many words I knew how to spell on the fly, uh, but I could at least put this together. It's actually kind of soothing to do this. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but it's a, a form of calligraphy. What's that? It's a form of calligraphy? Yeah. Huh. Well, thank you. I feel like I'm going to break this. I like this. the S. I like the S. Yeah. It's got a lot of style with it. Then you, so you can put different colors and whatnot. Is that right? Yeah, but this one is primarily just for the ink. Like, uh, uh, I mean, this one is just for the stamp. So that's the stamp. Like, you, uh, So you just you put a stamp in the, the red ink. And, yeah. Okay. But yeah. it's his stamp, though. Oh. But yeah, you stamp? Yeah. Nice yeah. Hmm. All right, like this? Yeah, all right. Oh boy. 
Yeah, this is like nice ink too. It's not just like regular ink for like a contract. You know what I mean? Yeah, because this that, is nice. That is a very thick ink right there. Oh yeah. Huh. All right. So where do you put it now? Like where? How do you place it on this? So you can actually just uh, stamp it anywhere you like. Where, where, you where, like well, that was. Uh, I was going to ask y'all whether I like it. How about right? No, I'm kidding. Um, like this. You probably need more. You can plan more print. Okay. Huh. That's actually really cool. I might have to start doing this at home. I said it's like very uh, therapeutic almost. There you go. Well, thank you very much, yeah, gentlemen. You can get these anywhere, man. Just yeah. go back home and See, get your setup. Usually at home, it's like watercolors and crayons. But here, I feel uh, more adulting. Mm. Um, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to go look for some players. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Cheers. Chin chin. No, no fist bump from you. Oh, hold on. What? Y'all go. <laughs> Hey guys, YNK here with Monesi from G2. We're gonna talk about CT side on Mirage. When you're playing with OP, usually I'm just moving around the map, playing more aggressive. After every frag, you can rotate, uh, you can move. And I just, when you have an OP and you shoot with OP, you should understand that people, when they hear the OP, they're gonna move around it, you know? For example, if you shot in, in window with OP, they're gonna try to search slow because like they know that op is on is not on CT, not stairs, not jungle, like not on the stairs, they can he cannot pick you with op. And it opens for them as well to search more for duels, to challenge people and uh, get an advantage. Like yeah. usually people are insta reacting short. Uh, like for example, if they're here and the guy is going up connector and op is shooting, nobody died for example from here. Like the guy will not go like this, you know, because he knows op is CT. I think most of the time like they will just try to reposition and just for example react short because there is no op. For example, like if you're playing here from, from CT with op, usually for example, let's say it's th this position, like that one, that one and that one, let's say 33%. And for example, you're trying to play from it. And for example, if you have the guy ropes staying, um, we call it ropes, yeah. staying and holding ups for you. And uh, uh, for example, you're going up ticket, they can only go from ramp and they can only go from, con from connector. So you can, I think it's worth take a risk and pick connector for example and because like if the guy will try to shoot you from ramp like i think you're gonna flick him easy i mean <laughs> you you will i mean probably you will let's say there is a top con top connector smoke and uh, i'm going connected with up you know and i'm, I'm playing like this and I'm holding short for people you know and i hear bouncing the nade and i'm gonna turn insta and try to kill because like it's chaotic uh, it's a chaotic situation that you have to really be ready for it you know i had trick I, I think I, I think it's working in Sisto as well. I you need to try and write <laughs> down some comments. Uh, when you start the window and you know that the window smoke is coming, yeah. Usually people are jumping on this and they're holding because like no no flash is blinding you. And if there is window smoke coming, try to jump here. I mean I know like maybe some some people use already, but I think in Cisco not a lot of people. And just when you crouch here and there is a window smoke, like you're, you're not behind the smoke you're holding still and maybe people will go uh, will go out without flash maybe but you're gonna shoot and you'll go back after you see how it's fast and i think it's really good entry and you should try but it's really good yeah and don't forget guys to play under window with op because like i think on face it if you want to get some milo earn some milo playing here with, with op like for example smoking underground in the, in the middle always smoke in the middle never smoke here because like if you're gonna smoke here then they know that most likely you're underground or under window so you don't give them insta reaction Smoke in the middle always, and uh, yeah, you're just playing here, trying to punish them, and I think it's easy frags for you if you're gonna play face it next time. That's from the highest level player as well, so you know this guy, he knows what's up. Thanks, Celia, so Thank much, you. and uh, see you guys at the next one. Intel Extreme Masters Shangdu is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Kadia. Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, 1X Bet, and White Market.
absolutely phenomenal. And Ace is the champion of the Intel Extreme Masters World Finals. Storm's still not quite done. MC is going to take this fight, though. Three seconds left. Last two rounds of action has got to start it well for ESC. And this is a massive move for Seth, but he's not content with just a Nexus kill. He we wants can to win. Up. And it's all done. A Trollic win. Now, every 12 years here in China comes the Zodiac Year of the Dragon. Symbolic of strength, power, good fortune. The last time we found ourselves in the Zodiac Year, we were on the precipice of switching from 1.6 in Source into CSGO. Now, 12 years later, we once again find ourselves writing a new chapter in history with the first Intel Extreme Masters CS2 playoffs back here in China. Question is, who is gonna be the Dragon King? It is obvious that the fans here are supporting G2. Any Faze fans? There are some Faze fans, but they're still supporting G2. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everyone is here. To... Sir, sir, are you supporting G2 too? Yeah, of course. And are you happy to see an event like this back in China? Yeah, of course. And who is your favorite player? Who should be the Dragon King? I think it's Malise. He's a good offer. He is. He's a wonderful offer. Yeah. On the one hand, he's young, and we are on the same age. I'm happy to see a, a, a young player on the stage and playing very well. On the other hand, I think a good offer is a very uh, important factor for us to win the team, uh, to win the game. So I think uh, Malise is good, and G2 is good. <laughs> Let's go, G2. Let's go. Looks like the uh, G2 Mania is very real, Maniac, and I'm sure they were part of the crowd that was making hella noise yesterday in that game versus VP, which I think is uh, fair to say it's a bit of a steamrolling from G2, right? Oh, absolutely. It was a statement. I think G2 really fed off the energy from the crowd. Definitely fan favorites here in Chengdu, and they put any doubt to bed. Monesty had incredible moments. The clutch on overpass, nobody will forget about it. Nico had good moments. Hunter stepped up on map one. This was very comprehensive for G2, and it sets them up perfectly for the rest of the event. Yeah, let's talk about their next opponent. That is going to be Maus. Now, if you think you are getting a bit of nostalgia here, yeah, that's right, because that only happened a couple of weeks ago. First VP, then into Maus in the quarterfinals of the Major. Um, and I think we've got more questions than we do answers about Maus on the stage, right? Yes, listen, I feel like we are stuck talking about mental side of Counter-Strike here because the last game was so close. You're talking about a mere few days uh, between Copenhagen and here and not a lot of tape for Mouse to work on. So we've had interviews with Chuhi. He's talking about Zipix coming in, having a bigger role. So that's a little bit of the Pandora box we're opening with Mouse. How can you mentally prepare yourself for a battle? Because you know G2 is ready. They show it to us. From a game that was basically a steamroll into quite a close series, which I didn't really expect. Liquid versus FaZe. Uh, that first map was absolutely incredible. Kind of heartbreaking that Liquid weren't able to uh, pull off what we kind of all thought was going to be the impossible. Yeah, you're right. It is a little bit heartbreaking, but at the same time, I felt so happy seeing Liquid give us some good Counter-Strike, right? I was afraid that this would just be a, a, a fluke, not even a fluke, just disappearing to thin air. Yeah. We were all wondering, we were wondering about the proof of concept for this team, and I believe it has been established. The Counter-Strike they played in Chengdu was great. They were very close to pushing phase, three maps, overtime on the first map. We saw Kadian having popping off moments. This is what I wanted. I wanted to see life from Liquid, and of course they're going to be disappointed, but I do think they have nothing to be embarrassed about. Matthew, I'm going to let you take the words out of my mouth. What am I going to say next? What have we got coming up in the semi-final? Ooh, we have a little bit of phase of Astralis, and I won, I'm ready for it. And what does that mean? That means that... 2019 rematch, there we go, I said it, we've stolen your bingo card. Um, I think we need to go in and get the semi started.
you walked right into that one. I'm not going to lie. Enough Nevertheless, we have got quite the tasty menu of Counter-Strike up today. I've got, of course, Mathieu, Elfish, and special guest Kadian joining us today. Um, obviously, commiserations for the matchup yesterday, but that was incredibly impressive from you guys on the stage. What is the kind of the feelings now you've had a night to reflect on that uh, face game? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, definitely a bit hard falling asleep last night. A lot of uh, adrenaline pumping in the body. I think, you know, uh, actually saying it pretty well that like this was kind of the level of play, the way of playing in the big stages that I came to this team to be a part of. And uh, that kind of goal and that kind of level has not been met until this event. So it was a great sign of life to kind of have that feeling of being back. Also myself, I don't think I've hit my CSGO level yet in CS2, you know, being named the 18th best player in the world of uh, last year and then kind of just being, I wouldn't even call it average, I would call it a little bit below average, is, has been pretty tough. But yesterday I felt that kind of spirit inside myself again, that kind of Kadian that I want to be with the clutches, the flicks and stuff like this. Um, and I'm actually really proud of the showing from the team here, the communication, the way we played. Of course it stinks not to win, but I think just looking long perspective, it was great to be a part of. And definitely, I mean, it might have been hard prior to Chengdu for you to have a clear idea of where you're at. Because yeah. you look at your land records, sure, there are a few losses, but it's against big teams. Yeah. You don't have a lot of tape to go off. So did that change your own perception of your team, what you were able to do here? I think so, yeah. I think, you know, it, it definitely gives people a bit more trust within each other that we pulled off these results and against these teams. I mean, I'm still not going to... I will also be realistic and say that it is tough coming directly from the major, like yes. going deep to the playoffs. Like, uh, the, but we also did play three top eight teams. We played Maus, G2, FaZe, Heroic was also top ten. Like we had a, we had like the toughest uh, way here of probably any team, and we did show really great potential. But I mean, it is tough. I know it energy-wise. I've been that guy who went deep playoffs many times, yeah. and who went deep to the major. So, um, but I think it, it's a new sign of life. It's some new motivation that we're going to bring bring with us for the end of this uh, season. How necessary was it for that team necessary. to catch a little bit of momentum? Necessary. Because I don't know about you, but we yeah. were all wondering, yeah. like, oh my God, is this just coming apart? Like, was this just a bad idea? The it kind of sank into our minds. Yeah. Was that any thoughts similar for you? I mean, yes and no. I think it's been tough. Yeah. It has been tough. And uh, joining Team Liquid, I knew that there was going to be some difficulties and that it was not just going to be easy from day one. But I didn't expect it to be this hard and, 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 and like it, it, it has been really rough, you know, also because there's a lot of expectations from ourselves, from the community and truth be spoken, also because of how everything worked out with us having zero points in the ranking, having to play open qualifiers, not being invited to any lands. We only really played like the Amar and uh, Blast groups. Yep. Like that's what we have played. And I know. we've been together for like five months. So what, what, what sample size are you judging from? The online qualifiers? The, you know, yeah, I think... This is going to help us moving forward. Um, we are not there yet at all. I think we are. We still have a lot to learn in I terms mean, of how to play and stuff. I so. guess on that same topic, though, like, do you, do you think people kind of underrated you a little bit coming into this event? Because again, there wasn't really that much to look at. You've got a lot of big names on this roster. I mean, the results maybe not were not necessarily there. But even we came in going, well, we're not really sure what to make of this Liquid team. Uh, maybe, but I will also say, like, being on the other side, I've tried that a few times. Kind of like you look at the names still, and you're like, well, I'm, I'm still. If I'm playing Yakinda, Nev, Twist, Skulls, and Katie, you know, maybe they're not in the best shape, but at any given time, if one of these guys has, or two of these guys has a good game, it will be super difficult. So I think maybe some people, I don't think they underestimate us, they just know that we're not at the level that we can be at yet. So. Give me some thoughts on Skulls, because obviously in your uh, tenure of your career, you've worked with a lot of young players that aren't so familiar with these big stages. I'm thinking of basically the entirety of Heroic, right? Which you managed to get to so many grand finals. What's Skulls like in comparison to some of the other young stars you've uh, you've worked with? I think he's in a way a bit more introverted. I also think that one of the things we talked about was that um, I heard someone say on the desk, I don't know if it was maybe you, Mathieu, but It's like, a good uh, thing I'll take credit, yeah, otherwise yeah, I won't. Yeah, I think it was a good analysis point, which is like, okay, he's coming in not as like the fifth piece in a, in a team that's already stable. He's coming in as a team that's being built already, like from the bottom. Yes. So it's like, we can't just accommodate him because we need to accommodate everyone in trying to feel comfortable. So in that sense, it is harder to be the new guy. I think definitely um, it's a, a bit of a culture shock from him, having only played in Brazilian teams, being used to being with his friends all the time and now extra traveling, not always with the teammates, language is different, all this kind of stuff. And um, 
I think yesterday is definitely going to be something for him as well. That I mean, he enjoyed being on the stage. He had smiles. He enjoyed the experience, and that's going to help him along the way. I still think he needs to push harder if he wants to be a consistent part of Tier 1. Because going from that Tier 2 to Tier 1, that is not an easy task. We've seen it so many times. Okay, this guy is insane in Tier 2, but can he beat it in Tier 1? It's a hard task. He has the right people around him. It's not going to be easy, but he definitely has the talent and potential to do it. I mean, speaking of the big stage experience, uh, Mao's yes. always a team that we look at and go, okay, great in groups, stage is where we have questions. What's your take on maybe how they're handling it? Do you think there's some truth to the kind of narrative that we've been putting out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've also been on the other side of the stick a little bit where people were talking about heroic a little bit this way, that like best in groups and, and a bit tough in, in playoffs. I think Mao's in, is in the same position. When I see them play in playoffs, I definitely see situations where they're not handling themselves in the same way. And that is also partially to be expected because it is a different game, but they need to try and mask playing as much as possible the same way that they're doing in groups. Because they're playing amazing in groups. They're playing some of the best CS, really. They're playing really, really good. But on the stages, I've seen a few times now in playoffs where I've been like, well, this is not the same team. Right. I mean, you have a lot of experience now with the stage. And I would be very interested in your take on how they talk about the situation. Because we've had two sides of the coin with Mouse. At some point, they told us, well, you know, we have to try a bit harder. We have to make our moves. We have to establish ourselves. And sometimes they said, ah, we're just going to play as if it's normal. I feel like they're dancing a little bit on that one. <laughs> Where do you land on with your experience? We, we, we kind of tried the same in Heroic, to be honest. I remember at yeah. the beginning as well, like we also had the, you know, if you go back in Heroic time, we had the thing where we were really good online. At first, everyone was saying, okay, can they do it on LAN? Then we started the to do it on LAN, and it's like, okay, can they do it on players? Okay, then uh, can they do it in finals? And we tried all the kind of steps as well, where in the beginning, we're like, ah, it's just the same game. Like, don't worry about it. Mm, didn't really work out. They were like, hey, listen, guys, be honest about how you feel coming into this game. Like, how is your gut feeling? What is it that makes you nervous? What is it that, yeah, that you're worried about? And in my opinion, the captain has a lot to say in how you handle these kind of moments. And uh, I remember situations where I've said things that really impacted players the good way and also situations where I've said maybe the wrong things, you know? Okay. And these kind of things you, you learn to navigate as a captain. What do you need in order to feel good coming into the game? Without being too revealing, what did you say that you ever regretted, for example? What, what, yeah. what route did you take that, you know, in hindsight, maybe that wasn't the best way? Obviously, without being too revealing. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I can, maybe I'll go the kind of opposite way and say, like, what worked? For me, one of the things that, that worked was saying, okay, being nervous is normal. Everyone is going to be a little bit nervous when you go into the stage. It's about what the nervousness does to you. If the nervousness does to you that you're not going to make the same plays, you're not going to communicate the same way, you're not going to trust your teammates, then being nervous is bad. If nervous is having a little bit of jitters in the first round, but being really excited to play and being aware and stuff like this, this is a good part of being nervous, you know? And I think it's all how you kind of navigate the words in your head. I know. And uh, yeah, in the end, it ended up working pretty good for us. We still didn't play exactly the same way we always wanted to, but we definitely found a way more consistent way and made people more comfortable. What is it like having that kind of responsibility as an in-game leader that, you know, you feel like you're taking that kind of onus on for the entire team? I mean, I think, you know, it's also been like, sometimes people also look at me a little bit and be like, uh, oh, he's the natural leader. Yeah. I mean, I played with Mathieu as well, like uh, 10 years actually ago. actually did play together. Yes, like 10 <laughs> years ago was the thing. And uh, I mean, I've always been good in some aspects of like leadership, but not in every aspect at all. And that's kind of the thing where you live and you learn and you mm -hmm. try things and you, you learn to navigate. For me, the responsibility now is great. I love having that kind of responsibility. I know, I, I love knowing that I can make you feel good going into this game. Mm. I, I love having that kind of responsibility. I'm not going to shy away. I'm not going to, I'm going to be like, yo, bro, we, we're going to have this fucking game. Go ahead, go I'm going to do my best analysis. He's ready to get up on stage now. But what I was going to say is like, obviously for someone like Shuhei, who's maybe uh, been, uh, been around a little bit less long than you have been, I guess maybe he's at that point that you're talking about where he maybe doesn't want that. I mean, not, not to put any words in his mouth necessarily, but you know, as you said, it's like a learning experience, right? So he's not quite that far along that timeline yet. Yeah, yeah it, it's more difficult because he himself needs to learn how to cope with handling the stage. And kind of you need a little bit to know how to handle yourself before you, need, right. before you can help handling others, you know? I think he's done great in a, a few games as well. Like, let's not forget the Paris run as well. Oh, yeah. Kicked my ass in the semi-final of the major <laughs> as well. You know, That's like, right. He, he has done a lot of good stuff in, in, in these games as well. And this is maybe going to sound a little bit stupid, but like, I played the show match in uh, Royal Arena. Yeah, Gabby was try hunting Zoe guys a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> but we tried to get the young, young boys a, a, a good run for the money. But we actually had Cyclone, you know, as a coach there. Mm. And I must say, like, 
he made f- f- people feel really comfortable about playing on the stage, like these uh, Altex, right. Sugar, um, and Kristen, who didn't play on the stage before. So I think they can lean a lot on, on their coach, actually, for this in mm-hmm. the beginning. And then she should just trust himself to make them play the same way in-game. The out-game stuff, I think Cyclone is doing a good job. Speaking of Danes, you know I've got to ask about Astralis. Yeah. Uh, obviously making it through to the semi-finals with two of your ex-teammates in there. Um, what's your take on their form at the moment? And do you see that continuing on, on this big stage? It is definitely going to be way more difficult for them to continue playing this way on the stage. Um, they caught FaZe a little bit on an off day, but they also played amazing CS. Like, I rewatched the games because I was preparing for FaZe. Uh, the VP1 I didn't see, I just saw the scoreline, but there's no doubt that talking about current form at this specific tournament, they are the one in the best shape. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if they can continue the same form, they're expected to win the entire thing. The question is if they can. We saw some of the sometimes difficulties we had converting the same group stage level to uh, the big arenas. And it will be Device's first time leading in an arena. It will be, I think, Bro's first time playing in a big stage. Mm. So it's not going to be easy for them. But I will say they played some, like, not just, like, you know, they played a little bit of the heroic as well. And uh, <laughs> I uh, mean, Stone and Yabby are kind of firing the way yes, he used to are. work they with really you guys. Are. And yep. uh, they've also been preaching this in interviews. Like, Device is saying, like, they are not compromising. They want to play this way. And it, it's the kind of mid-round adjustments moving as a CT, the utility uh, usage. You can really see that they are, like, thorough behind it. That There's a thought behind it. And they're not shying away from, like, grouping and fighting and stuff like this. And, uh, yeah, in my opinion, they've been playing some beautiful CS. How could that be dangerous to have such an easy way to the semi-final to destroy everyone? And then, like, obviously there's a part of confidence. And then on the other hand, how do you react when you're actually faced with threats? Is that something that you have experienced? I think if you look at their shape coming into this tournament, they probably want every momentum they can take. Like, uh, they has been ha- they've been having a rough few months. Of course. And uh, I think, you know, would it be nice for them to get settled with a bit of an easier opponent in the quarterfinal? Yes, but I mean, we had this talk a lot in Heroic as well where, like, I, I feel like there's a lot of people who has complete wrong mindset about that the upper bracket the, um, final in the groups where they're like, yeah, I mean, if we lose, we're not out, you know, like, it's not really an important game. I'm like, you're literally playing to get ahead of two more teams yeah. in, the, four. In, the, in the tournament. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Like, and, and we never lost in Heroic those, uh, that upper bracket game, and now they didn't either. And I think that's because they had the right mindset of going into it. But I also think that FaZe is probably getting a bit more in the rhythm now. Mm-hmm. They're getting a bit more adjusted. They're getting closer to the trophy. The major disappointment is going to be further and further away. It's going to be a banger of a game. Not I mean, lie. it seems like a date with Destiny that FaZe would make it to the grand finals as they have done with every single CS2 event. Um, Kadeem, we do have to wrap the conversation here, unfortunately, but thank you so much for joining us and uh, really looking forward to seeing what Liquid are going to be delivering moving on forward. But as we progress forward, it is time to check in with our casters. It's a big day as we move on to the semi-finals. We've already had to say goodbye to a couple of teams. VP copping an L yesterday, and the same can be said for Liquid. So now, as we kind of stand here looking into these semi-final matchups, I've been loving the, the game that we've been getting out of folks like Nico and Monacy for the G2 camp. They'd probably be my front runners for MVP, but Hugo, how are you feeling on the DHL MVP front? Oh, it's, it's competitive. Brokey's had a phenomenal tournament through groups through yesterday's quarterfinal as well, but now we have a couple new rosters entering the stage. Harry, straight to the semi-finals, Miles and Astralis, and if Device can keep up what he was doing in that group stage and take the trophy here. Astralis back in China. I think there's definitely a case to be made. For me, my eyes on Yimpat today for the Mao's side. He's had a great group stage and we want to see if we can do it on the big stage as well to keep it up into the playoffs. The entrance to the arena is already open, but the fans are gathering at the entrance where the teams are arriving. Look how many fans are here. That is absolutely amazing. But before we go to the team arrivals, let's check out the Colex. New collection from Colex. This is the end of an era, signifying the end of CSGO moving into CS2. Within these packs, you can get plenty of signature cards. There's great new art collection in there as well. And Dupree, five-time major champion, the only player with five majors to his name. He is the Grand Master card that you will certainly want to try and collect, and you'll be so lucky if you could unbox. Even to me, as the Ultimate Na'Vi fan, I do want to try and get my hands on one of these. So let me start getting inside of this and seeing if we're going to have any hits, any good pulls that we want here. Ooh, ooh, first one. Legend Twists coming into play. And this one says, one times a major finalist. So we're covering off the finalists in there as well. 
two time major champion Fallen. Crimson there as well. And these ones, to know what these cards are, these are for you to get signatures on yourself. So we see a lot of people and collectors taking them to events, getting their own sign. I've signed some of these myself as well. It's just good for you to have. Oh, lovely. And a simple as well. So here we go, two of the art cards on here, device and simple. Legendary authors. One with four major set of name, one with one. So out of all the packs I've opened, these are some of my favorites. And this one is a special one of 500. I've got number 300 of the cards available and you can get yours at the ESL shop. there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes, you see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. And last question is, of course, for this tournament coming in. Uh, goals and objectives, a very diverse cast of teams. Some teams that, of course, you, you faced over in Copenhagen, you'll have some mm. head-to-heads you're familiar with. Mm. Any particular objective? You know, I assume playoffs is, is a must for, for G2 at this point. It has to be. I, yeah. I, I will give you uh, what, what I say to the guys every yeah. tournament we go. It's like, Win, yeah, that's always like uh, something what G2 wants to do. Yeah. But for me, it's the most important that we leave this event. And when we talk about the event, we are like, are we better? Mm. Like, are we better than the last event? Yeah, I nice. just want us to have this feeling that no matter the result, we end up the event feeling that we played better than last event. And at some point, like you cannot, there is no, no point where you get like to the peak. Like there's always stuff you can do better. There's yeah. always uh, things you can do better in game, especially in international roster. So for me, if we leave this event feeling that we play better than we play the major, I'm happy. I like it. Yeah. So it's good? the same mindset I also had. It, it's, it's not so much result based. It's more about like, can you look yourself in the eyes after and yeah. say like you did what you could. But as Vix also said, we are still T2 and we don't go into a tournament without expecting a win. That's no. just how it is. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. In terms of like, we come straight from a major, and uh, I doubt that anyone on our team has the same amount of hours past two weeks as, as we had at the Come major here. semifinal because simply like boot camping for a month straight, yep. then going to a two week tournament, then home for four days where we practiced one and a half of them. Yep. Sorry. It's just. Uh, <laughs> No, I wanted this one. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to keep the steam to 100%. 100% you know, oh, yeah. so understandable. Yeah. So yeah, just going to try and come away feeling like a, a better G2 than the one that arrived. Yeah. 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 Or the one that left Copenhagen. That's oh, always yeah. the main goal. Ah, really cool. Also, you know, give the fans feeling that oh, this team. They got I, to see I love G2. to watch them. I, yeah. I need to come and watch. Uh, I need to turn on the game and watch yeah. them. Then we Perfect. are in a good spot. Mission accomplished.
Bulldozing VP in the quarters and Nico back in form. G2 are copy pasting their major run and also hoping to replicate those same successes. That's because today they are teed up versus Maus, this time in the semi sure. We know that they are group stage gods, but the playoffs is where we have questions. So time to get some answers in a vibe check. Dory, how are you doing? I'm feeling great, and you? I'm feeling amazing. I mean, look at that sun. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm hella excited uh, to uh, get on the stage and uh, see the Chinese fans. You had like a signing session yesterday, right? Yeah. Do you think like maybe that will get like more fans on your side? Uh, I mean, I hope so, but uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter too much. I think uh, I'm just up to see the crowd cheer for us or G2. It doesn't really matter and uh, just have a good game. And did you have an opportunity to check out actually the whole like, arena? Uh, yeah, we were there for like two minutes yesterday. Uh, I think it was pretty good. Uh, it was nice to see the atmosphere and uh, people's energy. So I'm just excited they will uh, bring the same, if not better today, and just play. Just play? All right, then. Looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Thank you. Mao's making their first appearance here at the playoffs at the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu after what was an absolute masterclass in the groups. Elfish and Machu join me to be breaking this one down. We know it's a guarantee almost, Elfish, that mm. Mao's will be doing work in the group stage. Yeah. This is where the expectations get piled on and they haven't really shown much uh, so far. Yeah, I mean, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because every time we talk to them about it, they kind of say, well, we don't really feel the same way that that narrative is necessarily indicating. Obviously, on the desk, we have to talk about what we see in the server and basically the results is all we can really go off of. But at least as far as the players are concerned, the conversations that I've been having with them, they're kind of saying, well, we don't really feel like we have this like playoffs curse necessarily. They just feel like they still play their own game and they still do their best and maybe it's just a case of bad luck, but we'll have to wait and see whether or not that's going to shift up today. Though what I will say is it seems like, at least for Mao's, it's not as big of a deal as it is for us. Look, it is very obviously a psychological mystery, an equation they're trying to solve. That's what we're looking at when it comes to Mao's. And you want to use placebo effect? You want to use self-fulfilling prophecy? Hell, you want to tell me the sky is pink, the unicorn's flying around if you want to win? I don't care. I don't give a damn how you get to that point. But this is their journey. They're currently the team in Counter-Strike that has the biggest discrepancy between group stage and playoffs. No amount of words are going to change that. The results are here in the making. So they are trying to figure out a way for them to perform. It wasn't the case in Copenhagen and Freya, that was, that was pretty close by, it was a few days ago. Yeah, uh, and we're not just waffling with, you know, some syrup and some nice blueberries on top. We've actually got evidence. We've kept the receipts, Machu, because you've got uh, some kind of examples, if you will, of how exactly Mao's performed versus G2 on that stage. Yeah, there were a couple of very hurtful moments that happened in that Copenhagen game that really exemplify what we talk about when we say nerves. Uh, round two of the first map is how things really went down. And here, have a little bit of a look. Zertion is going to be a person of interest this entire conversation. One point 20 on the clock and here a cross of a smoke that isn't really warranted that has no real reason no pressure on the a side and suddenly after winning the pistol round you give up an entry you disbalance the whole defense and then this is when g2 just strikes onto the a side now you could look at it in the isolation and say but maniac is just a round what you're talking about no that that's the wrong way to look at it it is the second round of the first map of a major quarterfinal and it psychologically set you up in a way of, oh, oh, damn, I, I messed up. I know I messed up. And then, unfortunately for Zertion, the nightmare is going to continue. First by round here, Hooksy crossing a smoke, bear with that MAC-10, double entry immediately, bam, that's what you know, call an absolute uppercut to your face. You feel like you haven't even played the game. The scoreline is 4-1. to one. It's going to be 4-1. to one. You haven't even played the game. They, they were just knocked out immediately. Kind of speaks to the mindset as well of Maus when they get into these kinds of games that maybe they feel like they need to do a little bit too much and in that case you know you're trying to force the issue like you say it's round two you've won the pistol and you're pushing a smoke at the bottom of banana are they trying to make something happen when they don't necessarily need and honestly i would go even one step further than that it's not about whether you're trying a little too much it's how you cope with it if it doesn't work out mm. and that is really the feat of like the champions they will sometimes try things that really is nonsensical hey i could pinpoint at phases moments on stage where you're thinking what is brokey doing like my man, he's just waffling. But if it, if it doesn't work out, he'll bounce back the next round unencumbered, no problem. Yes. With Mouse, it's a different story. They slowly disappear. They fade away from games when that doesn't work out. And that's why it's a little bit of a tricky situation. I just want to play devil's advocate here for a moment, Try if me. you will let me. Um, I'm just looking at who they faced on the other side of things. Sure, okay, I totally buy into that's not characteristic exertion. That's him maybe trying to do something that he, he shouldn't be able to get away with on a big stage. But look at the opponents. It's either been G2 or Faye. 
days. So you know that you're going to get extra punished if you try and pull off moves like that, and they just don't work. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, like these are the teams that you're going to be facing in the playoffs regardless, right? I mean, we can go and say, well, they played Tai Lu, they played Furia, they played Liquid in the group stage, and maybe these aren't the strongest of teams and things are looking really good for Maos in Chengdu. But at the end of the day, once you get to playoffs, you are going to be versing the G2s, the phases. So I don't know that it's necessarily much of an excuse because ultimately those are the teams you have to go through and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. You've convinced me, Elfish. <laughs> um, let's contextualize what we've seen from Maos thus far then. Group stage, what was your take? If we're not thinking about, you know, playoffs, different stage, la la la. What did you learn about Maos in the group stage here in Chengdu? Uh, I would say that up until the liquid confrontation, it was probably a little bit below what we are used yep. to. Agreed. And to an extent, I will give them the same olive branch we've gave to the likes of G2 of phases, the deep runs at the major, a little bit of exhaustion as well. Mentally, we know we know this quarterfinal was draining for Maus, and they were very down in dumps about it. They were very touched emotionally by it. That makes sense. So if you ask me, they did what they needed to do. They survived. They scraped by. They won some weird rounds. It was obviously not the best, but it is a feat of a great team to be able to win on your B game, and, and I think that's what they've done until the Liquid game. Then it was a bit different. I mean, that for me is the biggest thing when we're talking about all of these teams that make it to the stage, right? They can all have a bit of a stumble in the group stage. I mean, FaZe had a bit of a stumble as well against Astralis that they lost 0 and 2. That's obviously a conversation for later on down the track, but it is always when we when we get to the stage, when we get to the playoffs, it's a different ball game. And so as long as you can make it through the group stages in any way, shape or form, as long as you're there to perform on the day on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, then that's really what matters. And now, Matthew, we had a nice little yap outside, didn't we? And you mentioned uh, you saw something in an interview with Shue talking about Zipniks, which they actually are going to be trying to deploy uh, in this very matchup. And he's a man with so much experience. Surely you should be trusting him to, you know, get you prepared a bit more for the stage. Yeah, 100 percent. And if you were a Mouse fan, this this might be a, a copium that you get hook yourself onto, right? Because when Zip joins the team, immediately he's not going to transform the way they want to approach the game to think about the game and behave. That was a little bit prior to the major and Shuhi was very open about it. He said, at first, let's take it easy. Like, we have a good dynamic. You can help us gradually. But now he's been working with them for a bit longer. They've worked together in Copenhagen. And who else but Zip to have the experience on how you feel as a player, making plays, making moves on the stage, failing with some of these moves. So hopefully he can help them. He's not going to walk the path for them but he can help them, guide them on that path. Well, hopefully he has, because I guess at the end of the day, he's not going to be standing behind them on the stage. The only opportunities he's going to have to talk to them are right now, before the game starts, and maybe in between each map. But what a start it would be, I guess, if we're going to sort of discount the results at the major, if they went on to perform well here in Chengdu. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but I think it's beyond just what kind of input he can give immediately before the game. It's about just being together. Like just talking together, breathing the game, exchanging, hey, this is how I felt in this game. And after that play, that's what went through my mind. And I didn't know how to think about it. And just slowly building this experience, this sort of treasure that you can use when you are on stage. I think this is something that for him is an invaluable resource that he's got. Think about the amount of trophies he won, majors he won. Like surely I would just be SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants trying to just get, give me all that experience. Hit me, please. Tell me how it felt. That's what I would do if I was Mouse. SpongeBob like SquarePants. I just, I just saw like a train. Just suck it all in. I like suck that. It and you know what he was as well? 2019 Beijing champion. You walked into that one. Uh, from one day to another, I think it's time that we check in with Psycho. So, Cyclone, one of the topics that will be discussed at the table is the fact that when it comes to mouse, you guys usually just zoom through the qualifiers, through the groups real quick. But once it's on the stage, it's a different thing. We can only speculate, but you know the ins and outs of the team. Why exactly is that happening? I mean, first of all, getting to playoffs is never easy, right? You no. can never take it for granted. Coming here as well, there's the the major blues, I think, for every team, also especially the teams that made playoffs. So that alone, I think, is, is a good step. And then playoffs, you know, every playoffs is a bit different. We're working on it. We have a young group. Just want to let everyone know that it's a process as well. And intensely, we're working on it with, with Andreas, but especially also our sports psychologist, Ole. And of course, we have some things, and we're also looking into it. It's, it's an obvious thing now that having made seven playoffs, maybe we haven't gone as far as we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And are there any maybe new special mental preparations that you tried out for this this time? Um, Something that you can say or it's a secret? Yeah, uh, probably I can't uh, oh. talk too much about it, but there's always a few things that, that we're testing out and fine-tuning and, and looking into, of course. Also for this event, we're testing a few things out and that's probably also the phase we're in right now. And I think all teams out there know that once it clicks for us, we're a scary team. You definitely, especially like with that guy, with the Zipnix now like being like, like supporting the team. What exactly does he 
bring to you like as a coach? I mean, Andreas brings a lot of experience. He's, uh, he's tried it before. He knows also uh, how a group can work at the highest level and maintain it for some time. So he brings a lot of value, especially in experience. He's uh, pretty quick at adapting and understanding things as well. And yeah, just a, a piece of the puzzle. And the last thing, is the team extra motivated to play against G2 considering they were the ones that eliminate you from the major? Of course it is. We always look for improvements here and a chance to show that we can do better in Copenhagen. We want that. Amazing. Thank you very much, Sekrom. Thank you. Taz, when it comes to your team, people usually talk about Nico, about Monesi, but Nexa, during the last, I don't know, like few maps, like two tournaments, his stats are going up, up and up. What changed for him? I think it just uh, starts feeling more and more comfortable inside the team, and uh, we had a lot of uh, discussions and talks to make him comfortable and just uh, be more himself than uh, just, uh, you know, uh, piece in uh, for JKS. And is there a chance that maybe he's letting go of some kind of like IGL habits that maybe were holding him back and now he's just focusing more on the game? I feel like it's not about the IGL habits, it's more about when you're uh, an IGL, you know what you kind of expect from the players. And uh, he was there just uh, trying to learn the system. He didn't want to like uh, change stuff or put the stuff uh, his way. He just knew from the perspective of uh, leading that it's good to first uh, know what's my spot, what they need from me, and then he just starts more and more with adaptation. And you came here to the playoffs and you get to play basically the same teams that you just played in the major when it comes to VP, when it comes to Mouse. Is that a blessing or, or a curse that you're playing the same teams? I mean, personally, I feel that uh, we were lucky to play VP in a way that we were, we had a chance to like prove that the uh, major wasn't a fluke. Uh, and uh, with, with Mouse Sports, I mean, they're a great team. So I wouldn't say we are lucky playing them, but uh, definitely there is some comfort knowing that we won our last uh, game. So hopefully we will have confidence to do it one more time. All right then, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, super insightful information from both sides of the coin on this one. Let's just wrap up the mouse discussion very briefly because uh, Cyclone echoing exactly what you said behind the scenes, Machu. Once course. they get their ducks in a row and can deal with the stage pressure, they are a damn dangerous team. That's the feeling that we have. Like They are one reference series away on playoffs to unlock what is obviously an incredible Counter-Strike that they are playing. The quality that Jimmy has as an anchor, the plays from Zershin, the lead from Shuhi, some of the multi-kill ability from Torji, all of the things that we sometimes don't see materialized on stage, if it comes together, they, I mean, we, we know how good they can play. I like what he said as well about changing things up. Obviously, it didn't go into too much detail as you would expect, but stagnation is death in an environment like this. You need to be that team that's continuing to try to change things up, that's continuing to try to move forward because that's what everyone else is doing. And if you think, well, we're good enough and we're not needing to change too much up, we just need to hope for the best, that's not necessarily going to work out. So I like to hear that from Mouse as well. Speaking of onwards and upwards, uh, Nexa, he's a man you've been keeping uh, one of your eyes on, and Taz has been echoing the sentiment of, uh, yeah, there has been improvements from a man that many were looking at and going, why on earth does he come back into the team? Oh, 100%. I thought it was only fair to you know take a second and talk about his situation currently because there was a tremendous amount of hostility when he joined G2. First of all, a lot of doubters. Why would you even do this change? Why would you remove JKS? JKS is obviously a much better player. And we have to be honest, the first few weeks, he was giving a lot of resources and legwork to these criticism. Nexa wasn't exactly playing well. And then I think Taz let us in on some of the inside workings of that team where he also realized maybe Nexa was a little bit too selfless at the beginning. He didn't want to make waves. He understands what it is to be an IGL, to have a system and don't want to really trouble it. I really think as a player, even if you just want to be a good teammate, you have to realize that the first way to be a good teammate as a player is to be good, is to be strong, is to perform. It's so simple, simply put, but there is a reality to it, right? Be a little bit selfish. Ask for the moves that you like. Ask for the tricks that you know you can do because then you can create this sort of uh, crescendo that we're witnessing right here where Nexus not a liability anymore. He's doing the work he's supposed to do as an anchor. And yeah, I, I just think it's fair to give him a little bit of flowers because he caught a whole lot of slaps in the face in his early days in G2. I mean, all the Aussie homies are probably going to hate me for this, but I've got to be honest, I'm happy with what I'm seeing from him at this event. And that upward trend is certainly being uh, shown not only for his individual performances, but I think we're kind of starting to get a little bit more positive about where G2 is going as well. Obviously, Monacy, he's doing really well for himself, but Nico, Hunter, I feel like they're coming into their own at the event. They're slowly
slowly peaking at the right time. Uh, and maybe there's a grand final berth in there for G2 if they can do well today, which I actually have my uh, my prediction in that direction if we're going to get far. So I, I will say I think I'm, I'm pretty positive on where G2 is at at the I moment. Mean, also, listen, if we're going to be like psychologists when it comes to Mouse and we're going to talk about their issues oh, and actually. how hard it is, well, I actually am, you know. Hey, he does have a master. Actual if, if flex. You don't know. But if we're going to extend that olive branch to Mouse, then let's think about the atmosphere in which Nexa joined. Like, well, you oh, think good. as a player, like, the community mm. doesn't want you there, you're not performing, you know every time you fail there's going to be 20 threads on the forum ready to get your head. I mean, he also had to fight that in order to establish his level, and that deserves a little bit of claps. Let's move on to talk about the Orpers, because this is where the teams are looking, you know, uh, quite different. I'm not shading on Torzi at all, but when you're going up against Manasi, and when he has the ability to literally put a team dead in the bed. We saw that exactly going down yesterday versus VP. He pulls up a clutch and that was it. Game over, series donezo. I mean, he is, he's a Swiss army knife. He's the most Swiss army knife out of all of them right now. There's very little that Monacy cannot do. And by that, I mean being aggressive, being punitive. We have a couple of examples here where he's holding angles. We know how quick he is with the scope, how precise he is with it. He can rock with the rifle as well. He's done that a couple of times. Great example right there, multi-kill with the AK. He can clutch. He is one of the most creative players, quick thinking player we have in the game. The overpass moment is definitely one for the Aegis in Counter-Strike. So it's really unfair for Torji because I, I don't feel like, you know, throwing some shit at him. But if we're going to do this comparison, like, of course, it's it's paling compared to Manasi. Yeah, I mean, that's the hard thing, isn't it, for Torji? But I think also, as him, as, as that player, you have to recognize that it's not just solely your job to deal with Monacy, right? I mean, yes, we're going to talk about AWP versus AWP matchup, but at the end of the day, I think Torsi has to come into this and just play his own game. He's been playing a pretty decent tournament here. He's been very consistent over the last few months for, for Mao, so he's got to be happy with the level that he's bringing to the table and recognize that it's not just his responsibility to deal with Monacy. That's the entire team having to try to take that one individual down. I agree with you, and what Monacy really has over Torji is that I feel like he's not that dependent of a good start of G2. Like, how many times have we seen Monacy dig G2 out of a bad situation? Yes. We're talking Galil, we're talking AK rifles. I was gonna say. Whereas for mm -hmm. Torji, I, I have to be real, in Copenhagen, the starts of games were very complicated. We had the example on Inferno, it's like 1-6 start. Tor when when Mao's having a bad start, Torji really fades away. Well, well that's the beauty of Monacy, is he's that guy, he's like that X Factor that can turn the bad start into start. a good start. And he doesn't even need an AWP to do it. As you said, he can do it with the AK, but more importantly, we've seen it with the Galil as well. So it feels like he's a bit of an everyman. He can do it no matter the circumstance and actually be the difference maker at the start for G2 in some cases. Now, the eagle eyed behind us will have seen the Matt Vito going down. Last time around, it was Inferno, Vertigo, Overpass. So uh, if you've got your, got your spectacles on, Matthew, uh, I gotta be what real. do you think? I got to be real. I just peeked behind and I actually caught a little bit of glimpse. So I'm not going to play dumb. It's I saw a bit, a bit of different. new yeah, there we go. and I saw a bit of ancient. Ooh. So we are taking an absolutely different turn here with the ancient pick coming out of mouse. That's quite interesting. I mean, it's a, it's a map where G2 has shown a, a little bit of liability on the CT side recently and then we're going to overpass at the end. So, okay, that, listen, whatever happened in Copenhagen, we can firmly say is not going to happen again here, no. right? The Inferno Vertigo, none of that shenanigans. So I, I guess it's a good thing for Mouse. I see it as a positive for Mouse to just reshuffle the cards on that. Again, I think when you're going down in a couple of series in a row to any given team, there's always going to be that thought in the back of your mind that, hey, we probably should change things up. And they've been going toward Vertigo a couple of times here, Mouse. So I like the fact that they've decided to go toward Ancient just to bring something different to the table. Overpass, yeah, very middle of the ground map. So I think that one's fair enough. But Nuke, that I think is a bit of a scary prospect here for Mouse. A tough one to start on, obviously. Uh, G2 very, very comfortable on that map. So. Uh, in terms of this conversation that we're having around slow starts and this kind of thing and how they're maybe under pressure on the stage, I, I think if you go down 0-1 and one in this series, which would be what I would expect if we're starting on Nuke, I mean, that again is going to start to bring all these things up in the mind of Mao's and it's going to become a mental battle, not only just a battle in the server. Yeah, and I mean, a good start in terms of maps, but also just in terms of rounds. Like, you're going to have G2 starting on the T side. I assume they pick Nuke, that's logical. If you give them a pistol and conversion, exactly. I think to this day, G2 is the best fast playing team on the T side there is in the world. Like their ability to play very quick CS, the protocols super refined, entry path extremely strong, good trading as well, the pacing is correct. When Hooksy can have that. Like an endless I, list. Listen, I'm not going to say they're perfect overall on the T side, but mm. when they can pick up the pace, and that's mostly dependent on economical advantage, obviously psychological momentum over your opponent, when they have that. Holy hell, Hooksy can call like three A rushes, three different ways over three uh, full buy rounds, and he will do it.
What areas of the map then are you looking for particular jewels to be going down with G2? Starting on that T side of Malzon City. I mean, definitely out is going to be a conversation, right? When Torsi's going to be running around without AWP, we'll see how that interaction works out for Monacy. So for me, again, Nuke is always one of those maps where when, you, when, you, when you're when you looking toward outer, you know, you really want to see where the map control is going in that area of the map and whether or not people can get down in the vent as well. So those are probably the two little intricacies that I'm kind of keeping an eye on here. What are you thinking in terms of predictions and different maps for the first two, uh, at least? Does that uh, leave you feeling any differently for Mouse than in Copenhagen? So the, the problem that I have with this video is that the only world I could see Mouse winning this would be a 2-0, independent of the map. As in, like, having a good start and then just Rolling shaking them. off the shackles, mm -hmm. suddenly feeling like everything's clicking, and then you style on them on the map too because the pressure is off your back. This is a scenario I could imagine, and I think that's how it's going to happen the day they break free from this whatever glass ceiling we're talking about. If G2 win map one, I think the series done so. I think that's it. And so if they win Nuke, we, we, we can close the conversation. Echoing that same thought? I would go 2-1. I think G2 here, I've, I've got enough faith in Maus that they're going to be able to take their own map pick, but I don't see them taking Nuke and Overpass. I feel like the pressure's going to be a bit too high. G2 a bit too explosive, a bit too good. So for me, 2-1 on G2. Well, we've got the crowd, we've got the maps. One thing we have missing is our team. They're going to be welcomed out onto the stage, G2 versus Maus, in the semi-finals of the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu. for us to get underestimated because we are G2 and because of the names we have on the team. It feels like, at least from the outside, that everyone expects us to win always. Star players always thrive on the big stage because they get all the energy from the crowd and you step up when it matters. Against Mouth, we are also favorites. I'm pretty confident that we can win against them. We should be able to, to take them down and I just hope it will all be about Counter-Strike and not some other crazy stuff going on. It feels great to already start in the semi-finals. Like every tournament we make playoffs again and again. I think it's been like six or seven times in a row. 
there is not really a limit for us in the playoffs and I just want us to play the same way we do in the group stage. I feel like we just need to keep playing and eventually it will come. I think we also feel good against Mouse, especially when it's on stage. Overall, they're doing really good. It's definitely not going to be easy, but I would also see us as favorite. We really need to find more consistency to find a big form of Mouse. And also we are really young, so I never want to limit us to any level. That's why it's so exciting to play with these guys.所以谁才是真正的龙王呢是发挥最稳定的face吗每一届CSR的总决赛都有他们的身影 我们几乎可以确定会看到野兽一般的Monacy 但是Nico也在缓慢地找回他的状态 另外一条神龙也带领队伍挺进了四强 Mouse常常在小组赛气势如潮，但一到淘汰赛就颗粒无收。表现亮眼的小吉米，他火力全开，勇冠三军。然而，Mouse的奖杯室里仍然缺少一座CSR的冠军。Astralis在首任龙王之
要来观看半决赛的第一场比赛，由 Mouse 对战 G2。那么接下来，我们换一种方式，换一种感觉，让我们用热烈的掌声 ，Please welcome on the stage Mouse and G2。Nico leading the charge for G2 and Inge Nidashue Machu on the other side. You cannot mistake in the reaction from the crowd when it comes to Nico. He is an absolute superstar and a fan favorite here in Chengdu. Speaking of fan favorites, we have to give our flowers to Monasi on the other side, the ever aggressive exertion of yeah, I think for sure the probably the most excitable player for the Chinese fans is Monasi, so they're very excited to see him playing and exertion, see what he can do as well. And for good reason, Hooksy from G2 next up to bat versus Mao's or Patorzi on the other side of things. First time he'll be out on the stage in front of this Chinese crowd. Hunter up next for G2, alongside the newest member of Miles Machu in Brolin. And Brolin's going to have a lot on his shoulders. Next to him, Hunter, playmaker. We know Brolin can do it too, and he's going to have to do it. Last in line, next up for G2, young Jimmy for Miles. Yeah, probably the most important player today for Miles, Jimmy. He's been their best performer in the event so far, so hopefully he can keep that going today. versus Maus. We saw the story going down in Copenhagen, but now a chance for Maus to be writing a new chapter in this book. And I would argue the pressure is on their shoulders because time and time again, disappointing results in the playoffs. Yeah, you would be afraid that learned helplessness could sneak in when it comes to Maus. But I also realize some of the losses, the defeats they had to sustain on stage, they're always playing against the crowd favorites. You play against FaZe, you know Kerrigan's gonna rile up the crowd, they're gonna be on his corner. You play against G2, and hell, we see the reaction here in Chengdu. So they have to do it the hardest way. The game is set on nightmare mode. That's where they are for Maus. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I'm in particular looking towards Jimmy and Zershin to step up in this matchup. I feel like Jimmy, he's obviously been the highlight player from ours at Chengdu so far. And Zershin, well, he was the guy that really got shut down against G2 last time. So those two, the keys for me. We've been demanding more of G2. And I think here in Chengdu, we've been beginning to get some of those signs. Nico definitely back in form. Some great reads coming out of Hooksy as well. Surely this is the poetic route to the grand final for G2. Yeah, it really feels like the team is coming together once again after the disappointing end in Copenhagen. That's the least we can say. They've had the ability to come back into games here in Chengdu as well. They haven't only played based on momentum. They had overtime, they had disappointing moments, but they still stuck to their guns and they are ready to fight. Well, G2 versus Maus. Let's see if Maus can rewrite history and take down G2 here in Chengdu. We've got Nuke, we've got Ancient, we've got Overpass if we do so need it, and we have Harry and Hugo to guide you through all of the action. 
Rematch from the major, G2 versus Maus, and two arcs for these teams now clash. The question for Maus is can they rise to the occasion on the big stages? They feel like it's only a matter of time. For G2 on the other side of things, we've been looking at a few key individuals, but namely Nico, having that support around Monacy. And he's been delivering that thus far across Chengdu. And so now we're going to see which one of these key arcs for Maus and G2 will prevail in this semi-final. A new map pool and fresh looks for both these rosters. It really is an exciting time to get a rematch only a couple of weeks after that quarterfinal blowout from G2 in Copenhagen. Can Mal stand the test today? Got a very difficult map to begin with. They're not going to have it in their pocket. You presume it's Nuke, G2, oh, reliable, and they go right into the T side. Mal's make a gamble, leaning on the ramp stack. Even Shuhei not really committed to A. That leaves just Zershan. This is his lowest rated CT sided map, and he is alone in the A site. And he's going to have his work cut out for them. This, this exec looks to come through for G2. It's all eyes on Exertion, and he is run down. Nico opens with a double. And that's a Nico we've been seeing all tournament. More so yesterday than ever before. He has had so many struggles and troubles in CS2. But maybe, just maybe, he's awake in time for a championship finally. It has been such a good look from this guy. Yesterday, absolutely owned Virtus Pro. And G2, they've already got the track record. They've already won this game. So I think Mal's had to battle no, not only their own demons in their own heads, but the bolstered confidence of G2, knowing they can do this in two. And out of all the ways it could have started, this one is uh, maybe the most brutal. A couple of kills in at the end as G2 get caught exiting. None of it will come to matter for Maus as they now have to sit back. G2 going to get all this early momentum. And there is absolutely no denying it here in Chengdu. G2 are the crowd favorite. They are the heavy favorite. And I think that's going to keep up no matter who they play. I mean, that's a Maus life, isn't it? Always hey, crowd pleasers as well. Maus always playing against not only the crowd, but the stage experience team. This team is the opposite of stage experience with such young players, a young core. Uh, but every time they play, it's against G2, it's against FaZe, right? Three semi-finals in a row from Sydney Abu Dhabi to Katowice against FaZe. No wonder Mal's have crumbled. No wonder we've built this narrative that they've struggled in stages. I can barely blame them, but they're not going to be able to brush it off with ease. Not against some of the world's most experienced teams. You've got to rise to that occasion. And so that is the big question for Maus, whether they can do it today. And it doesn't help that they get these quick skips to the semi-finals. They don't get to warm in against maybe a team that struggled, only just clinched the group stage. They go right into the big dogs, warmed up and rapid. G2 hitting ramp. Well, this guy is a very good talking point for Maus. Jimmy needs to have a big game today, but run through by Hoogsy. And so won't even be saying his name as this one gets brushed aside. G2 in full control. I mean, they won both these rounds off two kills. That exit won't change a damn thing. Shui can go look lower. He's got nothing to lose. But G2, four guns established on this B-bomb site, a plant and double door control. There is simply no world where Miles win this round, and they know it deep down. So G2 converts. Got to do a little bit more up against Famuses in the next, but already a shaky look from Jimmy on ramp. It's only one round, but he gets caught off. Can't drop in time. 
and this is old dependable, the guy who can make ramp on CT look like a star position. Not in this round. Chewy trying his hand at the exits. Damage big, but not enough. Hell live. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when we kind of look at who's going to need to perform today for Maus, the impact is obviously a, a huge foundation of that discussion. I mean, he was lights out in their run to get here. He's a big part of why they did it so cleanly. And uh, I think it was Elfish over on the desk who, who threw Exertion's name into that hat as well. Uh, I, I'm inclined to agree with him, right? It was him who kind of had a, a big fall down last time these teams met back in Copenhagen. And he's an integral piece of the mouse puzzle. His aggression is something that can open up rounds, can win rounds for this uh, for this mouse squad. So you don't want him going tame and being a bit freaked out under the bright lights of the stage. You you need his A game brought forward. As I mentioned, Zershan having troubles on this map, uh, especially on CT sides, it's, it's only going to be made worse by what Maniac was talking about, which is how G2 are so willing to make these fast calls, and they'll go for three top hits in a row. They don't really care. They'll come in confident who he will make those very ballsy calls. And when you consider that Zershan is an A anchor, he is going to be in a lot of trouble if G2 start off steamrolling and feel like they can make these plays. If Maus don't show they can resist top hits, G2 will punish. For now, it's just XX outside, get Nico crossing. But Odyssey's picked the door, the oh. wall bank connects, and they even have that lower control. Zershan will block it. But Nico is in no hurry. G2 sit comfortably in this four on four. It's a nice position for Torshi. Might be the only way into this round. He's got the one gun after all. And he is the, the one line of defense for the top site. So if he doesn't get out with a kill, suddenly this round gets very complicated, very unlikely. But he's the one guy who can make it exciting. Oh, the timing is push. awkward. Even though they get the kill, the call's already been made. monacy has gone outside because Nico's all the way around the world. G2 can go for an A split. They can group for a ramp through hell. That would probably take too much time. So Mal's flanks on flanks, they go outside. This is getting weird. 40 seconds. Nico needs a kill soon, and it's going to have to be up. Oh, he just got spotted there. Nico thinks he's being sneaky, but he's not. Shui's even giving chase up behind him. Nico, disaster in heaven, and this one's getting out of hand. G2 are running out of time. They're running out of chances here. And Mouse did not have much to rely on in this round, but they've hit every timing. They've found every gap, and it's only Monacy left in the clutch. First kill found, but he's got so much more to do. And Mouse, they don't fight him. They'll pick that one up with a Famous on Torshi. And a handful of pistols, they find success in round three. That round is so important just to get Maus on the board early, feeling like they can compete in this game. And, and like we said, the momentum of this matchup is going to be monumental. But Hunter with the early swing, Modesty had time to make that play in heaven with 15 seconds. I would love to see Hunter just wait a few seconds, draw out a jiggle, get a bait. He didn't need to go for that kill. And that makes that round almost impossible for Modesty. It's good at the clutch, but that one a bridge too far. G2 now disrespect on that A hit, rushing in the hut. The M4 comes up clutch, but there's another flank on that. Monacy can't escape. Surely not. Somehow turns around for an unbelievable kill, and G2 have broken through. Oh, and Nico's dig lands in Chengdu, and that will close the round. And that was a Mao's staple. That is a Mao's classic. One of the things we spoke about all group stage long is how fluid and how aggressive this team likes to be. G2 repel that on a low buy, no less. Monacy, I don't know how the hell he kills that round flank. That is the round winning kill if Jim Pat can get it. But he again falls at the first hurdle. And that just breaks you if you're Mao's so early in the half as well. G2 call a timeout. They want to gather themselves. This has been a bit of a rambunctious beginning to nuke. So G2 try not to jump the gun. Like you said, they're going to be ready for that aggression that those lobby takes. Mal's getting in their face. So G2 need, uh, need to make sure that they don't leave these gaps.
Yeah, I think if you're Mao's there, right, it, it's one that you don't want to overthink too much. I think one of the issues that you sometimes see when this team get to this stage is they get a bit more rigid. And they lose that ability to flow around the map, something that makes them such a, a scary team in the group stages. And so in that one, you know, you can admit to yourselves that it was working for the longest of times. It was looking good. And it was a stellar recovery for Monacy that flipped the script. And that's going to happen sometimes when you're up against this G2 squad. Monacy will win those rounds. He's not supposed to win. But in this one... That cast is building for G2, right? It's typically yeah. in the recent times has just been Monacy. Now we're seeing Nico. Now we're seeing Hunter. Even Nexon, a consistent, reliable player on this team. Jim Pat talking of consistency. That's his bread. That's his butter. He goes for a bite. He takes a dink. Nico's low as well. Jim Pat reposition and repeat with the orb. Oh, it's not a factor. It's all Jim Pat. Three kills down Come secret. Monacy oh. gets a kill. Hang on. Surely G2 can't recover this. Yeah, they never should. Dead in the vent there. Monacy tries to go back in and hold that. And it leaves it all on Nexa, creeping deep. Torshi's got no idea. Oh, Torshi. Oh, buddy. Oh, turning back in time. And Nexa's knocked out. Gets a bit ugly there for G2 after Jimmy P lights them up from the vent. Very well done as he moves in towards lower. He had a lot of responsibility. He had a lot to deal with here, and he makes it look so easy. Lining them up. And that AWP dink doesn't make life easy for G2. There we go. That's Jim Pat back in the game. The highest rated player of Mouse. He's had an unbelievable tournament. Destroyed Liquid on Mirage. This guy was a nightmare. Another wall down outside for G2, but they won't send Nico with it this time. It's going to be that upper hit. A little delayed here. It put everything in this round. So much util. Shui on top, Roland by his side. Zershan not far from it. Shui mollied out into the open. Uh -oh. Run down, first man uh -oh. falls, and they even get Roland out from the vent. Torshi reclaims it and puts us back into an even odds battle here for this top side control. Mauser making a play, and they move in, denying the space. Hooksy dead. And between. Yimpa and Torshi, that one is recovered. Four kills from the two of them. Torshi sitting up top of the board for the Mouse squad at 9-1. and one. So he is at least in good spirits and in good form to open up this semi-final. Well, that lack of respect from Mouse they, in the 3v3, a lot of teams would give it up and, and you know wait for the retake and group up, wait for that main smoke to fade. They don't do that. They come running at G2. Don't let them get comfortable. Don't let them plant the bomb. And now G2 have nothing to show for it. It's still very early days, but Mouse is certainly giving a more them look to this game. The Mao's aesthetic all over this CT side with how they've looked to players so far. And so I hope that keeps up. I hope this kind of is the, the, the breakthrough point for this Mao's squad. Yeah, in a sense, I sort of believe what Tertian says when he feels like there isn't much mentally blocking Mao's. It's more just that experience. It's more just the caliber of teams they're playing. This team looks so confident. Right now, they're doing their best to translate that to the stage. Whether or not they get the crowd's approval. I mean, you've got to respect the CT side that's been bought forward from Torshi already. 11 and 1. Yeah, someone who kind of swings up and down on the, on the consistency level, but... Man, when he's on, he's on, and uh, he's feeling good right now. <laughs> the meme game has been incredible. I don't understand any of them. For the, the the fans bringing like tablets to show photos, I've seen some printed memes. It runs deep here. Miles are running wild. Three rounds in a row. G2 look for that top pick. 
saw that cross down secret as well. Torshi knows it, so he'll up and leave, rotate around the world. Jim Pat pushed in the ramp side again. Hooksy, they need this trade, but it comes at a cost. Rotating towards ramp, Shui. Next up on the docket for Hunter here. Nico dead out in the yard. Maus, they've got a commanding position in this round, locking out the ramp take and dealing with Nico as he tries to come in on that late lurk outer. G2, they might be given the ramp room, but it's all by design for Maus. They hold all the cards here. They've got the extremities. They've got G2 boxed in. And so even though you've got this control over towards ramp, everywhere you can move past this point is being held. It's being considered. And these positions are one where one kill should really be a given here for Maus. And so that's going to leave somebody in a clutch. Off angle a little wide, and Modesty can't clear that one. There's that trade, and now Hunter, in a world of her, two nades gives him plenty of info on that upper site. He can stall it out if he wants. There's another HE coming in. He knows what to expect, and he's going to get it. Zershin on top of the hut puts another one on the board for Maus. Nice double from Jim Pat on the ramp push as well. And Maus play to contain, they don't fight for that position. Shui does his job, and Maus keep G2 working for this game. I mean, from that initial start, there's been nothing in this for G2. This is a big deal that Maus are looking this good on a G2 classic map, on one that Maus have had a lot of struggles on as of late. Yeah, they've just been avoiding it entirely off of the second man. It's a spot, Nico saw Zershin getting aggressive. But it won't matter when he jumps up through the smoke. Mal's making this anti-eco easy enough. They've cleared outside, they go back to enforce A. And this orb just gets to stare down at the hut, G2 come rushing. Exertion from main, helped out by Torshi on that AWP. Hunter dropping in to his demise. And it's a big round from Exertion. Monacy can't do a thing here. And so it might be a flawless sixth, locked and loaded, ready to go for the Mouse squad as they are running away with the CT side. Oh, that's One a kill little awkward. from Monacy, one freebie. But surely that is as exciting as this gets. Brolin and Torshi playing in tandem. And so five straight now, four yeah. Maus. Porsche is everywhere. G2 can't really seem to avoid him. Sure, they're trying a lot of top hits, but he's just playing that rotated position. He's a ramp when they come through. Nice see G2 go back into standard outside control, throw up all the smokes, maybe use multiple players. For the most part, it's just been Nico, with the exception of that one round where Jim Pat multi kills them. Let's see if G2 decides to use these smokes. Certainly looks like it. Exertion. He's got a remedy. He's got a trick up his sleeve. They've got no clue. They assembled this boost quickly. As a result, I, I, I don't think they even checked this. Torshi with the response. Next is one and done is exactly that. They will give it a little, little bit oh. of a glance, but it's great damage from Exertion. Shuey's even made one hell of a play here, bypassing them in the lobby. Pushing all the way through, and Hooksy's got no clue. He knows that deep smoke makes it very clear exactly what Shui's up to. He won't know he's inside the smoke, but knows that lobby is corrupted. He's going to try and fight for it. The timing is awkward on Shui's push. Hooksy comes up the better. Mal's have to make an active move. They'll clear up outside, but G2, world is our oyster right now. They can go A, they can go ramp. They're going to avoid Mal's in their entirety. I mean, this is, these are your bedrock players right now, if you're Maus. Your two top performers left up in this two on three. Go the right way. Making a meet G2 in the top side. Monacy or Hunter rather dead early. Hooks, he followed up on oh. two. Impa! He is ready for his time in the limelight. G2 get destroyed. A man up as they try to take A. And Jimmy does not let them in. And GT feel like that's a good call, right? It feels like a, a perfect call. Re-clearing the lobby, they don't have info, they trade out upper. That's, you know, it should be nothing wrong with that. Jim Pat should not get three kills there. And the AWP isn't even required, he just makes it look easy. G2 get iced out by the young Finn. 
and that is ugly. Hunter knows it. Ooh. This, Disastrous round. This is so exciting, though. This is so exciting. Maus, uh, uh, is what they've been preaching, is it true? Is it happening? Are they actually ready for these moments? Have all the setbacks led to this? In Chengdu, where they decide to come alive and become a stage team. Because right now, they are wrecking G2. Yeah, not a contest. Those early economical trade-outs for G2, and that's all they've had. And when we talk big stage teams, there are really two that get flung out there all the time. That's G2, that's FaZe. Both in the playoffs. And Maus are destroying one of these big stage uh, teams. In, in a way, we have this for both semifinals, right? We have these like unproven stage teams versus the, the, the familiar faces of the top fours of the grand finals, right? And the, the way I frame Astralis there is just that Stown and Yabby, of course, traditionally had troubles with taking titles when they were back on Heroic. Sure, Device is no newbie to the stage, but he's in a new role as an in-game leader. Stairs a very young player with the exception of Cologne. We've not seen him had success there either. Either. So, for the most part, Astralis are in a similar position, an equatable position to Maus. And that group stage performance right now, straight to the semi finals, looking to not be a myth, to be well placed. And all of that is despite G2 showing us a rise in form. Nico playing out of his mind against VP in those quarterfinals. Having his second best tournament in CS2. Yeah, that's something. And his best big tournament, of course, the one you're talking about is the RMR, where yeah. you know he should be flying through with flying colors. Right now, there's no question. Malzar dominating this game. There is still time in the half on this T side. But on a map that has been so unreliable for Maus and so safe for G2, screams danger in this semi final. And here's the thing I think sometimes, you know, it, it takes you a few, a few L's to, to truly learn, right? Because you're still trying to find the solution. You don't lose a big stage game and then immediately it's all become clear to you now. You know what it takes to win, right? You try something new. Oh, that didn't work either. Try something new. And I, and I think for a while, Maus were maybe even overthinking it, right? They were putting too much on what it meant to play on stage. Because it is a different game. That's something that they spoke about earlier on. I think it was uh, back at Katowice. But... The, 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 the theory, the idea as to how they want to approach it here in Chengdu has been very different. They want to treat it like any other match. And right now, Maus are looking almost one-to-one -one with how they try and play in the group stages. I mean, what did Shui say the other day? He said that Zip coming in as you know, assistant analyst has given him some great tips on performing on stage. Well, there's not really many better players yeah. to have that experience and give you that knowledge. It's getting put to use. Pistols again make this round interesting. Nico finds a backstab timing as they fake out lower the call, the panic, the exertion gives when he sees three players down B. It means Miles aren't ready for a top hit, but it might be coming through nonetheless. Jim Pat through his own smoke, a ballsy re-aggression. This kid is not scared today. Nexa checks the timing. They're going to crunch together. Either way, Nexa is in hot water, but he's boiling. Burning, rolling alive. Jim Pat will respond. G2 have heaven. They have the A site. It's another 2v3, well, 2v4 at the start of it, required from Torshi and Jimmy. But these two have delivered this exact round once before on the bed. Torshi oh, makes the oh, oh, oh. play and lives to tell the tale. They do deal with Jimmy. And so Torshi's going to do it alone. Boy, oh, my God! What a oh. crazy shot! Thank God Nico is there to put a stop to it! That's filth! That is filth! Toshi is playing with real confidence, and I believe he can just switch off that part of his brain. The one that does all the thinking for him. Yeah. He's playing on raw inertia and feeling right now. Lizard brain. G2, a huge round for them to finally break this streak. 
And it comes down to the wire. It's not clean. No. But they'll take it. They'll take whatever they can get their hands on at this All point. Right. Yes, they are swimming in it. Just upper rush again and again. Hoopsie finds that entry. It's only Shui in the back of the site. He puts on a double. That's more than you bargained for if you're G2. But they come through with more and more kills. No rest for the wicked. Mao's trying to seize the moment. And now it's G2 in the site. Zershan bounds out after one. Trying to long this round out. G2 prioritizing the plant while they've got a gap. Nexon will stick it. He's got four nades to block heaven as well. Oh, Molly oh dear. You Extra hope that time. Miss Molotov isn't the thing that brings Exertion back into this. That's bought him a big few extra seconds to play with here. Nico spots him. They know where he is. And Nico's been a safe pair of hands at denying these clutches. Next, it will take the swing. And so G2, they recover. They chain together two to close out this first half. And with five rounds on their T side, that could be enough. Don't know how it's come to this I don't know how I could resist I took a vow to never sin But I saw the darkness from where After a dominant lead taken from the Mouse squad, G2 bite back, getting the final two rounds down this stretch. It does leave Mouse with a little bit of breathing room, but as they move on to the T side of G2's pick, a map where their CT sides can be commanding, to say the least, Mouse still very much have their work cut out for them. We've got the stars of the show standing up at least for Mouse, but... G2, like you said, more than comfortable on defense with Nico in the yard. This could be a masterclass. What Shui cooked up. Trying to fake out the door. It's baited next to him. There's two Ooh. players here, though, and he hits hard with a P2K. Not hard enough. It's a massacre on ramp. Everybody falls, and Mal's now have an open path to be. Shui cutting vent rotations if he wants, and he'll just go right down as well. Mouse have full control, G2 double ramp with no kit. This would be such a feel-good round. This would be such a return to form for Mouse, not letting those last two rounds get to them, get under their skin. And it would do a lot of the legwork for this T side. Hunter might make it into the site, but G2, they need kills. With no kit, they've got to force some of these fights to come through. Right now, they need a hero. And with Hunter dead, it's only Nico left in the picture. And Maus are just toying with him. They will not look to fight him here. Jimmy goes swinging in at the end. And with four in the pistol, Jim Pat is not messing around. Now that Mao's move on to the T side. Such a reassuring performance of Jim Pat in this game. And he comes through with a 4K on pistol as well. Not necessary. But this young player, 17 years of age, back on the stage, is making a statement game against G2, getting vengeance from Copenhagen, a new map pool, a scarier map pool if I say so myself, not just with Nuke, but picking into Ancient as well, big danger. 
G2 proclivity to play that map. Even if the numbers aren't great, they're more than happy to do so. And yet they are getting trounced. Forced by for G2. Desperate times. Hunters grab Monacy Scout, who's been picked early for the entry man of Maus. And he's looking for more as well. Nico's timing is important. He's been covered from Brolin. This is not going to be easy for Nico. When was it ever easy, though? Deagle does nothing. Scout will tag him up. Hunter trying to chip away. But Maus can just group and go together in a five on three. This is a nice reset. Hooksy takes the lobby, but it's still being patrolled by, you guessed it, Jimpa. Oh, Jimmy P takes one of the dome. Nexa going to try and regain this control, but he's got a lot more than just Jimmy to deal with. And even Ow. that first man Ow. hits hard enough. Those jiggles are gross. Whoa, oh. Torchy! Get him out. What's happening to this guy? Three deaths. Torshi is rivaling Jimmy right now. 17 and 3, 19 and 6. These are such top heavy score lines. And uh, coming into this, with the tournaments that Monacy's had in this G2 jersey uh, since CS2 dropped, you thought it was a certainty that he would be the guy you're getting excited about. However, it's Torshi, hands down, finding more impact, getting away with crazier stuff it's no contest right now between the two of them yeah now full eco for double digits i mean this is a tough game for g2 they're gonna have to pull a massive comeback once they hit rifle rounds and if mouse just start throwing a hits at them those rounds could be so finicky so undependable on ct side a good flash and this game is over Entries come freely outside for Maus. Honestly, can't save them here. In fact, no one will. Five alive, 10-5, and this gun round decides the game. Oh, she's 19 and three, man. Jimmy's 20 and six. And Zersha's not exactly being cold either. He was dealing with those A hits. Him and Shui finding a couple of multi-kill rounds. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. But G2, have you got anything to say in this game? Honestly gets to bring that off into the round. And so he needs to hit like Torshi. A sentence I never thought I would say. <laughs> That's the aim of the game right now for G2. Just get on the board. You have to take it right, round by round at this point. Smoke's down out in the yard. Nex has already dropped down into secret, so he'll be able to confirm exact numbers here and maybe even stem this bleed over down into lower. I like his fullback. If he dies here, G2 might panic. They might over-rotate. Instead, they have to hold strong in their positions. Monacy on the ramp, the only man here. And they're running his way. He's going to get out after one. Support from the hell side denied. That might rejig the route here for Maus. If they go B, they're going into the stack. So they reconsider. Up the vent comes Hooksy. That's a very important rotation to give a little bit more support to Upper, but he has four kills right now. He has not done a thing in this game, and G2 need a hero here on this top side. Is Hooksy the man for the job? Oh! Weird. Hunter out in heaven hasn't seen them out through the hut either, and Hooksy is in a bit of a rough spot here with Hunter dead, and Hooksy dealt with. Topside crumbles, and this first oh. rifle round. Oh, oh, oh exertion's go. even given chase. Maus, they're cheeky with it. Campbell. This is the Maus you know, Campbell. but don't invite G2 back in. Okay. Giving chase on two has handed an even odds retake to the G2 it. squad, but they are writing this one off. They are not going for it. It's right there for the taking. I'm shocked. It might just be the lack of kit making that decision. G2 knowing they are making predictable rotates through main and vent, the latter of which is very precarious, and they don't want it. They want another chance for Monacy on this AWP. He did his job on the ramp room, but Jim Hat flipped that on its head, and that upper hit with nothing to show for it. Exits that all G2 will get. 11-5.
I don't know. I mean, that is shocking. Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked. Don't get me wrong. Like, that, on the yeah. back of money, you can justify the save, sure. But if I ask you at the end of that round, what team is playing with confidence and what team is playing not to lose, I think the, the answer is obvious. It screams where G2 are at mentally in this game. They don't feel like they can win that round. And they know the importance I of just, having another buy. I just think there's a world where that 2v2 is the best spot G2 are in in the remainder of this game. And it might be. G2 are banking on not being the case. Will that be a regret? An opportunity wasted in their map pick of this series? This would be Miles with undeniable momentum in a semi final. Honestly, with a missed shot, don't say that every day. It's a tight gap, though. Jempat won't tangle with him. They instead, cross down lower. That volley's a problem. Zersh doesn't care. He goes through nonetheless, trying to take his quick timing down to B. Mal's, they're called group stage merchants. Right now, they're selling a lie to G2. It's only one man there. Double drop. It's Ram they've got to worry about, and no one is in posi uh, position to deny this play. No one even considering it. They're trying to group up, hunt down Zershan here. This is nice for G2. They're going to get info as well with a kill, but they need this clean. He cannot afford to get both frags out. Hooksy will stop him at the first hurdle, but now the ramp hit comes walking. G2, as they cross back into control and double doors, they won't offer up a fight here. Mao's are not given anything, but they do have the space to try and get this bomb planted. Torshi being the man to try and take double doors. Moving in on the AWP, and that Molly forces Nexa away. That's going to facilitate a bomb plant. Hooksy attempting to punish it. Isn't able to do so, and now the aggression coming through from the Mao squad. That AWP is posted. That AWP is situated on the line. Torshi flashed off the angle. Some space taken back over towards the doors, but the AWP is not dealt with yet. Oh. Hooksy has the chance right here to run it down. 3v3 for G2. Top. They could justify that save if they win this round, and Hooksy is the man trying to take them there. Hooksy is on for the ace, and it's just Shui left to beat. Door ready to be swung, and he Whoa! waits till the final few seconds, but it's all Hooksy. All five in the round, and he's the man who brings it home for G2. The <sighs> A hero had to emerge, and Hooksy was the last candidate you expected, but he pulls G2 over the line there, kicking and screaming. Unbelievable, and Nico's just sticking. Well, his captain carries it through, grabs the kit, grabs the defuse, saves the day. It is all Hooksy. And like you said, justified now. G2 right their wrongs back on the board, but there's a long way to go. Oh my God, they're already in the top side. G2 weren't ready for this pace, weren't ready for this speed, but they're able to withstand it. Monacy jumping on in, holds the line, and with Torshi dead, it's all eyes on Jimmy P. Clutch kid through a smoke, fearless, but Monacy comes gunning and closes it down. Three shots up for Monacy, all connect this time. G2 trying to build, trying to ride the waves of this game. Will they capsize? Can they reach their destination of a regulation win? We're going to need six more in a row for G2. Even though Maus have looked lights out and, and, they, and they showed no sign of stopping, they're still vulnerable to that mental crumbling because thus far everything's been working out, right? They felt nigh on invincible and the finish line was right there. It felt like, felt like the final task was just to get across, just to get the, the two rounds that win you the game. But the nature starts to change if G2 build. And right now, G2 are building. Nexa with the shutdown. Bit of help from Monacy. That. And it's done. Flawless as well. I like the Mouse are still confident. They're still going for gung-ho plays. We had that A rush off the back of the clutch. Jim Pat buys an AK in that previous round. But is it misfounded? Because closing games out, that's the hardest part especially when G2 have been given reason to believe. 
So Cyclone's got to calm the kids down. Yeah, there's, there's two very opposing situations taking place within these teams, right? For G2, they're being brought back in, and they are a stage team, and it doesn't take much to switch that on and start to believe, especially when you're playing from the back, but you're rapidly closing the distance. They thrive in that sort of environment. Mowers, meanwhile, they had this game in the bag, this map at least. That's what it felt like. And as it starts to slip through their fingers, they get worried. Are we going to crumble on the stage again? Can't question it, right? You can't think about that. Round by round. Oh. Still making plays, still making moves. Chip Hackers down the vent. G2 must consider this as an option. They won't retain a single player. Instead, they look to take space elsewhere. Monacy covering next is aggressive ramp situation. Nico. Doesn't have a nade, the molly's too late. Zersha makes it down for free. We now have two Mouse players in that lower site. Well, she hears these jumps as well. Nico spots a player, mate. He goes for that kill, but he'll pay the price. Double entry for Mouse, and they have all of the map to tangle with. They don't even need to go upper. Free B site. Almost feels too good to be true for Maus. They're very respectful with how they approach this. The goal is just not walking into a stack, right? If they want to end B, that's fine, but maybe you know, send a player in early, get that information, find out where the stack of G2 is. If they're going to hit B, they need to do it with all players grouped at the same time. Torsi's going to go up heaven, either try and cut the, ro uh, the rotate down through the vent, or late lurk to stop G2 attempting a retake. B is free, we know that, and Mal soon will too. Torshi's just trying to stay alive behind enemy lines. And he at least plays to deny a save unless G2 exit T-spawn. That is their only option here. So Mal's do do it. The double entry and G2 don't find anyone. Mal's hold their positions and convert on lower. That lobby take does nothing for G2. And the exits will be allowed. That is a huge sigh of relief round for Maus. It's all started with Brolin, finished off nicely by Torshi. And they don't overthink it. They don't overplay their hand. They don't go walking into a G2 stack. They follow through with the intent to hit that B site. They were waiting for a while, seeing if Nexa cropped up at any point. And so now the last time out used for G2, a tall task ahead of them. They thought that they were grinding away back into this game. They thought that they were going to break the mental of Maus. But after so many fall downs in these playoff games, Maus might have learned their lessons. And I mean, if Maus win this game, if, the, if Maus win this series, it's so great to not just see them do it and, and, and break the loss streak on the stage, but also to do it against, you know, one of those Titan, the Titan teams that we talk about in phase in G2. It's not like they've got a caveat on a win. It's revenge a week later. It's revenge on a new map pool. I would argue a worse map pool on paper for Maus, but they've come in prepared for this playoff game, prepared for their opponent. And now, four chances, one round. What have Miles got for us? Hey, he's into this one slowly off of the break. Could be nerves of not wanting to give it away, or it could be giving G2 a rope to hang themselves here as they are desperate and Maus know that Monacy's trying to make a hero play out in the yard and this is a heroic moment he's not going to see anyone yet but even the info that no one's crossed with these but he's not ready for exertion and that quick switch cost him his life a man up now for Maus and one hell of a player to have found it's top of the board Monacy dead first in what could be G2's last round on this map their map Oh! Ah! Jitters. 
He'll get little, it little jittery, but that's because Mauser are on the precipice of something huge here. They know how big taking away G2's home map is to open up this semi-final. They're just four kills from doing that. Hooksy and Hunter have to withstand this top site exec as Mao's come lurching in. It's awkward on the first, but there's the follow-up. Torchy and exertion. Quick work made of the top site. And Mao's practicing what they preach. It's like any other game. That's what they said. And they have played to that. They might have learned their lesson a day. G2 left watching on. They can't believe what's just happened. Dominated on Nuke to open. And now we enter uncharted waters. Maus, it's Ancient up next. They're picking the series. But with a map under their belt and wind in their sails, there might be no stopping them. Yeah, godlike game from Jimpak. Godlike performance from Torshi. Matching Monacy, besting him either in head-to-head -head AWP. Maus are here to play. to another event. Did you even have time to practice before coming here? No, we had uh, two days off. Then we had one day where we rewatched the, the games we played in playoffs. Then we just played one day regularly to you know just stay in shape. So uh, not too much time uh, of practice, but uh, I think we did a good uh, development throughout the major. I think uh, we feel ready for this event. I was saying this about some of the other teams, and I don't know if you feel this way about your team, but you prep a playbook for the major, and you go pretty deep in the major, but you still would have had a lot more like rounds and strats for other maps that you wouldn't have used yet. So do you still come in anyway without the practice feeling quite ready? Yeah, for sure. As I said, I think we made just a big development uh, throughout the whole major. I think we struggled from the start, but I think as the major was going further, we started to play better. Uh, obviously, we had also two weeks bootcamp prior to the major, and we have added a lot of things. And as you said, there is definitely things that we haven't shown, but obviously like mostly you have shown, but when you play certain opponents, you still add small things for the opponents to anti them a bit. So uh, yeah, but it's not uh, much down to the, the strats and tags that you have. It's mostly to just individuals. And I think that's what we have liked the most of the major. I think if we step up individually, we are gonna go even deeper for this one. Talk about turning over a new page. This was an entirely different book for Mao's Struggle City. In the playoffs was the story coming into the semi-finals at the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu, and Mao's did their best to absolutely silence us. I am simply stunned, Matthew. Not only is this nuke a map we don't often see Mao's play, but it's against G2, who we call the final boss of big stages. Yeah, listen, I'm, uh, I am as gobsmacked as you are after map one. This is a Freaky Friday situation. That's what's happening. You could hide the name tag of the teams and you could say, hey, wow, G2 is playing really well. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, this, this is Mouseport? Mouseport with the moves? Mouseport with the clutches? Yeah. Mouseport with the multi kills? What the hell was that for Mouse? Oh, wow, 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 wow. What is there really to say? I mean, Torsi, Jim Pat as well, both of those guys going absolutely crazy. Nuclear, maybe even. Yeah, he, uh, we, he heard him, um, you know, when we were comparing Manasi to right. Torzi in the, the pregame. Yeah, and Torzi was like, uh, actually, I'm going to show you a thing or two. I want to 
dive into some of the key moments from this matchup because I, I feel like there were so many of them. Let's begin with the first half because this was a question of Mao's, you know, having to deal with really fast starts from G2, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and G2 win the pistol round and we talk about the importance of the early stage of that game. And I think this is where Mao show us the first signs of life. 5v4, quick trade here. But what I want you to have your attention on is the move and the risk being taken by Torji, beating an Exa here to the 1v1. Four versus three suddenly, even with a lesser weaponry, he's going to keep on being very active around the map. Shuhi, a little bit of luck here. He grabs the foot of Nico as he transitioning, but you can see the read from Mouse is very much on the money. They have stacked that inside play. This is, by the way, the round that starts an incredible Torji half. He gets four kills on that one with the Famas, and this was a way for Mouse to quickly come back to life into this game. You could have imagined G2 just pushing the pressure in the charge, but this is where I started thinking that Mouse is ready to play the game. Yeah, I mean, it was the kind of side that could have gone in a completely different direction, though, wasn't it? It was 4-1 for G2. They were looking really, really good. And I was looking at that and thinking, uh-oh, it's happening again. You know, G2 feel like they're just running away with things here. So I appreciate the mental fortitude and the mental strength for, from, from Mouse to actually be able to bring that one back to a reasonable first half scoreline. You know what? That resilience has a name. And that name is Yimpat. That is the name. Sometimes I have to come up with rounds to show you guys at home. Sometimes I have to come up with highlight packages. With Yimpat, it's pretty easy. I can just show you the highlight packages and it will recap the rounds that made a difference mm. for Mouse. I cannot understate, I cannot understate the importance that Yimpat had on the CT side here. The amount of multi-kill he's gotten. And I want to I have you guys' attention on the movement from kill one to kill two. It's something that Yimpat is doing with an incredible talent. How he changes slightly his position getting ready for the next duel and an incredible ability to multi-kill. He's had three or four of them that were very impactful. He put them on his back. So fluid from Jimmy. That is beautiful. And he was one of the names that you were really putting under the spotlight, right? Him yep. and Exertion, we know the instrumental impact they can have for Mouse, and it was paying off in dividends. Yeah, I mean, 1.3 rating for Jimmy coming into the playoffs, and I think it's probably going to go up, which is not normally how it usually works, right? You should be going down when you come into playoffs. Um, obviously, you got a touch on Exertion there as well. Uh, he went missing in that last matchup between these two teams, and that was where I was kind of focusing on him and saying, okay, he can't afford to have that kind of a game again where he's maybe giving away a couple too many frags early in rounds and things like that, trying to force the issue a little bit too much. But he didn't really go missing at all here. Obviously, his life is made easier by Jimmy and Torsi going absolutely crazy. That helps, definitely. I would say there was a couple of moments there for Zershan where I thought, ooh, you might have overstepped the boundaries a little bit there, but... The nade I mean, mishap outside? That, okay. was, uh... that, was, that was a strange moment. Like, <laughs> but in general, he was measured. Like, yes. This was the measured performance I was hoping to see from Zershan. We know he likes to take risks. And let's be real, I think he put Nico in his pocket outside on the T side. Like, he literally outplayed Nico. And it's not just a question of how many times did he kill him. I think that happens about twice in this game. But it's how he kept G2 in the dark. He crossed a couple of moments to Secret. He avoided the Molotovs a couple of times. He was patient. The last round, he's hiding behind main. Manesi comes a look-in because obviously G2 is feeling under pressure. Boom, here's Zershan waiting for him. He played splendid. This is exactly what he needed to do. Put fear in G2's defense. Don't give away easy kills or stupid kills and strike whenever you get the chance. He's done all of it. What was the story of the T side then for Mouse for your money? Because I, I was kind of impressed with how much of pace they were coming out with uh, on this particular map. Yeah, I agree with you. And I am surprised that the outside defense from G2 was so weak. Mm -hmm. This is usually something that we always refer to. We say, oh, you're going to play Nico outside and every now and then Manesi is going to come helping and you're going to be in big trouble. You're never going to own that territory. I don't think that was the case here. I think Mouse were very comfortable. I think they surprised G2 a couple couple times and these are also extremely weak signs from G2 which I feel like are immune to our criticism right now but did not do a good performance at all. Yeah, I mean, we highlighted Outer, we highlighted Vent before the game started, and again, those seem to be the areas of the map which Mouse was able to isolate and uh, exploit, in a sense. We saw a lot of times, a couple of the Mouse players being able to get down to the lower side of the site, and that's where, on Nuke, the CT side gets a little bit chaotic. You're trying to figure out where you have to go. There's holes in the defense at that point, so struggles for G2, and even then, when G2 pull off a couple of clutch rounds, like, it's not enough, because Mouse have just gotten rolling too much. He just felt uncomfortable. I think we have round 16, we can show you guys as well, where a situation which is a mid-round in which G2 is supposed to know how to handle, I was very surprised by how timid they were. Mm -hmm. Starts here with Manasi, finds a kill, falls back. Nico, a little bit of an entre-deux here, and in between, I don't really know why he gives away his life. That's a 4v4, but then just have a look at the positions that G2 have and how constricted they are. Hunters tries to peek out of heaven, dies, dies rather, Hooksy doesn't know when to peek, and as a result, just basically waits for his death as the, the move is coming, the pincer move is coming to him, 
this round screamed discomfort for G2. This, um, if we can use all the superlatives when it comes to G2. Big stage game, super big match players, superstar Nico. None of that came to fruition in this round. They, they looked like they were timid and shy, and they let Mouse come to them. We have so much to talk about for this round of Nuke. We only have a couple of minutes to discuss Ancient. Uh, what's your opinion on, you know, Maus bringing this into the pool? Because let's preface it, that was G2's pick of Nuke. Personally, I was a relative fan of the pick. I liked that we changed the approach. Wasn't really uh, confident with the vertigo that happened in Copenhagen, so that is good to me. But I, I do think that this mouse that just showed up on you changes the whole narrative. I, we've been waiting for it for so long. We were saying, hey, what if it happens? What if it clicks? What is this breakthrough? What are we going to see? But is, th is this not the, the map that we were talking about? I, I like it. I like it. I think, yeah, definitely you want to change it up. If your mouse here and Vertigo hasn't been working in the past, I like the fact that they've gone towards something different. What I will say is even then, G2 have kind of looked a little bit susceptible on this map at this very event. They lost it to Liquid. It was a close affair against Heroic. So in my mind, I agree with everything you're saying in that this seems like a good choice for Maus and I mean, Jesus, there are 2-0 Maus in the in the discussion now because we were coming into this, you obviously said 2-0 G2, I said 2-1 G2 and now I'm kind of like, okay, there's a bit of egg on my face, but uh, I wonder if Maus can go ahead and do this. I feel like they can. Uh, Maus isn't really used to, and it's going to sound like a dig, but it's not. They're not really used to being in a winning position in a playoff like that. You know, they, they've been on the receiving end mm. yes. of smackings here and there, shellac shellacking, what you would say. And now they're actually a map away from winning. So if you've put so much work into getting your player used to just perform the way they're supposed to, embrace that pressure, I hope you've also talked to them about, hey, you're, you're about to win. How do you behave when you're about to win? Are you going to keep going on with the moves? Do you let it get to you? That's what we're about to find out. We are indeed about to find out. And it comes down to Mouse's map pick of Ancient. Unfortunately, egg on the face of G2 after losing out on Nuke. Elimination potentially awaits. It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead this late in the game? And At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. feels like actually you're having a pretty good tournament so it seems like at least when you're playing the games you kind of have that energy yeah i mean i try to put all my energy into the games uh, always but yeah maybe yesterday i didn't play my best game but i still feel like it was an okay game even though i played not good so i'm happy with it but yeah lately i'm playing good and uh, i'm happy as well that we as a team can perform so yeah. Anything to focus on over the next couple of days as a team? Again, I'm sure you're sort of over talking about this whole playoffs thing. It seems like every time we talk to you, that gets brought up. But is there anything in particular that you guys are focusing on or having conversations about at the moment? Um, just to just to keep up what we're doing and uh, don't go loose in the next few days. And we have two days off, so it's important to to stay on our toes and uh, to like um, keep the pressure up a little bit. Uh, so even though we have a break, we still need to come in the hot on, uh, on the semi-final day. So we cannot just uh, lay back now. How's the confidence levels going into the next couple of days? Obviously, you, you do have tomorrow off, so that's a big benefit for you guys. But, you know, there's conversations around the drop-off in performance when it comes to stage matches. But I don't know. I feel like Chengdu, it's, it's maybe not the um, tournament that is going to kind of get under your skin quite as much. Is there like an experience factor now for you guys having played together, obviously, as a team a fair bit? Are you feeling good going into that, uh, that stage match? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, as you said, maybe some people call us like a group merchant, and it's uh, definitely something we noticed as well. Um, but we are working for it, and uh, I hope we can prove in, in China now that um, it will like turn around and we can actually perform in playoffs finally. Um, we had a couple of tournaments where we like played really good before the playoffs, and it, like then we got a bit disappointed. But um, 
now it's time to turn around and just change it. But uh, yeah, now we have a couple of days off and we just need to relax and spend some time together and just uh, prepare mentally for the arena. Have Mao's become what everyone fears? The one plight that faced this team was the pressure of the big stage getting under their skin. They've been saying that this time will be different. This time will belong to them, but they now stand on the precipice of a victory in the semi-finals. One map from besting G2 and locking in a grand final appearance. T side and Miles were so confident on the offense in that last map. G2 are going to have their work cut out for them here, calling straight out of spawn and going for that A hit while G2 focus on middle. They'll have quick rotates, but they'll get smoked off in the donut. So Miles might have this open pathway into the bomb site, into the post plant. Out they come, in they go. Smokes are in. Next has even dropped one of his own. He's going to try and make a play here. Set up from a flash. Honestly, provides them out from the spawn. But nothing found yet. It's just a little awkward here. Next are dead on the smoke. Hunter trying to make a play. Edging on the Molotov. One from Hunter. Oh, and the oh. double. Nico lent a helping hand. And the Kovacs are in. Now Torshi backstab late, it's being held, it's considered, and Hooksy wraps it up. No celebrations from G2, just focused faces, a map down already. A huge comeback to embark upon. An overpass that Miles never made it to of the major. The job has just begun for G2, but at least it's begun. And I really like the, the point the match he made over on the desk where he said, sure, you know, the goal up until now has been playing their game in these playoffs. But it's a very different situation for a team that have always fielded L's here to actually be so close to winning, so close to taking a, a hard-fought battle in a playoff game and moving into a grand final, no less. That is a very different mindset required. Yeah, I mean, Miles have literally never done it, right? When we look at, you know, in, in the recent uh, playoff runs that we've seen this roster embark on, you know, against FaZe across those three events, they never got a map. G2 in the major, they didn't get a map. They were barely in the map. So it is a very different beast now for Miles. It's a situation that they have not been in for a long time. Since, like, the, you know, the core of this roster back at the Rio Major, that kind of time. It's been a while. 
So what are we going to do with it? Explosion out A. We should have enough SMGs to stop this from getting out of control. And Hunter makes it so. Every bullet right down the center. Under the rug for G2, but now Miles come through with a buy. Another thing that we have to consider, right? The, the victories were few and far between for, for G2 in that last map. But as they try to come back here, and as you want to leave everything out on the field, you're going to have individuals pushing themselves that much harder. And with every kill, every round that G2 post, the crowd's going to go wild. Yeah, and so Mouse are also battling against that. I mean, every look at it the other way, every death you receive is getting cheered. It's been a hard fought battle for Mouse. They've still managed to do it. They've got a feeling about this A side right now. So did G2, because they're getting aggressive. They cleared out all of the B lane. Roland hears this. And so Mouse, in a weird sense, now know they're walking into a setup. The G2 will have numbers here. There's two towards the site. Flash through the smoke, changing those timings, and they get the entry as well. But Hunter lined up with multiple kills. Monacy will get one. Three on three now. Miles have control, but G2 look like they want to go. And Miles have committed to this. That bomb gets away from them as Torshi blocked off out in the open. Shui's trying to hold the line, but he's low on health. And so Brolin, who started this round all the way over towards B, comes oh. in on the backstab, a crucial kill. Nico left up in the clutch. And with Brolin so low and knowing about, this one has to belong to Nico. This has to be where he leaves a mark, where he finds his impact. Popped. Brolin has gotten away with that bomb. Runs now, he gets hurt, but further and further he gets away. I wonder if Nico has anything. No, no info, no knowledge. Now he sees the bomb's gone. It'll dawn on him, but too late. Brolin's going to be able to pick his post part, pick his peak, choose the fight. Nico now, it all dawns. <gasps> Brolin hears that. Oh, Brolin's got the info. Might not have the HP. But Brolin knows exactly what he has to do to win this. Bomb is planted for him. And Nico, no idea where Brolin could be. No clue. Oh, are you sure? Now I think he has a bit of an inkling. Wrong way. Brolin calls his bluff. Brolin calls his bluff. Swing it out. Nico, will he get there in time? It's going to be close. Uh-uh. He doesn't have it. And so Brolin, the balls to call. Nico's bluff is madness. And that's how Mouse get on the board. No matter what help you give him, Brolin ain't giving up that round for free. Nico can use what he wants, but it's not enough in this round. And that bomb robbery against a low HP Brolin, his biggest mistake. And here's the thing, that, that crowd advantage goes both ways. When they're not cheering, I think that's what gives away to Brolin that he's not sticking the bomb. That he's still looking for the fight. It's hard to know. Oh my god, look at this aggression. They oh, swap! They oh, swap in the smoke! Oh. Brolin's right behind them! Does he even know? Smoke comes down, Shui makes a call, and Brolin's wondering how oh the hell am I god. here? I'm gonna just take the sight. I want the whole round right now. Cheers will not save you now, G2. How do you communicate this? You find out the hard way. Erlen wanted more out of that. Yeah. But when Hunter pivots on the spot, he, he just has to take the kill while he's got it. You'd rather the 5v4 than trying to milk that for a double, and you end up getting hit on a weird timing. Over in mid, good molly from Nico. Hands him two fights. Ones that Maus didn't want to give over. But they have no say in the matter. And so what was once a good start, a gnarly timing found for Brolin, ends up with the advantage in G2's favor. Mouse make moves, try to take away the red room. Bomb in tow here. He's trying to keep the attention over on B, and now they might just look to follow through with it. With that kill coming in, you should be cognizant of a second player who's usually here 
and they've spotted him back in the cave. The unknown quantity right now is Nico. Drawing attention, he's just trying to get them looking his way so no one checks the ramp. Nico can win the round right now. He can drop that bomb, they line up. He takes one and a half. Brawl and finished off this time around. And Torshi now needs a clutch, but the Deagle denies. And G2 get back to their winning ways. It's so similar to that start of Nuke. These early trades, this is exactly where we were. Yet still, Miles ran away with the half. They'll have to do it again. G2 respond efficiently. 3-1 now. Great bait for Hooksy. He, he doesn't need to show himself there, but it draws so much attention that Nico is able to get even more value from that FAMAS. He takes three and a half kills in the round. G2 getting hyped now. Nico's having his way with the server. Al's committing to an investment here. They call a timeout. They're, they're really wanting to keep the pressure on. They're really wanting to keep that aggression coming through. And don't get me wrong, that is a, a core part of the, the essence of this Maus team. But you don't want it to change from you playing your game to being desperate to end this series. I think that's how you give G2 the way back in. The yeah, uh, overexcitedness, you know, the overzealousness to try and put the series to rest. At no point am I counting G2 out of making a comeback in this in this BO3. If Mal's are really the real deal, if they've really shaken off the nerves of the stage, they've got to prove it. They've got to earn it every single step of the way. Next second to be, it's only Hooksy right now. Good block, but they're coming up the ramp for the most part. Roland dives through the smoke, sprayed through. 5v3, G2 in a perfect position, and Mouse could do nothing about it. Shattered through that smoke. And while Torshi trades places, it's only for a moment. Nico has that bullet in the back, and Nexa will take it instead. Four to one, five alive. This is G2's game now. And one of the most exciting things early on was this idea of have Mao's learned their lessons? Well, they learned enough to put up one map, but now they might learn. It's one thing to do it once, it's quite another to win the series. Yeah. G2 picking up steam, picking up momentum, and building back stronger on Mao's map pick. They've just had so much control, Mao's can't even play in lane, really. Constant pushes down these instant door smokes from spawn, and again G2 go double cave. They have been really staking their claim on this integral part of the map. And we have Deagles, no util, no armor. Of course, Mal's aren't going to fight for it, but even when they've been on buy rounds, for the most part, G2 have had this control. Mal's playing from the back foot. not actually been anything reliable in this game yet for Mal's. Anything they can look to and say, yeah, this is a, a gap, this is a weakness. Double set of the middle, easily done. Good timing on that flash. Uh, Hooksy, Hooksy just takes one. And Monacy to close. Another five alive round. G2 are rolling in dough right now. I think, you know, if you, if you want to look at signs of pressure, Torshi, last map, 24 and 7. Oh, to open up this one, yeah. he's nearly matched that death count from the entire map of Nuke, but without a single kill to show for it. A lot harder to start off strong on the T side of this map, right, than CT Nuke, feeling like your rotator perfect, you're in the right positions, Mal's going to pick up the pace. They want to show that confidence from the end of Nuke, and the first entry comes through. Hooksy caught completely off guard, as is Zersha. Nico to the corner with nothing after one. Mal's managed to find a way in. 
But G2, we mentioned that money, they may as well give it a go. If they go for this, if they if they manage to turn this around from a 2v4, they break Maus. I, I think this round, this retake, if G2 actually want to commit to it, that would be them trying to destroy the hearts and minds of Maus. Steps. They won it late, hoping Maus exit for the bomb radius. It might work. There's only two players in the site right now, and one gets oh caught God. immediately. Can they get on that bomb? Broly won't let it happen. Nexa with smoke, Nexa with kit, and Nexa too far away to make this work. It is a oh. Maus round, and even he can't bait them into death. Mal's prioritized money, and Nexa leaves with nothing. That's a very heads-up play for Mal's. Easy to see them panic in that situation, but they realize that bomb is too far gone. Huge kill for Brolin in that 2v3. Ooh. Straighting round for Nico. And it's not just him. Hooksy's like spamming the wall when he sees the exit come in, and he's just not even considering that Maus would actually throw a B rush at him. Like, that's quite a surprise to see that off the back of the boards. Maus are just going for these group I mean, hits, but yeah. look who's in the right place. His Monacy and his AW. Maus is still kind of gambling on the pace, right? They're hoping the pace is what sets them free, and it's only a matter of time before we see if it makes or breaks them. They're going to play into the Monacy Orb, as you mentioned. Flashed off the angle, but Monacy is still very much in the picture here. One kill from the guy. Helping hand, lent from Nexa and Hunter across the map. Everyone moves in towards A for G2. And with the bomb away from Maus, they are living and dying by the pace of this T side. And it's failing more often than it's working for the Maus squad. And they don't believe, you know, in, in these slow default rounds right now, these seesaw rounds, they want a quick hit and they realize they can't do back-to-back -back B rushes. That would be too far gone. But this A side has been even uglier for Maus's T side. I haven't tried a mid pop. A delayed takes denied by double setups. This is a uh, very uncomfortable constricting T side for Maus, and that's from G2. They're saving already. Torshi far from guaranteed in his position. G2 planting the flag on CT Ancient, a side they've had struggles with. I think Maus need the reminder that your confidence and willingness to win is not linked to the speed that you play at. Playing slow is not the same as playing scared. Because thus far, all they're, all they're kind of doing here is having the game go by in a flash. You're going to feel like this T side is over before you've even had time to think about it at this rate. And what do you have to show for it by the end of the half? We've only got a few rounds left here. Maus need them desperately on the T side of Ancient. G2 back to their mid take. Mollies go down instantly, denying that faster play. I like the combo on B as well. Stops Maus looking for a pick up the ramp there. Restricted by Molly Nade. All right, we've got a boost up Zershin. Trying to open this round is Brolin instead towards the B side, catching Hunter going very aggressive through a smoke. A price G2 will pay. Oh, the Whoa. timing is awkward. They can punish this, but oh. they can't. Try all you want. Oh, oh my god. That is madness, but he gets away with it. Oh. That is the last thing Hooksy was expecting. Aggro down in mid from Nico. Monacy holding on to the heavens. This round is far from over. G2 re-aggressing. Oh, but Nico's caught at the hands of Jimmy P. monacy has got to deliver. He has support again from Nexa, rotating into red, but right as he leaves the angle, that's when Torshi could look to make a move. Missed shot from Monacy. Nexa's got to fly solo, and he can't get a handle over middle.
Toshi has finally arrived as he breaks through with three kills in that round there to make all the difference for Maus. What a great move for Toshi to do the smoke. It looks ballsy, it looks insane, and sure, the round rests on it going successfully, but he hears Hooksy trade out guns after using all his ammo for that double kill, so he realizes, I have a timing, I need to take it, and the way that Maus trade out in middle there, they use the audio, look at that, to, to, to bait Monacy looking deep, Sure, Jimpad just gets away with BS on the P250. But they're trading peaks very effectively. Roland with his signature at Molotov in the cave. That gets him up heaven very early. Maus, this is the most control they've had in middle all game. And they've taken, they've taken the pace out of these rounds largely. And I think that's going to work in their benefit massively. Because here's the thing, you can go back to the usual mouse bravado and pace once you're feeling it, once you're feeling warmed into the game. And we're starting to approach that point now. Torshi was a non-factor, is starting to find success. Exertion, making oh, a play here, yeah. gets out with a double. And sure, he's gonna fall, but the round should be locked in here for Mouse. You could see that the pressure was there for this Mouse squad. It, it was... It was visible from outside of the server, but it doesn't take much to bring you back into it. And so with the last two going their way, finally chaining together consecutive rounds, that's going to matter a hell of a lot in the long run here. G2, what was once looking like one hell of a, a almost a surefire comeback to open up this map, now could get called into question if Maus wake up. Even the save is tenuous at best. Monacy's in main and Jim Pat is patrolling. He wants to commit. Might be nothing for G2. Monacy's allowed though, and got this all important buy up coming now for G2. Yeah, this one really decides a hell of a lot, right? For, for G2, they can still have a strong CT side if they win this round. But if they come up short, suddenly we're looking at a tie game. And considering you were once leading this 6 2, that's the last thing G2 want to happen. So that's why they take a timeout here. The, the fate of this half and whether or not it closes up rests on this round. Monacy and Hooksy exchange a couple of words there. It feels like Monacy wants to be involved. Torshi getting to Don and AWP over on the T side as well. I see G2 go back for that lane control, right? The old faithful on the CT side, they're lining up the door smoke immediately and they've been taking a space almost every single round of the CT side. So it's been very constricting for Maus. We've set Brolin on his spawn time after time. He's gonna go for it again. Shui is even up ramp, getting spotted in the cubby, gets out unpunished, smoke on the molly. Maus used three smokes just to get this B lane control. They know what G2's remedy was, and they do everything they can to deny it. It means an execute is unlikely in this round. Maus might have to win it off the kills. sershan has got hunting. Look at the map control in red at 120. Hunter's eyes on this, but Sershan doesn't need to hurry in this position now. His team gets set up outside of A, and it's only Nexa with the worst gun in the round on this big box. Oh, and Torshi catches him on the retreat. That is a big opener, and with Exertion posted over in red, he can manipulate these rotates, and he doesn't jump the gun. He doesn't get jittery. Going out a little bit later, he gets that crucial trade on Monacy and keeps the advantage in Mouse's favor. Oh, dear. Oh, Exertion! Filth. This is so much more composed than the previous rounds. Pressured here, but he doesn't budge. Will not give G2 a way back in. That is filth, that is dirt. And even if he dies, I say even if, it's a big if, Nico finds him, but there's a trade for the round, and Maus look to level out the half when all is said and done. You're witnessing Maus not have to take an L to learn a lesson. They're doing this live and on the fly. They, were, they were playing this game too too aggressively. They, they were trying to force the confidence, and it's in slowing it down that they've gained 
true confidence, true enlightenment for the Mouse squad here. The calls are excellent, by the way, because it's not just that A split off of Zertion's position, him hearing rotations. It, it's the fake out towards B as well. All those smokes putting out the mollies forces G2's B stack. They think it's coming. Shui has played with G2. Shui has played with Hooksy in this series. And now, the final hit here for Maus. The knockout blow on their T side through smokes. G2 feeling desperate. Desiring any kill, any chance. There's a big flank for Nexa. It reinforces B, but with so little. Three on five. Mal's watching their back. Jim Pat holding his position. He'll nail the shot. Now they know it's a B stack. Modesty hits two Ds. Where did that come from? The Mal's really want to go. They've got a guy trapped. Do they want to go into Modesty though? He's down the ramp, waiting oh. for the round. Oh, they swing him together. And it's together that Maus pull this one back to an even scoreline from 6-2 down. Maus are here and they're not messing around. Mouths have adapted, but can they overcome? G2 start this one with a great CT side. They open up 6-2, but then Mouths chain together four to close out this half on an even keel as they move over to the CT side. G2 have got their work cut out for them. Yeah, no time to model it over, just got to get right back into the game, and this is the half that could eliminate G2 from the competition. Revenge for Mouths on the stage from Copenhagen just days ago. You look Mouse, a fresh face Mouse, where everyone's pulling their weight on this second map. Got G2 poised for a B hit. Some nades for Nico in the post plant. Monacy trying to get the spot. Only two CTs in the site. Hunter fakes it out, and G2 come running. Gonna make it in up through the round. There's not really Whoa. much that Maus can do about that. Quick flick from Monacy as he goes hunting, but sent back. Uh -oh. 4v4. Maus deal with the aggressive Monacy. But it's been Nico in these pistol rounds that's been a real standout player for G2. And he's still in play. Sat back at the cave. Not gonna take a fight yet. Tap on the bomb, but not the commit to the stick. Maus are hoping that gives them some fights in this oh. retake, and it will. Okay. They all come through. That is more like it. Decisive victory for G2. It's what they need. Nico's having a great game, and it would have hurt for Monacy, who makes those plays and often makes them look easy. Running through a smoke in a 5v4, if they lose that round, it's going to make him look a little silly. G2, don't let him down. And now Maus go for the full eco while G2 try to swing out into the lead. And they've got the whole map, mid taken, B lane, empty. Maus stack up spawn side. <laughs> Should we keep an eye on his troops? Ping pong.
D2 picking up uh, the conversion on this pistol should be a guarantee. Now as they wait to see where the play ends up and they've got one flash to try and pop through with. Just about how exciting does this really get? It's an instant mow down. Monacy composed and his team around him. Do not let those pistols find a thing. The intrigue goes up here with G2 recuperating a little after the last four rounds don't go their way. They find success on the pistol, they stick the landing on the conversion, but Maus were never interested in upsetting early. Instead, they wanted to bring out the guns as fast as they can. Maus have got to dig deep now for this game. They're going to really have to work for it. G2 getting to call the shots, play their pace. Explosive mid take from Owls, double molly. Oops, he's sending it, Kane. What a flash set up by Nico. Sure, he sees nothing. They run through a Molotov danger, but Monacy survives. He lives to tell the tale of five points of health, even the flick. Nico saves Hooksy's life, sets him up twice. And they almost have both sights, but they'll go back through the spawn, go for that B hit. Nico's already in position. It's wild to me that Brolin's even here. Seeing if he's given anything early on, G2 have to be a little paranoid as they rotate over. But Brolin would have to do something miraculous if Mowers want to have any chance in this round. Most teams would be looking to save here. Jimmy's even moving around to this side. Brolin will find one, but that's not going to be enough. Surely that won't be enough to entice Jimmy in for the retake. Go on. Give it a go. He wants to try, wants to take the opportunity. Monacy back of the site, low on HP, but he gets the spot. And with the info provided, G2 do not have to overplay their hand here. Like he needed that one clean. Now Monacy's repositioned. Nico swings off contact. There should be no way in for Jimpat. Trying to save now, combat. And they're there to backstab, denied at the door by Hunter. I like that he went for it. If he finds that clean insta kill on Monacy, he has so much room. And there's only Nico there, so. Now give it a go. But by and large, it's G2 building back bigger and better here in map two. It's Mouse's pick. It's where you were ready to write G2 off. But overpass rears its head. Full eco for Mouse. Can put a little bit more in perhaps, but this one's chalked. Those two stars of the server, Torshi and Jimpat, are bottom of the board this time around. I mean, they're, 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 you know, it was a nice idea to go for that retake, I guess. Like, they're, they're believing in the individuals, but every decision you make has consequences. And if they had saved, they would have had four guns here. They would have had another buy that they could have put together instead. They have to just bite the bullet now and play with pistols. That's why you would have seen a, a lot of teams elect to save in that situation. G2, sure, it's not a freebie because there is a little bit of util, some armor to play around. These can always get out of hand. But G2 are massively favored to now move on a double digits. And they're playing their cards right, going for an A hit here. But they know the mouse don't have a lot to play with. There's no range weapons. Though G2 don't like what they see. Gonna stall it out. Red smoke coming in. And go for a mid take instead. Sure, he's got a flash, but it's only Jimp out here. How much can he really get done with a pistol? The swing doesn't commit. And they hit the steps as well. G2 just side by side. This is perfect on the anti eco. Trade is inevitable, not even necessary. Honestly, spams a smoke. And this should be G2 onto double digits, however you like it. Honestly, looking lights out now. Snappy aim. Oh, flawless round taken from G2. This comeback is building. It's taking shape and G2 can feel it. Maus are running out of chances to stop this. Maus are running out of chances to stake their claim to Ancient. And with the amount of smoke spams that have taken place in G2's favor, 
Mouse must just feel down in the dumps here. It was the same to open up that first half. It felt like every time G2 fired off a bullet. Oh, miss smokes. It goes deep through middle. And so Hunt has given oh. an open sight line to fight, one that Exertion was not anticipating. Missing your insta in this round and then that punish. That could not be a worse situation for Mouse to be in right now. And G2 are going to take full advantage of it. They run into the MTA bomb site. What a cool. No one here to stop him. Torshi tries on that cross. He hits a I, shot. Right. Suddenly, it's, it's only Monacy. And he's got the bomb as well. Monacy is flying solo. Monacy is in this all alone. There is no one to help him. No one to bail him out. Monacy has to do it all, and he can't live up to the hype. Roland backstab, and now Hootsie's alone as well. He can get that punish kill, but they've got time to set up. He's got to deliver here for G2. Try and recover a round that feels too far gone with a double setup. Wait, you till Paul Jimmy had to hit that. And luckily he will. Withstands the pressure, trying to build back in. A hat trick from Jim Pat. Shocking round for Mouse to win when you look at what's going on with the miss smoke, with Hunter getting an entry, and then G2 walking into an empty A bomb site. Their only issue is their lack of util. They don't have a single smoke down. These two sight lines of Donut and CT punish them. And no saving grace for G2. A jump at the gun, perhaps. It looked so good. And finally, Miles field around on the CT side. It's a huge sigh of relief that comes with it, because up until now, G2 have felt invaluable. They've not really made many mistakes, and everything, even the chance moments, have been going their way. But they finally go one step too far, and Mao's get to capitalize. But that has to be the round that brings you back into the game. That can't just be a flash in the pan for Mao's. Because G2, they're not feeling the pressure yet. They're still holding a comfortable lead, and that one was a misstep. Oh, I like that Mao's actually pre-nade that lurk smoke in middle. They know what's coming, and it, it's meant they know no one's lurking out mid. It's got to be somewhere else. So Jim Pat's already in position. They're not heavy mid. The molly's ready. Out it goes. Jim Pat can stop or at least stall the rush. And now G2 have to make that call. Like, do we really want to go for this? This is hard to decide for Hooksy. They will recommit. The nade is unbelievable. G2 get cut into pieces. Jimpat can't escape the damage. Zershan sprays off one, and they are so lit up. Is the response. G2 clawing it back. They might all be wounded and hurting. Mod. Shuey trying to make a play. Bomb away from G2. It's Monacy and it's Nico. These are meant to be the guys. These are meant to be the ones you rely on for the G2 squad, and Nico leaves it all on one man for Maus. G2 don't move a muscle yet, but eventually they will have to. Trying to let the nerves kick in for Brolin, seeing if he overplays his hand, and it's so well. but he does not. Nico's pushed through the back line. It's being considered. But Brolin has to hit this. If he does, suddenly, game's afoot. He's in with a chance, oh. but it's Nico you're up against. And there's not many men you would want to face. The, oh, and that guy, that's wild. Nico locks Brolin out of it in spite of Brolin having the read. Uh, in spite of Brolin being ready, Nico and Monacy cook up that round for G2. This one is on a knife's edge right now. This game is just bouncing between both teams. Close rounds, clutch rounds. No one is safe in this game. But G2 are starting to rise ahead. That early streak on this T side has propelled them forward. And now Maus sit back with nothing. For, for G2, that's so huge, right? Because Maus, they, they, were, they were gifted around. They were gifted a chance to build back into this game. And G2 might have just taken that away with just the pistols now. Oh, dear. oh, dear. oh my god! Brolin lines up the double kill. G2, don't get ahead of yourselves here. Monacy blowing the smoke open, but the shot sails past. Hunter moving up through the cave. Big Hunter, big game player. Trying to make this move out into the sight. Deals with the first man and the second. Hunter's here! On for the ace! Knocked out, leaves it all on Monacy, but Hunter's done all he can and then some.
Honestly, it slows it right down. Exertion tries to get ahead of this in a reposition. But that's going to leave him far removed. He will have the element of surprise. The more time ticks, the more Monacy has to consider this as an option. And the more angles Monacy now has to worry about. Still hoping he's fought, still hoping he's peaked. Monacy makes the read, spots oh! him! And Monacy makes it happen! Does right by Hunter, does right by G2. Monacy does not fall down in the clutch. The whole map was open there. Every possibility was very real for Monacy, but he puts it together. And for Maus, a diamond in the rough round robbed away from them. And the reality now sets in that this one might be settled on a third, might be settled on overpass. Nade for Hunter starts this round the way he ended the last. G2 hold their breath. 5v4, map point, Mouse's pick. And this game is just waiting to be closed. G2 hope, they pray that Mouse make a move, go for info, get aggressive, make a mistake. And Mouse have, in a sense, rotating out on this B bomb site, leaving just two players here. The orb nowhere to be seen. G2 surrounding the site bit by bit, gaining more space. Maus just trying to stop. But they have almost no blocking util left. None on this site at least. It's going to come down to gunfights and not even assisted by flashes. Shui in front of the ramp. They are coming out of the cave. He is open for the taking. He must go. Hooksy with the backstab. Brolin can't stop it. And G2 roll out that red carpet. Zersh are trying to hold the line, but the nerves are kicking in now. The adrenaline's kicking in. You can't believe it's gotten away from you, but it has. G2, resilient, and Hunter will close. What a recovery from Hunter. He helps G2 stick this landing and long out this series. They still have their sights set on a grand final, and they're one map away from that full recovery.
G2 back in control and back in this series. Both squads trading picks in what has been a topsy-turvy semi-final so far. But Ancient, the story for Maus, unfortunately consistently being on the back foot and G2 Machu taking full advantage of that. Yeah, listen, you, you say G2 back in control. It feels like they were absolutely not in control in these rounds. Oh my god, they were trying to maneuver like a motorcycle on gravy or whatever the hell was going on. This was as far as controlled as it ever gets. And I'm just going to put it out there, 13-7, to 7, that's a lie. This game wasn't as clear. There were a bunch of moments that were completely crazy. Circus Counter-Strike happening and G2. You saw Manesi's reaction when they won? He, he had a moment of relief like, oh my god, we won. Yeah, that, I think that's a fair statement. That's how it felt watching G2. I mean, the thing is, like a lot of the swing rounds go their way, right? And especially in that second half, once you move on to the T side, you're winning your swing rounds, CT side economy becomes a problem. And it really felt like, I mean, Maus were doing everything they possibly could to try to dig themselves out of that hole. But the whole was too big. Yeah, it, indeed it was. And I think Hunter was one of the players that in the later stages, you know, made it look somewhat sane for G2, but gravy, Machu, gravy. That's what they were they were driving on. So yeah, it's a bit of a metaphor. You can imagine like a motorcycle on gravy. That wouldn't be uh, great. Yeah, skidding all <laughs> over be like, the shop. Sh skidding. That's, that's Should we exactly... dive into a couple of rounds, which kind of epitomize exactly what you're saying? Of course, let's talk about gravy. Let's talk about round 18. Let's talk about G2. Uh, stabilizing a situation that looked a little bit shaky, but I'll give it to them. Round 18 is actually the better side of G2. It's the better side of it uh, if it ever comes on. I can do the miming. I don't think I'm really good at it. It's great. But it's an A side situation where, you know, Hunter plays good post plan situations with Nico as well at the end. Might be have it a little bit later down the road, but they were really, really nice, edgy situation. Yes. And it was a story of, you know, Mao's opening up some of these rounds as well, right? It wasn't like, you know, G2 were per perfectly putting them to bed. This is Never exactly late. what we're going to see. Always on time. That's the A execute from G2 round 18. Perfect grenade from Yipa as well, incredible damage. And here it's a little bit of a trading game, right? It's a good padding. It's, I'm right there behind you. Hunter is going to make a play that I believe is very important as with the bomb, he crosses close to Donut to find the kid onto Exertion. And then here, once we get to the two versus two, that's a good move from Shuhi. This is where the experience from Nico and Monesi, where they slow down the pace. They wait patiently. They realize Mao's a little bit uncomfortable. They're probably going to push them. And then the swing from Nico at the very end, this was a very important round for me because Mao's were right on the money. They had good reaction when the execute comes in, good rotations, they were all there, didn't work out at all. I mean, that's one of the swing rounds that I'm talking about. That one, there's the Monacy clutch as well. Like, there's a lot of these rounds that really come down to the wire, and if one or two of those go the way of Mouse, maybe we would have seen a different game, but again, that sort of big game experience shining through. And then there's a round, Matthew, which should never have been even a question that G2 should have been closing out, right? But somehow, some way, they go, oh, may may maybe Mouse, you could take this round 19, and uh, Hunter's there to save the day. I'm sure there is a logic. I know they've just won a round on the A side, so here they send Hooksy a little bit as a lamb to try and fake it out, but the timing is a little bit odd. Here as well, completely disconnected push from G2, right? Nico is five meters away from Nexa. There's no trading possibility. It's a 2v4. G2 were about to throw away their lead. If it wasn't for this play from Hunter, crossing the smoke, finding impact, and then the way he decomposes the duels is beautiful. But let that not fool you. This was horribly played from G2. What is this, this call at this very moment when you have such lead, you have them on low econ, you have everything you need, and then you send Hooksy basically to die, basically to die on the A side. But then if you're gonna do that, you have to have the rest of the pack being ready to pounce together. They were not. They almost allowed Miles to come back into this game. If it wasn't for Hunter, we would have a different scenario. Yeah, imagine the difference in the narrative that we'd be talking about right now if Hunter couldn't pull off basically what was the impossible uh, yeah, on the yeah, A side. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but this is the issue, right? Like, obviously, you're giving G2 time to warm into this series. There's no doubt that they've been a little bit slow there on map one. Even on map two, things are looking a little bit shaky, a bit up and down. But come map three, if they've had enough time on that stage to kind of reach that critical mass that we know that G2 can get to, maybe there's still a loss in here for, for Miles. Let's talk about emotions just for a hot minute. I know this is your favorite topic, Matthew, because we were talking a lot about Mao's emotions coming into things, right. but it's actually been somebody on the side of G2 who's uh, he's been getting a little bit angry, a little bit yeah. frustrated. I think we could see the, the pent-up frustration from Nico uh, towards the first half. And what was really concerning to me was that he actually started incredibly well in this game. When I say game, I say ancient. Yeah. He very quickly went up to 10 kills. He found a lot of impact. So I thought that this would just free him up from that frustration, it would let him lose a little bit. But you could see that even then, in spite of having a good game, he was very frustrated, he was very animated. Yep. And this comes from map one. This is definitely the credit that you have to pay on that invoice for map one. And I'm hoping that he shakes off a little bit 
on map three now that they've su survived this obstacle? Because I, I don't really sit well with these reactions, knowing he's having a good game. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely something that if you're in the server there with him, I mean, I'm assuming he's not comming it into the, you know, into the voice comms. You'd hope that he's muted his microphone or whatever. But <laughs> it's a teammate, you, you right? Exactly. That's what I'm going to go and say is like, I'm, I'm sitting here next to you, and if you're having a bad day, like, I can see that. I can feel that, and that's obviously, you know, going to be sort of seeping into the mind a little bit, and you're thinking, man, this guy's not even playing that badly. What happens if he starts missing his shots? Like, and, and that's the issue oh, as well, no. right? One hand of this conversation is, of course, the emotions we talk about, the effect on his teammates, but also the fact that G2 allowed Mouse back in. Like, there were situations yes. where they were a little bit antsy, wanted to peek in power play situations where they didn't need to. Somehow, it's almost as if they felt like offended in their honor to have lost map one. And they were trying to make a point about, listen, we are about to smash you on map two. And they were on, on too far on the side of the aggression. They gave away situations. They allowed Mouse back in. This is the other side of the coin. And that is exactly why we get to overpass the map that we never got to see back in Copenhagen because it was a 2-0 from the side of G2. So Jordan, mm. what are you expecting? We don't know what side they're going to be starting on. A knife will decide that. But where do your expectations lie now? Well, I mean, you'd obviously be wanting to start on the CT side. It's probably the most CT side of map in the pool at the moment. Both teams look like they're much more comfortable on that side of the map, which is no surprise really at all. But then again, like it's kind of hard to read into this one because like you said, we haven't really seen it too much. It's certainly not up there necessarily in the map pool for either of these teams either. So the way that this series has played out, it kind of leaves me wondering really more so than having the answers at this point. I feel like we could kind of go in any direction, right? Jimmy and Torzi completely went missing there on Ancient. Who's to say that'll continue? Who's to say they don't just show up on Overpass like they did on map one and completely close it out? So big question marks for me. I don't have the answers this time. I do. G2 is winning. That's even an answer. I, I think it's G2. I like that. I really think for Maus, you had to win 2-0. Uh, I think now you let the demons back in a little bit with that map of Ancient as well. And the level of opposition recently for G2 has been much higher, right? They've had to stress test against VP twice on overpass, and that's on very short term. Whereas Maus, I feel like the, the level, the playing field rather was pretty low, like games against Ecstatic, for example. So I think G2 is ready, and I would give them a much higher fighting chance even on the T side. So for me, I think it's done. That game against Tyloo is in my head for Maus, and that's... <laughs> that wasn't great either. Yeah, a little bit worried. Yeah, some warning signs, I think wrapped after that one but it is time to be getting into the third map after this short break overpass the ground that we didn't get to see going down between g2 and Maus back at the major now in full swing Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris three flick, oh, they're making one by one sets, no way! He wants to... Oh, 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 does it? Smokes. Yeah, double smokes in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. You guys obviously have a really high floor. You play really good Counter-Strike, right? Last couple of tournaments, though, you get to the playoffs and things don't really go your way. What do you think the reason for that is? What do you mean by that? I mean, I mean you lose as soon as you get to the playoffs I mean, and on the stage. Like that, man. You choke. No, we just uh, don't win. All right, that's fair enough. How, how are you going to win next time? Maybe here? Um, first of all, we need the two more players. I, I, I sorted this out for you. I, did you just, you just, you have it. You, you're going to be fine. The question is, who are they going to be? We don't know. I gave you the red car, so it's going to be, you know, red jersey. I thought this whole through, man. Yeah. I put, I put a lot of thought into this. No, I think, uh, I don't know. It's just going to be another experience for playoffs if we get there. So I think it's, uh, we're still a young team, so we're still a long way to go. And the uh, playoffs are a very interesting thing in the sport. So I'm, uh, Happy to play them if we play them again. You feel like it's not necessarily really a Counter-Strike thing, more a uh, mental thing? No, 
I think, I mean, in this team, we only actually had one real time to play in front of our crowd, if you put it that way, like which was Katowice. Um, obviously, the major, what happened there was a difficult situation, so I wouldn't really use that as a as a way of saying that we cannot play, uh, perform in playoffs. Uh, so I think we only had one chance, and uh, but uh, we're still a young team, like I said, and playoffs are something we'll get there. All right, man. Listen, at least from my side, I'm rooting for you. I hope you guys get it done. I think you play good CS. Despite all the hate coming from your side, you know, I'm, I'm just about spreading love. So good luck to you in this tournament, sure. Thank you, but the April Fools was a long time ago. Was it? Isn't it just like a month thing? I know, that's, that's other stuff. All right. Thanks, guys. That's Mouse. Hopefully they find two more players. If not, I'm, I'm ready to find you two players. It's time to settle the score from Copenhagen. G2 taking on Maus in a third map, and we go to Overpass to finish off this series. It's Maus on the CT side at start, looking confident on a map they have a five win streak on, but G2 have momentum in the pocket, pulling it back on Ancient. Forbidden map, the one that we never got to see in Copenhagen. Now takes to the stage here in Chengdu and Mao's they've got a score to settle. But G2 are very much awake now. Took them a while to arrive in this semi-final. And we're gonna start this one off fast with a quick B play in the pistol from G2. Leading the charge was Monacy, but Exertion bids him farewell. The dual Berettas on a tear, but as has been the case, Nico in pistols is not to be underestimated. Shui run down, and now Nico does have to do it alone. Oh. And Nico well! Four kills and one health in a 3v5 clutch up for Nico. That is what the people want here in China. And now Mal's have a monster to battle. That is one way to start. Nico and pistol rounds, man. It's it's so scary. And it's so consistent as well. He's always up for a multi-kill. And, and when, when you've got someone like that, who can you can just bank on in those pistol rounds, man. It gets you off to such a good start. That's what G2 are trying to do right now. There's this four spy from Maus. We didn't get to see that on the previous map. They played the full eco. So let's see if they've got any tricks up their sleeve.
nice and tight on this T side, trading out on A. They show an early monster control, and then G2 go back to that top site where only Torshi Scout sits. They'll clear Brolin before they get there, or at least they'll try. Hunter finds that kill, and that's opened up the runway for G2. Even the Flash is going to keep a bit of a stack here. Torshi gets that spot, though, and now start to scramble. Oh, good tag downrange off of the scout. Boy, Mao's moving in late and already blocked off by these smokes. They're either coming through them. They might be left saving here, trying to land something. They've got boosts. They've got gimmicks. But they decide it's not worth giving this one a go. Mao's may have a five-map win streak on overpass. A very legit win streak at that, but... We saw G2 play this game yesterday and against a team that maybe not in the most recent past has been the best overpass team in the world, VP. G2 managed a seven round T side in that game. They looked really, really solid. That's despite losing the pistol as well. And they closed it out regulation. So we know G2 can do this. There's no certainty for Mao's. And the questions are crumbling up in front of the light are once again brought to the front. Keeping that force by for one more. As G2 plant their feet on this T side. Heavy lean down towards B for G2. They leave one man over in middle. They are full grouped here. Nico lobbing out a bit of util, making it look like a default round from G2, but that's not the case. They want to exec on to B. They hear that Molly tagging. And Chewie's on borrowed time. Hunter will deal with him. Jimmy trying to make a play in. Reclaims one, but he is now the sole defender down on this B site. Nico's moved back away from middle, rejoin the rest of the pack. And G2 might look to long this one out a little longer. Disappearing through the monster smoke, it goes eerily quiet down here at B. And so in this silence, Mao's will maintain the double A stack. Jimmy's even moving away. A G2 plan on re-execing into this B site. They've lobbed through all the util now. Right as Jimmy's up and left, he's going to try get back in. But this doesn't come without risk. He could get caught crossing. Makes it down. MP9, all he has to make a difference. And it's just the one and done. Clean response from Nico. Clean has been the name of the game for Nico. Not just in the playoffs, but especially oh, in this series. We can ride off Nuke. If we look at the score lines of Ancient and even the start of this third map. Nico has been a nightmare. Oh, it's a bit ugly here and there, but they won't let him get out. Torshi forced to save the scout. G2 stick the landing up against the force by not once but twice over. So an early timeout used for Maus as they now look to embark on their first rifle round in this final map. And Maus need all the CT side rounds they can get, right? While well, we already talked about G2 having a solid T harp against VP. Like Maus, they've had a great streak, but that is on the you know, fast, the vast majority of it has been off of dominant CT halves, starting CT, just about closing it out T side. So there is that in the back of your mind. They can't afford to go quiet in this first half. Right, 
right now, G2 are running the board. But here is that AWP for Torshi, all the trimmings, everything they need. Honestly, with a good spawn for me, he looks to get involved with his AWP early. He wants the short fight right now. Oh, it's close. Exertion will live the night. He even gets aggressive again, oh! but immediately punished. Monacy with the turnaround. And so that's how he makes his presence felt. That's how he lets them know about the AWP. That's one way to get your first kill in the game. Very confident display. And his mechanics unrivaled. They were by Torshi on map one. This is a different story, a different Monacy. She takes his orb, trying to find that head to head of B, but Monacy is nowhere to be seen. Back up on that top site, Nexa on a late lurk. He's got no util. This will be Nexa trying to fake things out on his own. Or if G2 get the entries, he can deny hunts. We'll see how this goes inside of the toilet smoke. G2 getting closer towards A, but so are Mao's. A nice time to make this rotation. Three on top site and the orb. All the pieces in the right place, but can they hit their shots? Resmoking at toilets at the 30 second mark. That could be a big problem here. Next is about to confirm that this B site's looking pretty empty. Torshi up in the heavens. He's seen him. Oh, G2 are lobbing in an exec. They're coming back down. They were going to go rejoin next. So this one's gotten confused in the mid round. And so right now, Jimmy is the one in the firing line. Jimmy's the guy who's got to hold on. One kill on this bomb, one kill in the right place would have been enough. Bomb plot is just found for G2 with a second remaining. And that one second, that one kill on a Jimmy, that might make all the difference. Monacy and Hooksy left in it for G2. Hooksy struck down. Monacy's got to do it Whoa. alone. And four out of five, but he would have needed Whoa. the ace. It takes Torshi moving in and getting the trade to safeguard that round. Monacy is not playing around. This guy might have been slow to start in the series, but if it isn't obvious from how this map has opened, he means business. And still Miles find that round in a 4v5, despite every shot getting hit by Monacy could not have fired any more a desperate call for g2 who are relying on nexa who's out b he sees the heaven player he thinks that's all there is he provides a path to rotate and then jimmy pushes in for the kill g2 caught in the middle of no man's land they still get a plant they still make it competitive and now they look to capitalize break mouse's money while it's ripe for the taking tear it off that tree Exertion now on a limb here, and he needs to move before that door smoke fades because there's no door on the hinges. Exertion gets spotted, they can pop through the smoke both sides. Can he escape just about? Shuey provides the cover. Spam to Hooksy, that's one way to do it. This time it's Mao's a man up, but Nexa contact sneaking in, won't last long. Bit by bit, Mao's pick themselves up. Monacy had to be the guy to go back and get the bomb. That leaves him a long way away from playing into the top site. Instead, it's going to have to be Nico. Torshi on a jump check. And in that moment, Nico has crept out and is now peeking from the bathrooms. He knows where this all applies. But RG2 able to turn this info into a kill. Torshi reposition here, and that should do him well. Three players over towards the top side for Maus. G2 are walking into an even battle, and that's if they even want to attempt this. That wall firing off might make them doubt it. Now they know it's in the middle of the site. It's a very hard position to uproot Torshi, and so uh, G2 call it off. Could have gone a lot worse. Three on five, they at least have something to show for it. But Maus, who as we set up, were on the edge of getting put back to Eco. They save themselves and keep five alive. I mean, if G2 won that round, it would have been a dominant T side. 5-1 almost certainly to begin. 
So that's extremely important for Miles to just keep this game competitive in the early stages. Yeah, I mean, Maus have to be winning out this CT side, right? So the early recovery bodes well for them. And uh, a flawless round even lobbed in there helps give them a bit more staying power. G2 saved on three. So it's pistols for Hooksy and Nexa. Hunter creeping up the connector as Torshi will lie in wait. But in danger of the timing being missed. Out on an island, out in the open. Hunter has secured a route into the top site. And G2 are coming quickly here. They've got no reason to slow down. They're all in. They're all behind Hunter. They believe in him. I mean, you all, you never see AWPers that far extended in, in CS2. Maybe back in the old days, you would have the solo warp playing deep toilets and four down on B. But if you're solo warping on top site, you're usually just sat back in the bomb site playing a safe position like default where you can jump, you can take multiple peaks from different angles. Instead, Torshi's holding a very aggressive line and he can't see the connector through the side of his scope. So G2 just waltz out. He doesn't even get to attempt the flick, he's just dead. Great call for G2 to speed up, but that's fed to them on a plate. They lift the lid off, they feast. Four to two now. And that's a bit of a devastating round for Miles to lose. They don't really get to play. Yeah, that is a bit of a head scratcher to have. I mean, it all just came down to essentially not getting timing. Uh, that's such a, a scary spot to put yourself in, as you say, very exposed, hyper exposed. There's a world where you can hang around there for a bit, but just have to be more cognizant of the timings up through the connector. Real estate the mouse didn't yeah. have. You, you can't expect that G2 won't take space if you give it to them. Safe to say they're not that sort of team. Yeah, Hunter just walked the whole way as well, so there's not even sound cues for Torshi. Feels like they're gonna come out mid before connector. It's a good play for G2. The mouse have an answer. Look at this, Nexa walking the B play. Even though they flash this for info, he doesn't fire off. The Util will send him out of there. G2 aren't playing afraid right now. This time it's far more passive for Maus over on the top side. The only moves being made are down here towards B, and even then, they're, they're hardly aggressive. It's just a line taken over towards short. So the onus will be on G2 to be the ones kind of setting the play, making that happen in this round. And it looks like Nico is going to try exactly that right now. He bypasses these players in the bathrooms. Long is clear, but what can he really do with it? His team are going to root back. They've still going to get through this toilet setup. Two rifles, and they're not being too quiet about it. It's going to allow Shui to rotate up as well. Brolin in this very dangerous position. Can swing off contact, gets spotted. Still gets his kill, though. Smoke is down. Brolin needs to pick his side to try and break it. They look at the wrong way. Hooksy's running into walls, and Torshi's getting damage off. Good flash, but doubled up for Torshi while flying. G2 are getting removed from the round, and five alive for Maus to do it. Oh, discombobulated for G2. Could not get a grip on things. Running into smokes, running blind. That is ugly. But this whole series, we've just been trading rounds. It hasn't been super streaky. More so in those second halves. But mostly even splits in the first. I mean, you know when you're coming on an overpass, right? You're gonna face an uphill battle at some point in the game. Once you get onto those T sides, the game is gonna be long. It's gonna slow right down. That comes with the territory. Oh, Torshi, not, not again. again. Not again. Oh, not again. Yeah. Torshi, another aggro line, and this time it's the close walk up from Hooksy that gives G2 the way in. And whenever they've got these kills, they follow through with the pace. This time with Hooksy falling out of the round. Flash. 
time for this to go wrong. They try to set up Brolin with that flashbang. The nade could certainly find Monacy, but falls just shy of him. He gives the bomb over as well. It's a smart play. You don't want really a low player to plant, especially not on this map, where nades on bombs are very common. That one goes out a bit early, but ultimately it will change nothing. G2 get a plant off of a very unfortunate entry on Mao's. Torshi double scope there. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, it, it felt it felt like Mao's had learned their lesson when it happened to them the first time, right? They went back to a way more passive hold in the follow-up round, and, it, and it, it did well by them. They found success on the back of it. They found a flawless round, no less. But that time there, Torshi double scoped for a con fight, and so once more betrayed. By the stance taken of Mouse's Orpa. This is just going to wreck your confidence. You're, you're doubting your moves now on CT side overpass, which is, as we always say, an Orpa's paradise. Torchy's not going to know what's safe. He's not going to you know, be feeling the game like Monacy is, for example. So that's already a very a clear, identifiable issue for Mouse. The two orbs just missing their mark. The other thing that's scary is this is building to be a really strong T side for G2. Yeah, once again. And even though they've had some missteps in there, they've had some awkward moments, clutches that haven't come through. The round counter is in their favor, and the money is as well. And if they break Mao's here and now, suddenly they're, they're winning out the half on the T side, and that is a big problem for Mao's. So this is really Mouse's chance to kind of keep the game in check. Don't let G2 run away with a commanding lead on the harder side. Horshi once again dons that off, and he's taken a similar line to the first fight he had, but this time it's a little different. Brolin has come over to help out, and he's holding the connector. So Torshi can't get walked on anymore. Still goes back very early in the round, right? Nothing wrong with that. Just, again, considering these long options. And G2 are taking them right now. Moving four players up on the long side. Nexa traditionally on that B-Lurk. He's trying to keep eyes on this lower site. He's only got two there, though. He scopes and moves up towards A. Torshi might get that head to head he's been dreaming of, but who hits harder right now? Oh, he's seen, seen them. Spotted. He's seen them. They're up close. He's ready for this. Torshi needs a kill to bring him back oh, in, but that is awkward. What? That was the golden opportunity for Torshi's AWP. He's cooked. He's feeling the weight of his shortcomings here, is Torshi. He desperately needs something to bring him back into the fold. Brolin lends a helping hand to Mouse, covering fire from the connector, providing a path to the rotate. Yes. Torshi gets involved on that AWP. And Mouse, a convincing round put forward here. Some awkward moments in there, but they get back to their feet and they keep five alive as well. So that issue that they were running into, that idea that they were one round loss away from being broke, now gets brushed aside. Oh, okay. Careful though, you don't want to die after time and they are surrounding Monacy. He knows he's in trouble, but he will die after the clock expires. So that's no money, no orb, and plenty of problems for Monacy. Meanwhile, Torshi at least gets an orb kill after unscoping with them in his sights. It is feeling very uncomfortable right now. Thank goodness the rifles bail him out. And these rounds have been washes, Harry, for both teams, with the exception of that 1v1 down on B that Torshi does win in his defense. Every other round has been dominant for one team or another. This should be no exception. Now was trying to level the playing field and only pistols in their way. are very aware of where G2 can be at. Brolin has pushed all the way up towards the ramp in mid. 
And so he's uh, controlling the entire map just from being here. And that allows a heavy lean down towards lower. The only angle Torshi is to worry about on the top site is the connector. And G2 are never going to go there. They pop flash through the monster smoke. It is a good flashback. Oh, no. A great flash! Nico with pistols! Has carved the path back in for G2. Torshi needs that redemption arc, and he needs it now. The nades rain in from the heavens. Torshi, he's been a problem in some of these rounds. Now he could be the solution. With that double, he's drawn the attention away from Brolin. And Brolin's backstab comes through. Nexa left up all alone. Can he finish what Nico started? He can't! Torshi! They live and die by his AWP. And he recovers that round for the Maus squad. Oh, that was just a sigh of relief for Maus, really. Jimpat jumps the gun there. He hears the footsteps rushing monster, and so he turns into the flash. He's the anti-flash player. His teammate, blind as well, and triple entry comes through on monster side. That is literally worst case scenario for Maus. Great play by G2, but they can't convert the post spawn. Torshi gets a big triple, and Maus are back in the game. Five all now. They can stem the bleeding of what has been a confident, progressing T side from G2. Torshi's confidence is back. He's making moves now. He's trying to set the precedent. Oh. Sure, I gave you a couple of rounds. But now I want to take them away, and with that boost over towards Short, and aggression coming through from Exertion, man advantage is taken by force from the Mouse squad. Careful. Jimmy's getting walked on here. Hooksy is way deeper. Shuey's been sold there in that round. They had no clue Jimmy will recover, but not enough. What is not enough? A 3v3, G2 are so happy that they've Scrapped their way back to an even odds battle here. Ten up, wait for the kill, wait for Mouse to come to you. That's exactly what G2 are doing. They're letting Monacy hold Monster, and the re-aggression from Mouse might punish them. Nico. Oh! Next not aware. Nico is, though. He knows that both players are right here, and it's him and Monacy left up in the two on three. Timing is bad though. Exertion chases down Nico oh. and Monacy's got to do it alone. First kill connects. There's still a lot more left to do for Monacy. Agile on the AWP and quick with it. Now just Brolin. Clash of the Titans here. It's Brolin dead. Monacy rising to the occasion. Monster. Again and again on this B-bomb site. Monacy has been brutal. And this time he closes the clutch. Perfection. Two timeout. They want to capitalize on this. They do not want this to even up. It's either going to be a good half or a great half. And they want the latter after a clutch round like that coming through from Monacy. You want to send Maus into that second half feeling as low as possible. And you could do that right now. The buy for Maus is anything but pretty. Two rifles to work with, next to no utility. You're lacking the ability to take the pace out of G2 in this round. And one of these guns will fight early. Brolin up in middle, topping the charts for the Mouse squad, and he's got to keep that coming Ooh. through. They line up for him. And so Brolin makes that one M4 sing, but he won't live to tell the tale. Hooksy gives chase. And now Hooksy dons the AWP. Thank God no one's there. Full flash, but still, it's not a free round for Maus. It's all about the gamble, where G2 end up. Going back down towards lower, Maus have a lot of information. Torshi with that short angle. Jimmy taking Monster, but he might get early warning from these footsteps. With this position, he's going to hear them setting up. That can give Maus extra time. They can get into position. G2 need to clear their corners. 
Do you think they know? They're aware. Jimmy. Oh. One off the five, seven. Hooksy dead. Hunter and Nexa swung is. on. And so Mao's no money. But they run away with a 6-6. Six, six. They tie this one up, heading into that final half of play. Split game heading into the final half of play. G2 put up six on their T side, but were unable to keep Maus down in the dumps heading into this second half. Some key clutches from Monacy, pistol rounds are plenty from Nico. On the other side, heroes emerging in the form of Brolin and Exertion. It's all to play for here, spot in the grand final on the line. Both teams trading blows. No clear winner yet. We're about to find out who will be our first grand finalist here in Chengdu. Yeah, this is a stacked playoff bracket. And a side-by-side -side game at 6-6 in the third map. This rematch from the major quarterfinal in G2. It's not as easy this time around, but they are earning it. CT side overpass. They come in with the move. Sneeko, oh, that's uncomfortable. Gets gooshed earlier on with a double push on short side. They'll take one, cleaning out B entirely. Nico hanging around in a very dangerous position, just trying to take one with him. But Mao's sneak back into the lower site. And Nico just being here enforces that B stack. Mao's think, oh, G2 have overplayed it. They've got this info. They've cleared. Maybe they've even left B. Careful, Nico, don't go too soon. The turn is quick, and Shui nails that headshot. Now G2 have to adjust, and Maus can pick their poison. G2 gamble heavy over at upper, but a shadow spotted for Nexa. Smoke in the way. Teammates coming up through short for exertion, and Nexa tries to tuck in. Hunter gets here just in time. Even though Nico has fallen, there's another Kovac to step up in the pistol round here for G2. And this gets awkward. Maus, they don't get the space. They don't get the room that they were hoping for. This leaves it down to the wire. It's a 20-second play into Ooh. the B site. Hunter hasn't missed a beat in the pistol yet. And he's not about to start now. Four kills from him. And there's Hooks in to seal the deal. They can both use the pistols. What a glow up for Hunter in these playoffs as well. He did it again yesterday. He's doing it on the stage today. We call him the big game player. He has provided when G2 need him. And that is a perfect example. Four kills on the B-bomb site. That aggressive push to start it off. And it's not for naught. Maus have a full eco. G2 will have a comfortable position on this CT side. And Maus need to dig deep into that five win streak on this map, show what they're made of when it hits rifles. It's great to see Hunter getting hyped up as well. Even in the games that G2 have been winning, if there's been like one person who hasn't given super overt reactions, it's often Hunter. At least across Chengdu so far. But he's kind of riding that high right now. This has been a very good series from Hunter.
So we're just pistols here for Maus. That lead is about to get widened. G2 putting a bit of distance between them and this Maus squad. Maus don't mind that smoke. It lets them group up on Monster together. Waiting for the bomb. Playing G2 burn util, but there's another one. Now that one is annoying. Miles have to go gray screen out on this B hit or wait till the final few seconds. At that point, it might be clear to G2, but there's still three upper. Hooksy in tandem, dropping down below now. There's the spam, that will reveal everything they need to know. 15 seconds on the monster rush. Nexa makes the money and gets the ace. Done and dusted. I'm honestly, next I heard you wanted an AWP because you've been such a good boy. Here it is. I was never meant to win that round and they knew it. They have a very tall task ahead of them, right? Playing your final half of this semi-series on the T side of Overpass. Not an easy oh, feat, but what? that is one hell of a what? way for it to open. Back on Ancient, all the smoke spam was coming up in favor of G2. Satoshi gives them a taste of their own medicine here. You get gifted an early 5v4 on the back of chance. Dumb luck. You'll take it. Gotta make the most of it though. Still Monacy AWP, which enforces heavy B stack. G2 on those slouches are still trying to get that info, popping monster, figuring out where this stack lies. Monacy won't make the mistakes that Torshi did early in the half. He has a perfect angle underneath the smoke, getting aggressive. The time for this peak is awkward. They go together. Jimpat finds that kill, and Monacy won't even take a player with him. That's more like it for Mouse breaking into this A site in their first gun round, and there should be no way to stop this. Hoopsie can molly, Hoopsie can nade, but all it would be doing is delaying the inevitable. And the save call's already come through for G2. Bit of a Disappointing way for this one to start, right? Nico never even gets to play the damn round, and Monacy caught on a torshy timing down towards short. Mouse can feel good about that one. What they really need is a streak to ignite this T side. Torshi continues. Is going to go back and grab that gun. So for G2, they can still come through with rifles in this round. They get to keep it competitive. They've got one more chance to stop Maus embarking on quite the streak of rounds here. Just going to laugh it off. Smoke spam. I don't know. No more death slamming from Nico. Yeah. Nothing you can do about that. Ooh, they don't elect to buy around the saved guns. I like this, they're going to get a buy in the next round. They want an AWP on Monacy as well. Before sending this would be very expensive. You want to just maximize your gun rounds on CT side overpass. Boost setup is employed on B. Putting Nexter up with the rifle. It's not the cleanest, but they get it done. Other mouths are nowhere to be seen. They know there's no AWP in this round, so they're just going to take that toilet control, smoke molly. Hooksy's other rifle on long, left to the loneliness of this position. Mouths want nothing to do with it. And even his re-aggression will be punished until she holds on from playground. Closer and closer, Mouths encroach the site. See barrel spotted. Oh, dead. oh what? 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 Firing blanks. Oh. Torshi gets another chance. He won't mess that one up. 
And Zershan sitting inside the smoke. High risk, high reward, high punishment. But somehow Hunter can't turn in time. Zershan dead after one. The trade is coming. Jipat is there for it. There's only pistols now. Honestly, upgrades onto the Deagle. But this one should be too far gone. He's wrestling with that Deagle and he can't get a handle over it. Run through by Jimmy and as Nico moves up into a lost top site. Just the Deagle by his sides. Pistols have treated this guy very well across this event. Across his whole career, but expecting the 1v3 with the Deeg. Wishful thinking. Gun right there. Oh, Mouse know about it. They try and use it as bait. Cleanly done for one, but burns alive in the Molotov. Fight it off. For G2. They had a chance to win that one, but they weren't expecting to. They saved to bring out guns here and now. That's crazy. That, that shot looked dead on for Torshi. And what a quick desertion. Almost just gets sidelined by Hunter. That would have been a very tumultuous round for Maus. Instead, they build back. No AWP here. Honestly, didn't want to glass it. Still to long it out. Hooksy jumps into spams. Nothing lands. Going back for more would be a risk. Oh, Brolin. Cleanly done for the first kill, and now Mao's. They feel this round coming together nicely. You get the opener like that, some choices have to be made by G2, and they'll keep that stack down towards B, leaving Nico alone. Just jump spotting over at long. Maus start to regroup over here in middle. If they win this round, that is a real knockout blow dealt to G2. It's not the start that G2 wanted. These decisions, these gambles getting made as G2 pull everyone over towards the top side with the exception of Hunter. He's left alone down there at B. Util is lobbed into the B side from the Mouse squad, trying to conceal their true intention of hitting A. And that puts them right in the firing line of this stack, right in the firing line of all of G2. It's only Torshi left up against it now. And with 15 seconds, he just wants to keep this AWP in play keep his life intact g2 that decision to bring everyone back up has treated them well so in a highly important round with their money on the line with the lead in question they're able to secure it and that's while being on the back foot while being a man down Gonna need more than that if you want to break him, though. Now still riding the fumes of their first gun round. And Torshi's orb supported. Oh, Back to middle. Is Nico gonna take the risk again? He's, He's got flashed, flashed in from Monacy, going for it, going for the throw. The orb somehow jumps out just in time and then comes sailing back through the smoke. Torshi is confident and it is showing. Mouths have taken middle back in an instant. They never lost long. Zershan ran playground to get here. And with no AWP in the G2 camp, it's up to Nico to re-aggress and get it done on his own. Monacy's just jump spotting for him. If they spot Monacy, they'll never be ready for Nico, but now he's gone back to the site. Nico shadow advantage and Nico advantage, but the boost up might be a remedy to this problem. Zershan, oh, that's a quick. Just the one and done, but in comes Monacy. Oh, no! Caught a little too wide, a little too far. But the bomb long. lost over at long for Maus. They've got to go grab that. That's going to waste precious time here. They're not able to move into the site as a result. And with Hunter locking them out of B, Maus have got to commit. They've got to go into Hooksy's bomb site. Torshi scoped up. We've seen him miss a few of these timings on the scope. He's clearing all these deep angles, running out of spaces for Hooksy to be. 
So they should be aware. Bank is a real possibility. Hooksy holding the line oh. dead immediately. As Jimmy moves in. This one falls just to Hunter. I mean, this part is perfect for Mouse as well. They have CT control. They have the line here locked out by Jim Pat. So Hunter with a bomb not for him. He's walking long. I don't see a world or a way he can win this round. Mouse are poised and ready. Orp on the line. And Hunter with so much ground. The only way is if Mouse overcook it and rotate. That bomb is a threat, but. Torshi is still here, and Hunter is going for the sneaky play. He's been spotted. He will save, and Mouse get up to nine on this T side. What a double entry from Jimpat, despite Nico's heroics at long. One was not enough, and Jimpat crawling up short side, punishes a play from Monacy, and goes on to clear the bank. Beautiful work. It's not those flashy 4Ks, but it's high impact. Late in the game. And just what Mouse needed to match G2 score. And this has been very brawly. There's been a lot of rounds traded back and forth. And that's to Mouse's benefit right now. Once more, money problems for G2. And this late in the game, that is a big problem. Falling down in that round. Could have costed G2 everything. They put money in. They fall by here. This is where G2 try and make their stand. If they don't find success, there is but one rifle round between G2. And falling shy of the grand finals here in Chengdu. This will be a devastating blow. I mean, whoever loses is going to be absolutely shattered. A long, hard-fought battle. Oh, look at this play. Is this a triple boost for Monster? They hear a guy there, but it's Brolin. They've got to worry about getting closer and closer. On the short side, he sees a tower, and it comes crumbling down. Dropping Hunter, damaging Monacy, and more importantly, getting the info on this B stack. So they're going to aggress A, look elsewhere, try and find Nico, who is the sole bastion of hope on this top site. Even Monacy moving in shouldn't be enough on such low health. A shot from death. If they find Nico, this round may be over before it begins. And wanna, considering he's committed, he needs a multi kill. Don't want to spam this because you're trying to be quiet. And so the only way they learn about Nico is the hard way. Yeah. Chewie has to clear this, has to check this, oh. and he will! Nico's shot in the back, the flash gives it away! G2 still have bodies up at the top site, Monacy behind the dice box. Has to be a dice roll of a round, needs something to go his way, and it won't! Mao's breakthrough, this G2 force by crumbles around them. Slow crawls on the A site is just so effective. And if you look at G2 in the CT side, all you remember is they've not had this AWP. Monacy had one round with it, one round, all half. And ever since he's lost it, they've not established economy. They've been trading rounds. And Mao's just keep going for these slow crawls on top site. That's why G2 are just relying on someone to get a multi kill. And unlucky timing for Nico on the, on the flash push. Previously, he had one on long. Monacy got one. But if Mao's are trading on top site, they're winning these post plants. Just fantastic entry work on A on this T side. And with no Monacy highlight reel, like how he broke VP yesterday. That 3K in toilets on CT. This is what it looks like. The slow roll of Mao's crushing G2 under their weight. Because of how they bought here, to expand on that point even more, there's not going to be an AWP for Monacy. It's never going to make another appearance. Not unless G2 win that rifle round that's coming up next. So there's a world where Monacy only got to play with that AWP once in this entire second half. 
And it's finally felt like the tournament where it's not just been the Monashi sh show and G2 don't just need to, need to rely on one guy. But if there were any position you'd want him in, it would be this one. This round to wash, even with the stack. No hope, no faith. Surely not. But Nexa responds. Suddenly G2 up in arms. Armed and dangerous. And a man up. Jimmy's going back in awards B. They know that all three players are here, but they're playing to contain. They're playing to keep G2 trapped. It's going to come down to a clutch. Who will it be? At this point, the last thing Nexa expects is for exertion to follow through and go B, surely. Every bone in your body tells you he goes up towards the A site. Great position from Nexa, though. He's going to play safe. He'll get the info. The lack of kit's a problem. He can't let Zershan get out of the site after the plant. Will Zersha go for the plant? Does he want more? Bloodlust, perhaps. He needs to clear positions. Nexus not biting. Zersha getting closer and closer. Will this just be it? Will he go for the stink? Nexa, perfect position. Molly will do nothing. The round in the palm of his hands. This is everything for oh! G2, but he can't take it! Cheeky! Exertion! Just comes swinging! Barreling off the bomb plant, and he nails the headshot. Nexa did everything right. The X Factor back in exertion, and Maus are so close. Look at that shot. You take that, you take that every day, and you mention it, Harry. No AWP again for G2. That is a serious tool removed from the arsenal. The best AWPer in the world has not got to touch it in the final half of play here on Overpass. So it's in these moments you look to the rifle stars of G2. You look at Nico, you look at Hunter. This has to be their round. This has to be their moment. That's not a bad way for it to start. Nico with the first. Hooksy doesn't want to throw away that man advantage. Something that so often eluded the G2 squad. So they tuck tail and run. They play the 5v4. I was just going to execute here. They are so grouped right now on this B side. They're holding T-spawn for a flank. Luckily enough, G2 have swapped bodies, moved the third man in. Nuku's going back up. Torshi looks for this entry kill, but not a line given up. Not an angle conceded, a jiggle. Knowing the orb is here is huge info. G2 are now ready for a hit. Very strong down in the B site. Nico and Monacy re aggroing over on A as well. And we'll leave them far removed from the action here if Maus stick to their guns and finish on B. It will be a long time before any support is available down on this B site, and Maus are not budging. They believe in the B call. This round is essentially for the game. Maus, can they stick the landing? Can they overcome? Their playoff woes. Hunter opens up with one. Hooksy there to help alongside him. Torshi missed oh, shot dear. on the AWP. He's it. had a couple of chances to find this incision. No Shui does bring them back into the fold with that kill. Hooksy waiting, run out and run through, but Monacy gets there just in time. He picks it up as well, not just the round, but the orb. As G2 now need three in a row to close his series to head to the grand final. Maus, the pressure mounting. That was their easiest chance. It's only going to get harder from here on out. Huge hold for G2. Timeouts have been burned. 
Honestly, he's been waiting a very long time for this AWP. Just saw him and Nico having a discussion there. That's going to be about how they want to use this up, how they want to play with him in the top site on it. And Monacy has a good spawn, and he plays this side of the map alone. Monacy has been waiting all half for his chance to don the AWP. And this is more of a standard approach, right? 4B, Monacy, he starts toilets early for a pick. He doesn't get it. He's back on bomb site already. And because Maus don't know this, they have to waste a lot of time clearing out the map. Maus are looking towards long right now. That seems crazy, knowing this AWP is in play. Does that change the game? Because up until now, Maus have not had to consider it. Slow and steady, but they're starting to realize just how open the map is, that tells you one thing, that he sits on the site. Smoke up close, they're trying to make life awkward for this orb. Nade on it, but Monacy is not rewarded. Not yet. This has to be the crowning moment for the AWP. Nico and Hooksy are here to lend a helping hand. Since they're round. All eyes on Monacy as that smoke fades on the long side. He's missed the timing. He's missed the timing. Arm scene. Exertion's got him in a bag. And Nico oh. is overran. The orb never fires a bullet as Maus pull up. Couldn't do it at the major, but on a cold night in Chengdu, they are one round away. And they're even looking to rub salt in the wound, insult to injury. Hunter, they want to remove everything from the G2 Cup, but they will. I have never seen a game where the orbs on both halves have just been so close, eluded by the scope, eluded by the corner, centimeters from success. Torshi in the same boat, Monacy avoided here and now, and Zershan puts on his entry hat for a double kill into the stack, G2 crumble. They don't have a penny to rub together. And this is it, the best shot Maus will ever get at breaking the playoff loss streak to phase to G2. With a grand final within touching distance here in Chengdu. Oh, mid air for Jim Pat. And the first kill on their way to those grand finals. They said this time would be different. They asked us to trust the process. Touting lessons learned. And they might pass that final exam now. One man up in the top side, it's Monacy with a deagle. And this has been the bread and butter. Mal slow crawling A. All four, all five rather, walking side by side, trading these entry kills and winning on this top side. They've done it in every round against all odds. And they're gonna do it to go to those grand finals. Finally about to get their flowers. There are two players standing in their way. Hoopsy left in the sight alone. And Maus, they've gotten over those nerves. They embrace the big stage. They're looking to do good on a month's long promise. Get revenge for Copenhagen and show the growth of this roster. Maus, uncharted waters now as they move on to the grand finals. And they do it by taking down the stage team, the home favorite in Chengdu. G2 sent packing as Maus on the forbidden map, on the map that was never to come through in Copenhagen.
Overpass is theirs, and so is this series. And G2, what a devastating way to lose that game, to lose it on the stage after such a dominant ancient. It looked like the stars were aligned. Big Game Hunter came to play in the playoffs. Nico was a rock, and you rarely see Monacy let us down. But that third map, there's got to be questions asked. That one must hurt for Maus. It was just another game. Come on, everybody! Make some noise for the Maus! And Josie, wow, it's an amazing match. How do you feel right here? I feel amazing uh, playing on this stage in front of this crowd. You know, I feel amazing to win uh, our first stage game, I think, with Maus. So, yeah, with this lineup, so I'm really happy. I'm really happy. All right, the Taka no face on Goshi. Last time, you come to China and the CC, you in the grand final. And this time, I am Chengdu, you in grand final too. You want to take this trophy? Yes, I hope we will win tomorrow. I hope we will play FaZe, because it was FaZe versus Maus last time as well, so... Yeah! <laughs> All right! Let's see! And this time, it's your time. Sign on the camera! Here. Take your time! Lai! Seems as though there is something in the water here in China for Maus. Finally bidding farewell to those playoffs demons that have always been haunting them. And they make it to the grand finals here in Chengdu. And what a statement way to do it, Machu. We always say G2, a big stage team, so hard to put down. But we get that third map that evaded us in Copenhagen. And boy, oh boy, do Maus deserve to be going through. And an extremely legitimate way for Maus to win this third map for you. I think this is where the story has to start. Not a given, not a gift, not G2 just Ooh. rolling away or forfeiting. Absolutely not. This was a hard fought battle for Maus. They got stressed. They got tested to the very end. There was a pistol round that could have gone very awry for them. And then this stack, this A side stack that they completely bulldozed towards the very end. This is where I knew history was about to be made for this Maus lineup. Yeah, well, I mean, there's still one step further to go. I guess, obviously, we have to talk about that final when we get there. But this is at least the stepping stone that gets them into that. And I 100% echo what you're saying. A very hard-fought victory for Maus. And that's the perfect way to go through the semis. Yeah, let's wrap up this talk about Overpass by going into some of the pivot rounds, right? we got round 20, which was so instrumental for Maus to be closing out. Yeah, it is where things could have gone horribly wrong if you are Maus. Round 20, you're in a good situation you have G2 where you need him to be lower money you sort of dip your toes on the B side and then suddenly the stack comes in there's good trades coming in from G2 that's quick three kills and we could have seen Mao's disappear we could have seen them drown but here they remain calm G2 maybe making them a favor here forcing that jewel onto Yimi finding two kills and then towards the very end here listen if you are Nexa you will have nightmare about this 1v1 because you positionally beat Zertion you were in a completely unexpected position you miss the cross replacement Zertion finds him and I promise you G2 wins this round they win this map. That's he, the way I look at it. He hits the headshot as well. That's the sad part. Like, he has a famous. He hits the headshot. He doesn't get the kill. It's like, oh, there's only so much he can really do. But yeah, just a little bit too late on the transition with the crosshair. And he had him booked. He had him booked. That position was so great. Important. I thought he'd won it. I really thought he'd won it. But alas. Bear in mind, this is T side overpass, right? This is one of the hardest sides in CS2. The fact that Maus do it again, right? We've got round 22 as well, which was so crucial for Maus to be closing out. What a statement round this is for Maus. It is the, again, most legitimate way you can possibly win this map. A little bit of a timing here on Monacy. That's a mistake from him. Naive on the uh, fate of the smoke. And then here, the, again, an absolute wave coming. Exertion finds the kill. He immediately takes the space onto Nico. Third sack, completely negated. But again, it, it also shows us an ugly truth behind it, which is G2 were put in a position where moves weren't made. This was one of the most passive, 
waiting G2 I have seen in quite a while. Yes. There could have been a flash pop for information being put together. There could have been a plus one stack coming in. No, they were all waiting for their angle. They were uncomfortable. You could feel it. And Miles just take advantage. And bear in mind, that was the first round on the CT side where we saw Manasi having the orb. And it's gone. Within an instant of a second, he sees his little elbow jiggling out. And that's it. That's basically the only time we got to see Manasi bringing out the orb. Yeah, I mean, it's scary, isn't it, right? Because he's always going to be that win condition for G2. And if he doesn't get the tools that he needs or the assistance that he needs to actually close those games out, then maybe there just isn't enough there for G2. And you have to credit Monacy, like he tried his best. There was a couple of damn good rounds from him, but end of the day, it just doesn't come together for G2 on the stage again. We had Hooksy talking with us uh, here when we were in the arena, and he talked about the overpass game versus VP. He said, I was frustrated. We didn't take enough space. We didn't take enough risks. I think he would say exactly the same right now. You think about the start of the CT side for Nico, that's uh, immediately being found through the smoke by Torchy. That's the first yeah. buy round. Then there is the situation you mentioned, the Monesi Jiggle Peak, where he gets caught off guard by two people. And I feel like they made the wrong conclusion. I think they became way too passive after that happened. They felt like they weren't in a position to be aggressive. They gave a lot of space to Maus. And I don't want to be here only making criticism about G2. No. Let's talk about Shuhi and the, the Counter-Strike he's called here. What an absolutely Perfect way to call the T side of overpass A+. plus. Yeah, and Exertion as well was a name you were putting under the spotlight, particularly Elfish. Um, he's really been showing up in buckets and spades, and I wanted to see that after what was basically silent at Copenhagen. I mean, he is such a key player for this roster, right? That's his role is to kind of get in there, do the dirty work, make a bit of chaos, make a bit of space. And if he's not having a good game, it becomes a lot harder for Mouse to operate. So when he's being able to find those advantages or those openings or those holes, more, he doesn't even need to necessarily get himself kills here and there. As long as he's getting in there and causing a bit of a ruckus, being in the minds of his opponents, then that's giving so much more room to Mouse to work on the rest of the map. Definitely a phenomenal from Zershan. I think it's poetic. As you mentioned, he was such a missing factor in Copenhagen. Um, I think measured is the word I want to use with him in the moves that he made. You always need a little bit of luck when you are a playmaker like Zershan. You 100%. need it. It's part of the Counter-Strike. The round 22 that we've shown, that tells the story. Edge of the smoke, waiting out. If Monesi has a wider angle, suddenly he dies, but he doesn't. He gets that. But from this moment on, it's also very easy to miss and fumble the bag. He doesn't. He takes his time. He slow picks the shoulder, assures that he gets the kill. And once he does, he knows he's in a good position. He pushes the advantage immediately. This is what Zershan did this entire series. He exploited good positions to be in. All praises for it that. It was kind of the antithesis of what you were framing coming into it and what we saw in Copenhagen, particularly uh, on Inferno versus G2, which wasn't measured. It it was, you know, a bit chaotic, a bit topsy-turvy, a bit skew with. And here it was, he, he, he knew the limits, right? He knew exactly how much he was able to push, but not too much further. Yes, and listen, when it comes to pressure, it's always fight or flight, right? Some people just shy away from it. Some people just dive into it. I think he, he dove into it too much in Copenhagen. I think he tried. It was like a flee forward. He was trying to be proactive about it. Here, I think he just accepted. Like, there's going to be moments on the knife's edge, and I'm going to do what I think is right. And I paid off. Well, surely he's going to be one of our candidates for our DHL MVP. You guys know the drill by now. Get those Twitch channel points, put them to use, and vote for one of three options from today's first semi-final. We've got some uh, nice choices coming up for you, particularly from a series which went the full nine yards. I'm so happy that we got to see the three maps as well after Copenhagen, but your first choice coming up at I Am Chengdu is Torzi, and uh, he was also a man we were putting under the microscope, particularly because he was going up against Manasi, and we said, you know, basically nine out of ten times, Manasi will come out on top. Nope, today it was Torzi. Yeah, this could have been a one out of ten, you're right, and listen, he started this series the absolute best way, phenomenal, all new, um, helped by Jimmy, of course, who put them on the right track, but whenever he was given the AWP, he made good work of it. On overpass, a couple of good moments as well. He put down Nico once, he put down Monesi once, um, but he was helped by this guy as well. Jimmy Salo, what, what a performance. A young Jimmy, consistently showing up, and it's been so good to see him continue that form we saw in the group stage into the playoffs, because as we said time and time again, that's not always a guarantee for Miles. Today, that changed. Yeah, I mean, didn't quite improve upon it, continuing on from Nuke. I mean, I thought Nuke in, in particular was fantastic for Jimmy, but overall, the entire <laughs> it's hard to top a 1.3 overall. He goes down to 1.22 for the series, but even then, that's fantastic. Um, and he got them off to such a fantastic start. Third option, of course, it has to be your boy, Exertion. Tempered boy. aggression, and uh, I think he's going to be getting my vote. I love what he was delivering today. Yeah, we see that KD isn't exactly stellar, but I think it's more of impact that we have to talk about with Exertion. He had a lot of impact. For his position, once again, the amount of kills, the KDR he was having this series is something to be very proud of. 
And I think it's very romantic and poetic to see both Jimmy and Zershan being in that conversation now because they were two players who we were very disappointed with uh, when it comes to Copenhagen and specifically Yempad. Personally, I think it would be such a travesty for Counter-Strike if he ended up being someone that chokes on stage. I think it, him being so reliable is something extraordinary and I want to cherish that. I don't want to let go. I will fight this narrative for as long as I can. I will hold on to it. Is it poetic thinking that maybe, maybe we get Mouse versus Fates? I'm, I'm not. I'm not predicting anything. Oh, I'm there you go. I did it. My prediction, but I mean, could be Astralis, could be Fates, but that's one of I them in the see. grand final. I want to see. I want to see the Mouse versus Fates game because obviously that's a rematch of CAC, the match that we got to see in China last year. How many? How many events do you actually have in China? Not that many. So to see a rematch of that one on stage in a circumstance where it really does feel like maybe now that story line is starting to build again for Maus. Uh, I guess you, you can throw away the playoffs choke conversation. Obviously, that may still come into factor in the final. Tomorrow, yeah, until right? the but end, until sure, the end. Sure, but, but, but again, you know, if we want to just disregard that for a moment, phase. You know, they're still looking a little bit shaky. They're still looking a bit tired. They've That's a, a lot of silver, haven't they, in their time? And, and, and it's a conversation we'll have going into the next semi-final, but they're not, I don't think, at 100% still at this event. So I think the Good door point. is maybe open for Maus to get revenge for CAC. Shall we get into it? Shall we get into our second semi-final? We semi -final? have to. Right? I see the crew is ready over here. I see uh, yeah. Stanley's over there. He's dancing at me right now. we got Trace, we got Yanko, and <laughs> we have got an absolute banger of a semi-final coming your way. FaZe versus New Look Astralis. Device, 100% win rate and looking to continue it in his new role as in-game leader. It's coming to you after this break. How is FaZe Clan doing, Rain? Uh, we're doing good. It's been, a, it's been a good warm up in the tournament, so we're feeling pretty good. Got to relax a little bit, maybe chill? Yeah, as much as we could. Finished pretty late yesterday, so tried to get some food and then just a rest and yeah, get ready. I mean, if you have a good breakfast, maybe some nice coffee, a bit of, I don't know, meditation, you get in the mood, right? Yeah, I'm not the uh, one to meditate that much, but uh, maybe David over here has some meditation, you know, you never know. Oh, this dude talks about getting into the zone all the time. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he likes to be in the zone and he has his own way of doing it, so, yeah. I'll not delay you any longer because you got to go through the whole check, so good luck with the setup. And while the teams are setting up, let's check out with Machine what he was up to with White Market. Fresh threads, Machine. Yo, thank you, bro. Thank you. I'm loving the fit today. What are you wearing? Uh, um, I've seen these videos, yeah. Um, well, I've got the uh, Hot Rod M4A1S, about 1K. Uh, on this side, yeah, yeah. Fire Serpent, uh, I think this is the stat track. Uh, really nice, love the AK. Um, what else we got? Oh, yeah, uh, these are nice. Got the Karambo fades on. Uh, partnered that with a nice little vice gloves on the, uh, on the feet. Sunnies, I think they're the Desert Eagle Blaze Edition. Real nice, yeah. classic, you know. Where do you get all this from? Uh, white Market, uh, White Dog Market. I'm glad you asked. Though. Oh, yeah. No, thanks, man. Easy, I really boy. appreciate the time. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Catch Have you later. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris three flick, oh, they're making one by one sets, no way! He wants to... Oh. <laughs> Coming into that Spirit game, there's no denying the expectation was for Spirit to, to take the win, I think, from the majority, just based off of Kato, based off of their rise to power, and they, they looked like they were hitting their stride. How long did you guys have to prepare for that game? Like, realistically? 
I think realistic when you look at it, we prepared already after Katowice. Yes. Uh, obviously, the Verdo Co came in um, knowing that if you want to win the major, I want to go deeper in the major. Spirit is going to be a huge threat for us if it's group stage, if it's playoff, right? So, so yeah, after the Katowice final, I think in my mind, already there, um, kind of looking at the options how to beat them, right? Mm. And um, obviously, Mirage again, uh, we knew it would come in. So, that's also a preparation we would have done by then because obviously, I think coming into the major, we looked at we still ranked number one, but we didn't feel like number one uh, in that sense that yeah. we haven't won a trophy uh, with Frozen yet. So you just look at the teams under us and kind of like pick your brains on how we can prepare better for, for the major. Yeah, and when it came to that game, when it came to that quarterfinal, uh, it, from the outside looking in, it seemed like, you know, it was a story as old as time of experience prevailing. Like it felt like you'd come up with a good a good game plan i'd like to explore your definitions of a game plan you know how how deep of a uh, of it was because it looked like you you were just in their heads dude these early orps b so that chopper's initial calls b would it, 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 like he couldn't do what he wanted to do to set the pace you had such early control of the money you know you can't plan for that can you you know you're not planning like oh well when we win this and then they have no money and we'll be able to you know <laughs> how, how how deep does it get and this team, it's so nice about this team that everybody, you know, can come up with some different stuff. Uh, obviously, Finn is doing most of the, you know, mm. the heavy work, uh, preparing uh, like the, you know, the core of it. But then you have each player, player having a little bit of, you know, extras. And you could see uh, before the game against Spirit that, you know, uh, even, I mean, not even, but <laughs> some of these guys were, you know, doing some extra stuff. Yeah. And, and that was really nice to feel, you know, that everybody like, wants to get together. that back, you know, and, uh, you know, get the revenge on them. If I heard that you If I heard that you If I heard that you And in our next semifinal, I present to you a rematch from the group of B. That's right, Astralis going on against FaZe right here. And with everything on the line going into tomorrow's Championship Sunday, you can see the Astralis guys under the new leadership of Device. And well, it has been quite the showing so far. Coming in here and doing what you think. You just survived. You probably expect that there's going to be a lot of eyes on you. How's the whole team feeling? Pretty good. We have to wait for the third map, so I'm uh, gonna see the arena, try to get accustomed to everything. Yeah, excited. Excited. Did you already get to see the arena or not yet? Uh, I think we went there yesterday, but we did a signing session and stuff, so not really. But yeah, from the stream, it looks really big and really nice. The crowd is amazing, so uh, really excited for them. Indeed, it's really big, like, and the fans are they're just scouting you as much as possible. Yes. So you're excited to play on the big stage once again? Yes, it's been a while. Oh. I mean, sometime, but yeah, I'm excited. I think the young guys as well will thrive there. I think we talked a lot about what we want to do. It's just about the details in the game and try to enjoy it. All right then, good luck. Yeah, Device came in here looking for a little bit of revenge for not going all the way into Copenhagen. But hey, guess what? Now you found yourself in a semifinal. You worked real hard to get here. You got Faze sitting on the other side. And standing next to me, rather, will be Yanko and then Elfish Guy down on the end. I want to welcome you back to the Intel Extreme Masters. Great day for some Counter-Strike. Yeah, absolutely. Chase had uh, Maus finally get over the hump in the first semi-final, book a spot in the final. I felt bad for Jimmy. Didn't have time to get on the desk. But we saw him outside, Trace, and he just said, Hell, I forgot how it feels to win in an arena. Feels good, man. So. Yeah. 
Very, yeah. He was very serious when he too, very stern, if you would. I mean, great game, obviously, from him. Great game from Maus. It was fantastic to see. Like you say, good day for some Counter-Strike. And I think we've got a fantastic matchup coming up here as well. We do. And we've gotten some fantastic Counter-Strike, can I say that, uh, fairly about Astralis out of the, out to this point so far. Yeah, the device era, right, uh, as an IGL has started for Astralis. And I think you can say it's looking pretty good uh, to kick things off, right? Uh, haven't lost a game yet, very dominant in this tournament. I think if you ask them, they would have probably preferred to have just kept playing every day uh, so. because it was nothing but uh, impressive early on. Yeah, I mean, look, they seem like the best team at the tournament at the moment, or at least the most consistent team at the tournament. I think it's kind of hard to be throwing out words like best at this point in time, but they have the strongest 4v5 percentage, they have the strongest 5v4 percentage, they have the highest pistol round percentage as well, so uh, I don't know, you can't really say a bad word about Astralis at the moment, and on top of that, they're playing against FaZe, who they beat in the group stage. Now, I don't necessarily want to go ahead and say that that is going to be the result that we'll see on stage today, really but good. it is at least something that they can take some confidence from. But surely FaZe have been awakened, right? Is that is that a fair assessment of FaZe in the stage game? Yeah, listen, we've talked about their fatigue and, you know, coming from the major and whatnot. Now you're in the playoffs. You played the quarterfinal, took down Liquid in a three-map series. You know, and it's a different feeling when you're on top of that stage. And also, they didn't just get beaten. They got spanked around. Handled. Yes, but by Astralis. So you're definitely looking to show that that was a one-off. That was, you know, the one game we gave phase off because of all the major stuff and and uh, the schedule for them. And I feel like it's going to be different this time around. You know, I think it's underestimated. You look at that game and how it went. I think Nuke is the glaring one because phase has been picking it a lot of times. It's a really good map for them at the moment. And in a bunch of those rounds, it was clutches going the way of Astralis, right? FaZe not really playing so well, giving up rounds with advantages, right? This was a big one early on that uh, Kerrigan loses out to Stare. Then it's also the Yabi 1v3, right? These are all opportunities for FaZe to take control of the half, right? To get some momentum, to get more rounds on their T side. But they just couldn't get anything done. You could see it on Kerrigan's face. A lot of frustration for FaZe in this game. And even in the second half, 5v3 right in the second round, able to completely reset Astralis. Maybe you can get rolling on the CT side and yeah, another round that they let slip through their fingers. They had a ton more opening kills than Astralis, but couldn't close out rounds. And I feel like that's not the phase you're used to seeing. They're, they're way better in these situations and I think they'll show it today. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I think everyone kind of deserves a, at least a game like that throughout the tournament. You can't necessarily harp too much on about it. It's really what happens later on that matters. This is what I was talking about even in relation to that first matchup doesn't necessarily matter how the group stage plays out for a lot of these teams. It's just as long as you make it to that stage and that's where you do your best work, which we we know that's been a, a, a very tired storyline actually at this point for FaZe. But again, it's going to be a different story today. Inversely, if you are Astralis, you netted yourself in that semi-final appearance. If you're a device, you netted yourself up here on the stage, but then you had some time to work with in between. So uh, just continuing with the conversation around device as an IGL versus where he was prior to this. When we talk about what he used to provide to his teams would be an AWP. Yeah, absolutely. And as you can see, right, like he was also struggling in recent times, right, in the role. But that's also when the team is not playing well and you're not feeling comfortable as a player. You're, it's going to be difficult to have good performances. And you can see some of the statistics, right, when it comes to opening attempts, they're going a little bit uh, down. Flash assists are going up because you can see he has to focus a little bit more on supporting his teammates and the overarching picture of the round. And that, that's the thing about, you know, the teammate support here. I kind of want to also discuss a little bit how this frees up the other players in the server. Yeah, I mean, across the board, that's kind of been the, the, the I guess, objective of Astralis with this roster, right? Is bringing Stown and Yabby to the forefront. They talked about that with the roster change of bringing Bro in. And obviously, things seem to be going pretty well with Devices and IGL as well. And I think just highlighting it there, I mean, you can see that not only is he being able to be a bit more of a supportive element in this team. It's not necessarily taking away from his individual impact with that AWP. He's still a top two rated player at this event so far. Just feels like all around, this is a renaissance era okay, for yeah. Astralis, right. right? Like the Dark Ages were with Blame F, those were the Dark Ages. Now it's the renaissance for Device as a player, for Ston and Yabi as players, for Astralis as a whole, you know, and it, you can tell that everyone is really fired up to just begin this new stage of the team, right? The, every, the, the energy is there, the vibes are at an all time high, people are playing better, you know, Ston and Yabi, mostly Ston got all his roles back, right? So 
they're just in that honeymoon phase at the moment. Yeah, and you know, you really had to get in the trenches if you're this team. You really had to get in there and dig deep and kind of soul search almost to make this a new viable project, which is exactly what Devices had on his plate, as well as this young gentleman named Stown. So Stown, the team has like the same player but like a new IGL and it seems like when it comes to you personally your stats also improved is there like a way how device is maybe like enabling you mm, yeah I think you you can say that but I think like the most important thing is like that I've gotten like all my old ro roles back that I had in heroic because when I first joined Astralis I almost didn't have any of my roles in heroic basically and yeah uh, now I'm just really happy to have my old roles back and the same with Yabi as well so it suits us a lot better and what kind of leader is he? Is does he like micromanage the team or how is it? I think he doesn't like micromanage. Like we talk a lot of like philosophy and like how we want to approach the game and I think he needs a lot of talk from like me and all the other players on the team. So, like all use all eyes and ears on the server, you know, to help give him information and what we should do and stuff like that. So he's not like micromanaging. So he kinda gives you maybe even freedom, like to like if you feel like you have a play, he'll let you do it. Yeah, for sure. Like, you can play a lot on the in intuition, you know? All right, then. Good luck. Thank you very much. And, you know, something to, to keep in mind right here, you, we talked a little bit about, we heard a little bit out from the phase side, you know, if you need an idea, these are the players that you're also looking to to have those. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Counter-Strike, there's so much going on in a round. You can't be expecting from freeze time to always get the correct reads. You have to play default, get information, right? Your players need to be able to react. And you can see Renaissance yeah. for Stone as well, right? I mean, in every single category, it's been lights out. And sure, it's only been five maps, the sample size with device at this tournament. But you can see a glaring improvement. Jordan, this looks like a reinvigoration. Certainly does. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Obviously, again, yeah, small sample size, but end of the day, you have to take what you can get. And I think Stown is certainly doing that. He's really taking heads. He's taking names. He's doing pretty much exactly what he wants to do. He's finding his feet in this new era of Astralis. And you couldn't really ask for much more from him. We're looking at players like Stown. We're looking at players like Yabi. I mean, you know, if you go down the list, really, it feels like for everyone on Astralis, not just for Stown, this has been something that has been a fantastic little turn of events for them. They've got three of the top five players in the event so far on their team, which is like, wow, okay, I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? So we'll see if that changes today. But uh, if things continue in the same fashion, then, yeah, I mean, they're going to be a tough team to beat. Uh, bro. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to go down that, that path. What we can talk about is the phase side of things. And yesterday, how they got a little sweaty up there on the server, as evident from a Kerrigan tweet and a lot of things to take into. That was a long series for these guys. Yeah, it was. And it was a grind, right? Yep. With, with Liquid going back and forth. Uh, you can say that... Uh, you can say, see that Kerrigan is saying that he's mentally drained, right? And how he was able to... Risk because he had a stinker in that series up until the decider, right? I think it was... Anubis. 12 kills or 14 yeah. kills over 50 something rounds on the first two maps right and he had a good major individually unfortunately until the final map but uh yeah it's hard right like you have to be thinking all the time all these different opponents different maps right and these two teams i think it's important to to state are in two completely different phases right uh of growth phase is a team that is here to win trophies, right? They made final after final after final, no trophies with Frozen yet, while Astralis is at the beginning of this device era. And, you know, it's not a big deal if they end up losing. They're here to gain experience, right? To figure out how things are going to look with device moving forward. Kind of like turning an hourglass almost, in, in a way. It's a, it's, a, yeah. it's a weird thing to kind of uh, equate right there, but it does make a lot of sense. And speaking of which, uh, this next man, he doesn't only make sense, he makes the dollars as well, his Kerrigan. Kerrigan, when it comes to Twitter, you've been quite vocal like about like the burnout, like after the major and the whole thing. How exactly are you managing this whole thing? I, I think it's just about trying to focus on what I can control, right? I uh, can't really control who we're playing, what I need to prepare and stuff like that. So I think just for me, uh, I've tried to forget about the last game, right? Uh, and just focus on a new game. Um, but obviously, uh, prepping is hard uh, for Astralis, right? They haven't played much, uh, many different maps. so. Um, a little more relaxed today, and the most important thing for me uh, was to kind of feel a little more fresh today than yesterday. And is there a specific way, maybe how like you're helping your team or your team is helping you, like to like, kind of stay fresh? I, I think the team tried to lift me up yesterday. I think that's something we talked in the past. Um, I'm very energetic per person, right? 
everybody can have an off day. We're all humans, right? So yesterday was really tough mentally in game calling. I think calling I did all right. That was the thing I could control, uh, but I couldn't control my emotions. So I could really feel the team really cared about me yesterday and tried to lift me up. And, and I managed to reset good for third map for the team and, and became a live third map. Uh, so yeah. Um, besides that, I, I, I'm just happy I have good teammates that can uh, catch up the slack that I left behind yesterday. And while Frozen was still on mouse, I remember him talking to GDC and explaining him how important it is to be in the zone. How is he succeeding right now? Like, is he like successful at getting a zone? Like, if despite like you know the tiredness? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has their structure, right? Especially David, he's very, very strict with his structure. That's something he has learned from us that works from him, right? Um, you can't always get promised to be in the zone. Zone is something you have to find in a game. Either you start in it or either you become part of it, right? And uh, you just have to do what you have in your toolbox to either get in from the beginning of the game or in the mid-round uh, or mid-game to, to find your way into to the rounds on the game, right? So uh, I think everybody has their own way to, to feel good before game. But but the part about human brain is sometimes uh, your thoughts cannot um, not be accepted by yourself or just trying to figure out. But I mentioned to myself and told myself before I boarded the flight to China, I know I'm not 100%. I have to accept that I'm going to have a bad game, going to call bad. Um, but obviously, uh, you want to do everything you can when you're so close to win, right? So um, I just hope uh, we have a I have a better day today so I can uh, help improve my teammates. Awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. A leader of men, care again. Uh, of course, he, he speaks so many of the truths of yesterday. He speaks some of that, that trial that was on the stage here within China. Uh, but overall for FaZe, you look at this and you still have that hope. However, the maps will dictate some of that, right? Perhaps orders? Yeah, I think it can be very interesting, right? What's FaZe, FaZe's approach going to be coming into this one uh, compared to the last time they met? Also for Astralis, I mean, they played a lot of different maps, really, with this roster already. Four, Ancient, Vertigo, Overpass, Nuke, all of that was in there. We saw, I think the veto will be interesting, the veto part of the map veto, so to speak, oh. because you saw yesterday FaZe didn't even shy away from vetoing Ancient. Right, like in, in that series against Team Liquid, and that's Astralis's best map. So, do they do, they do the same thing again? They have Astralis Anubing, uh, Anubing, vetoing Anubis for them. <laughs> I like that um, one too, though. And then you kind of make Astralis go for Vertigo or Overpass, right? If they want to do so. We see FaZe actually themselves get rid of Vertigo. They don't want to play that map against Astralis. So, we'll see what the picks are this but time around. They do like a nuke, and we do know that about FaZe. So, that should be pretty evident as probably, I'd guess, the first pick. You'd have to imagine. So, I mean, look, there is so far hasn't actually been a change from that last series. And I wouldn't be super surprised to see pretty much the exact same veto. And that's exactly what we're getting here. Nuke, Ancient, and then if we do find ourselves on Mirage as that decider, it would show that both teams feel like, you know, they were pretty happy with that map pool. I don't know that there's necessarily too much need to change things up for FaZe after that loss. Mirage for Inferno is a little bit of a change there for Astralis, but hey, they got it done in two last time, so maybe that won't come into play. But I don't I don't necessarily mind the fact that we're going back to Nuke and Ancient. I think both teams have a good argument to be made that, you know, Astralis obviously won 2-0 last time, so they don't want to change things up too much. FaZe feel like it's a different day, different situation. They should be happy as well. Exactly, because if you're FaZe, if you're coming here and you're looking at this map veto, you're thinking, yeah, this looks pretty eerily similar to what the group stage was. I think FaZe knows Th that wasn't us yep, in correct. that game in the group stage, right? We didn't lose Nuke because our Nuke is bad or their Nuke is really good. We lost it because we weren't present on the server, right? And I think it's also easy to see the things that went wrong for FaZe in that game. They were a little bit caught by all the mid-round aggressive moves by the Astralis' players when Astralis was on the CT side, right? Where it's Ton or Yabi trying to push through a smoke to get some lobby control, door control, right? So I think they understand it's looking a little bit like heroic in those CT sides, in those reactions. So I would expect from FaZe to get some map control and then sort of to bait a reaction from Astralis and try to punish them. I think that would be a, a good game plan for this one. It's all you. Oh, okay. I was, I was waiting for you right there. Okay, so if I take into consideration from yesterday, we also still saw glimpses of, of genius there from FaZe, right? Kind of got a chance to ask Rain about the idea of adaptations on the fly when it was crunch time on Anubis, albeit may, maybe not came together for them. But these are the sort of caliber players we're dealing with on both sides of the table. I mean, this is where they do their best work, though, isn't it? Like, this is where they mm -hmm. can throw that chaotic round. Brokey can do something a little bit interesting. There can be someone that just decides. Nice way of putting it. Throw something interesting. in the mix. And a lot of the time, it actually sticks for FaZe. That's 
that's the beauty of it, right? Sometimes you'll see other teams try and do something a little bit unorthodox, a little bit strange, make a, a call to stack a side or something like that, and it just doesn't work out. But when we're talking about Carrigan's calls late in games, he makes it work. When we're talking about individuals making plays, they make it work, and that's why FaZe is a better team than anyone else on the stage. But Yanko, you know, at the very basis of Counter-Strike, what's that first round? How important is that first damn round? I think it's a more important in MR12. I think it even comes down to, you know, if you lose it as T, but you plant the bomb, you're still kind of happy with it, yeah. with the high success rate, which is what happened last time uh, to FaZe. But, you know, Astralis was one step ahead. Uh, they already had an op on device, and, and they took care of that that round. And you can see they've been really dominant. They, their players individually are among the highest rated when it comes to pistol rounds. And, yeah, it absolutely helps to get off to a good start. Why? Because it gives you a deeper... Uh, playbook trace, right? You have more yep. plays that you can go for when you first of all had the weapons and utility, but also when you have money in the bank and you know that even if it doesn't work out, you can still buy, right? It's not the end of the world, and that is very that's very liberating. Yeah, there, it's uh, yeah, it gives a, a lot more room uh, to run with if you win that pistol round, right? So especially if you convert that second one, so you can wipe some of the sweat away after the second one. Exactly, it's not just winning that pistol round; it's the hundred percent conversion mm -hmm. rate on round two, which is I think the big talking point there for Australis, because it's one thing to just win the pistol, but we know how potent the second round buy can be, particularly from the T side. So. Yeah, uh, fantastic stuff from Astralis, and they can only hope that that will continue going forward on the stage. Because right now, Device is, uh, what, 100% IGL? Like, yep. hasn't lost a map. Unstopped. All these narratives <laughs> are going to come crashing yeah. down, Trace. Astralis okay. is in for a rude awakening, oh. right? They played, who, Steel Helmet in their opening game. Then they played FaZe, who was half asleep. They were still in zombie mode <laughs> yeah, coming from the major. True. Then they played VP, who's about to remove two of their players. So all these stats, all of this is just boosted by the fact they weren't playing real teams, Trace. Mm -hmm. Now they're facing the big boss. If you want to win a tournament in Counter-Strike 2, you have to beat FaZe Clan, and they'll see why FaZe is in every single final. That has been the storyline thus far. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We are just about ready to get into this game. But first, you know we're going to go to a break so that when we come back, we can get this best of three started. This semi-final started here at the Intel Extreme. Dream Master, Shang Du, 2024.
think that we put in a lot of work so that we could have this good start. Yeah, it's been almost perfect and uh, I'm really happy with it. Face buff is there for a reason. I think people just get more calm on the stage. We're gonna be hungry for the, for the win, definitely. So I'm just looking forward to play them again and uh, hopefully get the revenge. I mean, for me, FaZe has ever since then just kind of been a stable team and always being a top team. Really good individual players, they play X and X is really good, clutch situations really good. I think that they are one of the most composed teams on the stage. Very much respect them. It's always nice to play here in China, it's a lot of fans, a lot of uh, fan interaction when you're not playing as well, so it would be cool to, to lift the trophy again, but for now we're just thinking about the semi-final and trying to prepare. And there you have it, two figures in their own way that have definitely cemented their way in history. One of them the best side GL in the world, and the other one maybe the best side GL in the world. We've got 100% win rate for device. Does it continue today? Let's find out. Yeah, a lot of eyeballs to look at here, and a lot of things to consider, Yanko. Rain takes to the stage, too. Absolutely, you know, Rain, one of the rocks of FaZe Clan, longest standing member of FaZe Clan on the other side, Stair, doing some great work for Astralis. Absolutely, definitely someone that we look onward here to, bro. Ain't that right, Jordan? Yeah, lots of question marks. How's he gonna go? First time on the stage for Astralis in this roster. It's gonna be a big day. Yes, indeed. Frozen now, the man of the hour for FaZe. And of course, you look at him and you say, what can he bring to the table? Definitely fulfilling his potential in phase, one of the best players in the world at the moment. Yeah, and Brokey with impact all around. Of course, he's not alone. You look at Yabi, you look at Stown, you look at the other side of the equation here, and well, it's going to be a big one to swallow. Yeah, let's go. Here we go. Yeah, that's right. You look at FaZe, you take into consideration your Reigns, your Kerrigans, the look for the bounce back from yesterday, albeit now they survived all the way into a semifinal, right where you want FaZe or expect them to be, rather. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, another opportunity, another chance at a trophy for FaZe Clan. But I have to go through a very in form Astralis, a honeymoon Astralis, a new Astralis, a new age for them. And they all seem to be enjoying themselves at the moment. But let's see what happens when the game kicks off. I'll tell you what, I think at least one of those IGLs on the stage has got the crowd game a little bit better than the other. I mean, Device still got a little bit of work to do in that department, so I dare say a lot of the cheers will be going the direction of FaZe. Didn't seem like that really helped out G2, though, in our previous semi-finals, so I think there's still some hope here for Astralis, and I kind of want to believe in the romantic storyline. Yeah, you know, I see what you're saying there. And also, I'm going to take into yesterday, watching Kadian and, and, and Kerrigan try to bounce this crowd back and forth at each other during a tech timeout. That's beautiful. That's good stuff. But obviously, what you want out of your leaders on the stage. Yes, it is, Trace, but it comes down to what happens on the server, right? The crowd cannot bail you out if you're not on point, if you're not playing good discipline CS. And for FaZe, it's all about finding the energy to keep going. Yeah, and for FaZe, they look to right some of the wrongs from yesterday. I look at you, Jordan. FaZe or Astralis? FaZe, I think. Hopefully, they've had a good night's sleep last night, but uh, can't go past FaZe on stage. FaZe up, baby. All the way, isn't that right? Okay, you know what? You got me. I'd say that, yeah, FaZe, they got it going on. Seemingly the final boss of CS2 thus far, and that man on your screen, he's going to have some things to say about it. Welcome back, everybody. We're jumping right into the game. Yeah, the game will be starting momentarily. Players have taken to their positions, and it's an interesting one today. Very interesting indeed. I love the way Yanko put it. I love the way he framed it in that if you want to lift the trophy in CS2, you have to beat FaZe. I think that's perfect. It's poignant, and it's been the case in 100% of the Counter-Strike 2 tournaments. If FaZe are in attendance, you have to beat them if you want to lift the trophy. And Astralis put an end to the streak. Eight grand finals, that would be the number FaZe are searching. Victories, well, that's a discussion for another day, but the head-to-head -head from the group stage, Astralis had their number, five to one in clutches, Flawless in pistols and conversions, dominant in opening kills. Will today be any different? Carrigan seems to think so. He's well rested, he says. Had an off day yesterday. Turned it around map three. It's going to be very interesting to see if Device's new look Astralis can continue with their dominance. Skipping all the way to the semi finals. This is our first look at this Astralis on stage. Key point are they going to be victims of their own success? An extra day off, more time to sit and, well, practice. But against who? You're here in China, your options are a little bit more limited. Prep, well, Carrigan referenced it. It's hard to prep for a new team, a new roster. They have very limited tape to go off, just five maps in total. We're underway with a pistol round. Danes, starting on the CT side, the defensive phase is pick. Slow and steady is Carrigan. This tournament, he has loved to don himself with the P250, the point man space towards yard they've slipped through but this angle from device could be good info at least oh okay testing stair here towards the fan jumping into him is rain and first blood of this semi-final drawn more built upon a stown he hits another now device has had his bell rung and frozen's managed to descend for a plant but he doesn't even get the code punch it's stair to rotate through and we've got five alive to start off astralis proceedings here on phase clan's pick we're gonna have to get our number men out there to double check as drops goes walking they can just get on that never mind the bomb didn't go down Stair has had a multi-kill in every CT side pistol round he's played against FaZe in this tournament so far. Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. That's definitely fair enough. I'm thinking about the Ancient one. Yeah, that's right. Crazy. And then he did the same thing on Nuke as well. Gosh. I'm pretty sure it was over towards Ramp. How crazy is it that he gets down rain, but he's also quick enough to attend to the frozen plant. Like, this is where he was as he gets his first, and then he manages to get all the way down the vents. Down was secret. There you can see him relocating. No bomb plant, no kills. That's an idyllic start for Astralis. And this is the thing I said from the uh, group stage games in the 2-0, the absolute battering, 11 rounds over two maps as all phase could get. Astralis were able to get the pistols and conversions in yeah. every single half. And I don't think that changes now. One thing I hadn't considered until it was brought up today is the return of Stown to familiar roles. I mean, that just makes so much sense to see this kind of renaissance, this return. I think just overall, if you look at the bigger picture, you have an orping in-game leader again, and I know that he's new to the role, but your riflers have to take a lot more responsibility. They have to use their own initiative. They have to make these decisions on their own, whereas some of these other teams where you have an in-game leader, he's the point man, he's taking space. 
few more of your riflers have to do that because your AWP isn't going to be the first guy in. That makes a lot so of sense. For Yabby and Stown, they're quite used to having to play around an AWPing in-game leader. And the same for Bro. He was in Monty with Waro 2K. He gets to play these more supportive elements. Well, I hadn't even considered that. He's played under an AWPing IGL already as well. And then Stair comes in, and I think... And favorite. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was looking at the picture of the dude. On I was left. looking at the snake. Uh, yeah. I think that's probably in reference to Stown and Yabby. Well, I'm happy to see them back onto their old form. I mean, these two were such promising stars in heroic and oof, stomaching. Here comes another one. It could be nasty damage avoided nicely by the majority, and it's Rops catching Yabby and getting away just half hell from the spam of Stown. Very good start, Rops. Master of his craft in lobby. I do think there's an element of interest about how FaZe's nuke has been relatively studied by Astralis. With this extra day off, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of tape. Whether that even matters, Rain on his usual walkabout ahead of the smoke for info. So he burrows deep. It's device that's going to be responsible for this side of the map. Bro's the one going to be tested in this round. Oh, they're re-aggressing lobby. Look it at is going to be Bro on ramp. Okay, bro. Off angle. Ooh, not for Robs. Not for Robs at all. No problem for him. A double kill. Info from Device. He seems to like this angle. It's getting him info. And now they're ready. Perfectly ready. He walks into the angle. Carrigan not expecting that. Tough round to get back into if you are Astralis. Bomb goes down lower. Rain still at foot. Has this warehouse control. And it might just have to be the save. Yeah, huge patience from Rain there. Doesn't get caught out by any of this. It might actually lead to another frag here. Stairs just trying to leave, but there's a, a universe here where Rain he catches a glimpse, catches a whiff on his clears. Already in spawn device, and this is what I'm saying. I think Stair might be going down here. Oh, little trigger happy. Anticipates down. Well, Rain, now what? Goes down to Stown. Might be an AK-47, but the round is FaZe Clans. Well, that's what Stown started in the beginning of the round with that HE. So they're going to do the deep Molly out, and they know if FaZe are out there, they will be playing behind that. So you saw that combo, Molly HE, for a decent amount of damage, but it was the opening kill of Rops to lighten up the round. And then the follow-up on Bro, who only had the MP9 towards ramp. So well isolated, and we discussed this yesterday, I believe, during the cast, but we were in the lift with Bro the other day. No, I was in the lift with Bro the other day, and I was having a discussion with him, and he was like, yes, I just, I just get to spectate at the moment, watching Stown and Device light them up. I, I, I've just been a spectator so far. I think he's going to be tested more so today. Definitely going to need to contribute. It seems very unlikely that both maps are just going to be over in the same fashion as we saw during the group stage. Device bringing aggression into the mix early. They use those same HEs to could tail the start and now device has a line of sight rain oh gets the info gets across he's covered by stown that's team play right there stown bails out his orpa and look at the damage carrigan brought down to eight from a barrage of utility feels like it has to be rubs again to bail them out yeah everyone's on notice right now device is rotated over ramp is bolstered for this response well the aggression could lead to disaster He's already over towards ramp. Reaggress on reaggress. Device escorted by Bro. A great headshot provided. And now they take lobby. Oh, they look so tight right now. This is it. If Yabby and Stown could bring that cohesive, proactive maneuvers that they were doing over in Heroic, and then the rest of the team falls into line behind them, they're essentially leading a lot of the charge in the decisions that are being made. They play very key roles. Like, Device was just in yard, and within 20 seconds was then participating in a push towards lobby. This Coordinated, so, risk, like, risk averse. It also shows you how good the communication must be. Right. Right, because the comms have to be at an all-time high to keep those type of moves going. So, Chad, is this... Is this Astralis, which I've already said, oh, is it going to be the best team in oh, the world? Of course. Right. We're the best team game leader in the world. Well, yeah, precisely. Is this going to kind of... Maybe this marks the fall of international counter-strike this game right here well launders myself we've all <laughs> been praying on their demise for some time yeah uh, it, it's great to have astralis returning to form and I, I think if they're able to take down phase after yesterday's match where they had to weather a, an absolute storm against liquid it was tough uh, you hear from carrigan drained right they're out of energy you still have the post major hangover we can't forget about that then you have the mental gunk and residue from all of the grand finals that they made it to but not gotten across the line sure they had early success when we look uh, to sydney right cac 
but a bit of that has started to taper off and, and then the frustrations are going to start mounting it's like well how do we get across the line what is the missing piece and uh, yeah actually i would counter my own uh, question there by just saying that it is a very important asterisk that FaZe have just been in a you know a two week intense major run. Astralis has been in the lab. Uh, there is going to be a discrepancy there. Two boot camps Astralis had in the same amount of time that FaZe were focused on the major. Right. FaZe had one day of practice between the major and getting on the plane to come to China. So yeah, there is certainly discrepancy there and Carrigan's made no secret that the team are feeling a little worn out. Flash, device, avoids it and nails the pressure. He's got a lot of pressure on him. Bro's coming to try and bail out the Orper. He's delaying as long as he can. Confirmed multiple bodies, taking pot shots. Molly forces him down. It's Carrigan to convert, but Bro, he was supposed to be the backup. Instead, he's cut down 4v3 now as Stown is in hot pursuit of Rain on the secret stairs. Rain has to clear everything. Stown can be a little bit lazier about his push once top secret is cleared, just making sure that Rain hasn't parked the bus. And Rain seems aware that this is a possibility, but if Stown oh. comes down, gets him in the back, it will alleviate pressure. Yeah, and they're waiting for him. This full ramp pressure, they're waiting for Rain to claw his way in, looking for the dip of the head, but it's Stown. I don't know about Yabby. Yeah, he's leveled it out. They're likely going to overlook his position. It's a free frag. The team play coming in once again. Stown and Hagyabi. This partnership cut down. It's a broken round. Triple. Oh. And covered oh. by Robs on the orb. That's what FaZe Clan bring into the mix. And it's Brokey, the difference maker. Yeah, device just isolated towards that back box. I love the way two players jump down to be on the ramp itself. They don't have to worry about Bro rotating in from hell. He has to overextend. This is exactly what I was discussing. And then Brokey deals with Bro overextending. And more from Brokey. Huge from the Latvian. An impact player. And that one feels good. The finances were on the line for FaZe. Bro's are feeling himself. They're definitely trying to bring their energy today. Device can get out the orb once more. Only Bro emissions of the firepower. There's a diffuse kit. Util slightly lighter on and they're already rifling through it. Having to respect the stand wall smokes. You've seen a real return to this in CS2. And the vulnerability of HEs. Oh, oh. Okay, Brokey, playtime cancel. Device catches the boost. He's not stopping for anyone. He's got the newfound energy. Leadership and orping. And it's once again resulted in a disadvantage for FaZe Clan. I think Device might even have to be the one to rotate down towards B. Oh, they want to have an assault on Lobby once more, so they are going to allow the Box lower side to be taken. And they're aware of that. The Lobby Lurk needs to be found. Oh, they're crunching from every angle. Go on, then. Deathmatch drops. Pressure from one angle, then there's another. Now there's an orb. <laughs> it's cruel. It's brutal, but they have sacrificed the low side for this, Chad. Oh, and Rain is close to this. If Device is not ready and doesn't hold his horses, could have gone down to rain quite easily. Consider those horses held. He's well, chilling now, holding the angle. There is that kit on Yabby we highlighted. Two players have rotated down the vent. Bro and Yabby need to take first contact before Device can chime in. They're going to try and try and take out Frozen. The door's open, so support available from rain. And he gets nothing. No reaction. Light work. Astralis up to four. Just like that. Good shooting from Bro. Get him activated, important round, so back and forth we go. I mean, Device giving us a bit of a clinic as well there. Triple kill on the AWP. Staying mobile. Every time. But that's the thing, when that smoke wall comes up, what's the options for the AWP to look at? Right, the options have been removed. There's only a few places that they're able to pick him, and that's unless they break the smokes. So Device continuing that strong form. Astralis put themselves to a two-round advantage, and it forces FaZe into their first tactical timeout. The bomb went down. The loss bonus doesn't really put them in a position where they can go justify a full buy, but Brokey's gone for an AK for now. And you can see the excitement on Stown's face. You heard the interview. If you haven't, check it out. HLTV did a great one with Stown and just talked a little bit about it. But the, the psychology of it, the human element of it, of leaving a team that was consistently making playoffs, making deep runs in tournaments, competing at the highest level, to then being this kind of, you know, shadow of your former self. You're, you're not even, you're struggling in group stages, you're struggling to qualify for the major. You felt like you'd made a huge decision and the wrong decision. Th to be here now, to be dominating the way you are after putting in hard work with your new team, I can understand why that's got this new life in Astralis. Never mind hard work paying off on top. Oh, they all had faces like a smashed crab when they were playing in the old roster with Blame F. Yeah, that's true. This one's not got too much to say about it. Eyes on Brokey. Oh, AK, for sure. And he's already had impact in a gun round so far. I wouldn't count them out of this one. 
I've been noticing FaZe have been doing a lot of these double lobby lurks. We can return to that later. Carrigan's actually been a second element that alleviates a bit of pressure for Rops. He gets to activate a little bit later within these rounds. I don't expect it to be a talking point in this one, but Rain's already top of main, so he can clamp in if it gets a little bit chaotic. But they're going to try and test Bro again. And this new addition, some more difficult roles. Ramp He's used to ship positions, mate. This is, a, this is a lot of responsibility. This is a lot of responsibility. You can't go down. You have to maintain the control. It's a real dance you have to strike, balance. And oh, Carrigan, he's very lucky to have gotten away with that and slips into the vents. I think feel like Stown seems aware. Yeah, he is. He's not far off on the wall bang either. So 16 bullets, a flash doesn't catch him, and the multi-kill, comfortable. The rifle, however, yet to be discovered. Brokey holds his nerve. Now he takes his fight, puts Stown down. A second, oh. it's lovely from Brokey! Oh, look at him go! In combination with Rops, they've just put it onto Yabby. This would be one hell of a round to convert. Brokey's back is turned over the dink. Rops has put, rung the bell. It's the dinner bell, and he feasts. Takes him down. That's a face clan round with just a rifle. He's got a smile on his face. He knows what he has done. That X factor of Brokey. Six kills. Two of the rounds have been 3Ks with the AK-47. Great work. They're in such a disadvantage, hitting some absolute crackers device destroyed. What a beast. And Rops, I mean, it doesn't work if he's not doing that with a P2. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that Rops has bailed them out there, yeah, that's going to get the juices flowing for FaZe Clan. This is it. Where we saw the head-to-head -head from the group stage, five to one as far as 1VX situations oh. went. And device, well, he's been watching a rain demo or two. Learned the lineup, spams him down, takes a page out of the book. And in this force buy for Astralis, they have the number advantage. That's what they need with this lower weaponry to be able to contend with FaZe. Yeah, page out of the book. It's a cooking book, because he is definitely cooking. Well, this will be the time for Frozen to get activated. Only zero kills to his name, not even one. Okay, now, bro, I know he's been doing great, but the 5-7 on ramp, the smoke will, will hold them at bay for 20, and he's got help as well. It boosts him up. I, I don't mind that. They can just leave him. Well, they're actually going to boost the rifle. So this is less expected, but it means device is not going to contribute into the round unless they finish towards ramp. I suppose is an indication of what they're expecting. The main smoke puts a lot of pressure but on look top where side. Both of the rifles are. One's towards secret, one's towards ramp. Yeah, so SMG better do some serious work. Yabi, he tried to pip a gap. Rops has been brought to 37. But the bomb's going down. Topside's been lost. Yabi's not clearing his corners. And oh. it's just as easy as that. Brokey again. Tight little double. Doesn't need the AWP. Don't worry about it. Perfect time for him to be finding this type of level. For real. Just two more to sweep under the rug. And he has been spotted. Should go down. And that is a rifle available for Bro. FaZe don't want to give away much more either. They need to start accruing some money on this T-side economy. We will tie things up 4-4. Every year the device competes. He's found his way into the, the top 20. And from 2015 to 2020, for five years straight, he was in the top five players. There's a reason. There's a lot of excitement about his return, especially now taking on the mantle of leadership. Well, that is probably why there was less excitement because we know what happens when star players take in leadership roles. You wave goodbye to the heyday of being a player in the top 20. A lot of people Allegedly. questioned... Yeah, well, look, a lot of people questioned, is he the type of player to be picking up those roles? He's had issues with stress in the past. We've seen him take several years off of playing. And yep. the in-game leader role comes with all of that. So yeah. there are question marks around that. His first tournament, the debut for the team has been fantastic. This is the true test, though, a stage match. He takes a two-year hiatus, Chad, comes back 2023, still takes uh, 11th in the world in terms of individual. That's credit to him. Of course, four major trophies, 26 notable trophies. And he's decided he's at the twilight of his star fragging career and wants to go over to in-game leading. It's uh, definitely something which got the Twitter sphere alight. But what doesn't these days? But he's four rounds on T-side already. They're, they're showing that they're going to compete tonight. There's two saved rifles. What can the difference be this time round? Outmaneuvered in the previous, even with the opener. Bro, immediately from ramp down secret. Going to poke up his head. 
My eyes are on, yeah, Frozen. He's had a great time here in Chengdu. Rain as well, eyes on him. Had a bit of a quiet day in the office alongside Carrigan. The AK spotted immediately. Does that change anything for FaZe? Doesn't look like it. They'll continue the crawl towards Yard, but it changes things for Bro. Hello. Hard, hard shots to track for Frozen, but spots out down. No armor on them. Just device and that Bro AK-47. So that's two players that they've noted towards Yard so far, but so much time has surpassed. No clear indication of where FaZe want to finish. Carrigan starting to peak towards ramp. So if they note the AK again, if Bro fires a shot, I, I think they will just start to make their play into oh. A. Yeah, that should see them moving in towards the A site. Device is up here in the rafters. I don't know what to make of Stairs' Zeus position. I think he's just going to launch himself down. It'll work. Just like that. Carrigan down to the Zeus. This can't be a fumble, can it? You've still got Device's rifle up here, but cleared. That's rain impact. Rob spills upon it. It's down with only the USP. Valiant attempt onto Brokey for one, but it will be in phase fifth. For one, Frozen's first kill to clutch out a 1v1. Nice. And right there, you look at the little details. Device doesn't even get to activate the M4 because Stair actually survives. So they're clearing top hut, and they see Device first in the rafters coming out squeaky door. So. You're going to feel pretty hard done by if you device there. You, you almost want Stair to start sacrificing his life so they're not looking top hut. Oh. Everyone's getting red. I want some of this luck. <laughs> no For me, complaints. it's a bloody blue Sunday. All right, we're back underway. Device has been able to bring out the AWP. Phaser in the lead. This is a fantastic first half. Device back on the AWP indeed. Well, it's only got four rounds last time they met. So the fact that FaZe are already up to five. Charles really need to work back into things. Missed Molly. So many early smokes. There's more of them. Every ramp again. Yeah, they're coming towards you. Bro and down though. They're in the right place for a crossfire. And well handled, Bro draws attention. Rob's, however, not distracted. He'll still isolate Stout. Bro, oh, caught out. In the meantime, Carrigan's Out gone. Here. Yeah, but he is tucked in. They're not going to clear him. They're not going to clear him. Rob's rare to see him overlook a clear. And Brokey with the bomb, if he goes down, oh, in the foe, but a bullet from Brokey. Yabby, he still stands his ground. How has Yabby gotten away with Vent that one? Vent to top, Vent to top. He knows, knife out, charging, loudly, spamming, Yabby. It's rotation from device, he's early, going towards heaven's side. He should be able to get the bomb down uncontested. He can win this. But where do you go from here? Into lobby, planted nicely. I don't see a kit either, so this 10 second defuse, they're going to have struggle to find Brokey now, he's in the wind. And with the door open, he can slip and slide into a new angle at his own discretion. Good hold for this. They tickle the bomb. Device providing Overwatch. Oh, spots him out. Oh, good shot from Device. He rings his bell. The 10 second defuse broke. He's trying to call the bluff, but there comes the round. Call it five. Astralis take it. It was a real opportunity for Brokey. You can understand why he thinks twice about the dink. After the dink, rather. Good cover from Device. Makes it a tied game. The response time from Yabby, the fact that he was already down towards B, a bit towards the window side, this kill right here, the difference maker. You mentioned Rob's not going for the clear. Well, they'd already taken down Stown and Bro towards ramp. That's the traditional ramp holder and one of the rotators from Yard. So thinking they dealt with the lion's share of the threat. Yeah. Now let's break the streak of phase. They had three on the trot. Important round, both teams. 1900 loss bonus going into the next. Neither team with any finances. This could decide who walks away from the half with seven. Stay with a contingency plan for any pops top. Just holding a sliver with an incendiary, and now a Molotov finds its way towards secret stairs. A two smoke wall. The device completely negated with the AWP, and it's a difficult position to try and rotate away from. You know they can be slipped into main, slips into warehouse, or they could just go down secret. It's all possible. They're crab walking towards secret now, with the bomb no less. Flash into warehouse has device on high alert. 
Bigger issues if they decide to take the B site. Brokey with a whole lot of utility. He just dropped that molly across to Rain. He's going to use it for the stairwell. So that is going to lighten up their ability. They might go decon, have the standard smoke, path into the site. Nobody's rotated down to B from, uh, from Astralis just yet. But Rops is still alive. They know that. Smoke's going to limit Bro's options and contributions. Good angle. Oh, he holds it. Nice awareness from Bro. He's found the opening kill. The bomb will be going down. It's up to Yabby here. Shadow betrays Karakun, but a lost jewel. Yabby's let that one slip. A few stalemates across the map at the moment. Squeaky it's very disconnected. Yard. Very disconnected. Stair cannot get across to the vents. That's Rops' responsibility. Can't find the bomb. Roki's going to have to open this door eventually, even Stan will punish him for it. Now a 2v3. Frozen has found a vice elsewhere. It's Carrigan with a big round here. Carrigan, multi-kill madness. He's only got four kills, but you said just how important that round was and a triple kill when they needed it. For me, it's all down to the lurks of Frozen and Rops. They held device and I believe Yabby in the stalemate position for a very long time. Unable to just get those clean rotations that they were hoping for to respond to assist the lower site. So very good job from FaZe. Final round, first half. And yep, frustrations for Yabby. Thought he could have had that one. MP9s are plenty. Famous in the mix. FaZe set for seven. Yeah, hyper aggression. Team and it's, kill. Oh, it's a team kill. A recovery, perhaps. This pace change has resulted in a very early 2 on 3. It's Carrigan again, saying a lot of his name in these last two rounds. Oh, it's down. You're not, you're not ready for this, are you? No rain. Profits. And what was potentially winnable now seems to be squandered into a phase seventh. You know exactly where he was. Yeah, and he's, well, revealed where he is. Lovely from rain to finish. Phase clan, this is their map for a reason. Teaching Astralis a lesson. Join us after the break for the second half of our first map in this semi final. Second half of play and FaZe Clan have laid down the law. A seven round haul on the T side of Nuke. Now this is their map pick for a reason. And Astralis coming into this one without dropping a single map. Isn't that right, Chad? 26 rounds in total over five maps of play is all they've lost. Damn. They have been absolutely flawless against FaZe and Virtus Pro. I won't even mention the steel helmet. That was a uh, exhibition <laughs> match. <Yeah. laughs> We certainly treat it like one. Ant brush. That's a, that's a call. I'm interested to see how this works out. Oh, lovely little hop there, Stair, into the ramp room, and the entirety of Astralis descending. Robs. Strong position. Very strong position. They're all going window side, and he catches the tail end of it. Good tap. Takes down Bro, the tail of the assault, and look at that! Four down, just as easy as that five clean pistol round. A single point of damage done to FaZe Clan. First pistol round that FaZe have won against Astralis in this tournament. Could you say that one, one more time? The first pistol round FaZe have won against Astralis in this tournament <laughs> okay. over three maps of play. Well, there you go. There you have it. So one from six. You'll take it now. It's a, it's a prime opportunity. And to do it so cleanly, that's going to get... Yeah, exactly. This is the first time we have seen Astralis under any form of pressure. And it will now... 
spiral forward on the T side, where Device, as an in-game leader, will have to be tested. With well. no plants. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, an eco. Imagine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Calm cool. down. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is going to be quite tough, but they will cycle through. Yeah, Brokey is definitely woken up on the right side of the bed this morning. He probably had those pan fried dumplings oh. for breakfast. He's having too much fun as Brokey. They were trying to avoid the SMG. Frozen, however, brings the fight to them. 1,200 bucks. Additional. So, yeah, as you were saying, first test to see Astralis in Strife in a disadvantage. I mean, they haven't been here before. They haven't, I don't think, yeah, like you said, they haven't at, what, at any point. Most rounds that they've lost in any of the five maps they've played thus far. That's what I'm trying to say. No double digits. Phase found one round away from securing it. Closest game was a 13 to 7. And here we find ourselves on the, uh, the brink of something new for Astralis to handle. necessarily needs to be said, but it's a very important first gun round. Yabby has the chance to tussle with Romps behind that ramp smoke if he hangs around. Gonna break it. Yabby turns away, still gets the better of Romps. That's an opener, necessary for Astralis. Having to operate in a round like this with you two left to spawn, well highlighted by j -Raz. got Jakey on the ones and twos, Jay on the context. Uh, smoke could have been at his feet. It is. Just a third for his way out. Okay, Device doing all of the smokes. A lot of faith in his team here. Oh, that can go wrong. Yeah, Rain. Despite the absence of tracers, he's been spammed down very low. So it really does hinge on a hero play of sorts. When they were doing the lobby pushes against Liquid yesterday, it wasn't always working out for them. So it might not again. Yeah, be aware of the possibility. Head on the swivel. Oh. Carrigan. Ooh. That's two for Yabby. Might even be a third. Was prepared for Frozen. Gets him on the timing. They should now be able to thrust themselves in towards this lower site. And FaZe likely considering the save. Would be the smarter of the two options. A number disadvantage retake of B when you don't have anybody in a position to try and unravel this or even give information on where they're playing. If you want to contain and try and do some damage, that's one conversation. But it looks like Rain on 2 HP thinks better of contesting for any more fights. I tell you, Brokey probably hangs around for something. He's feeling quite hot. It's always, you know, un with those smokes, with the new smokes and, and the combination with the HE, unless you get a picture perfect every time, those fades, I, I, I can't tell if they're going to be favorable or not. No, no, especially when you, you, you're you the one throwing the HE and you succumb in the way Rob's did that. It's a noted move. Everyone's aware that Rops has got that one up his sleeve. Yabby clearly accounting for it. But this is where the nade and the flash combo becomes a factor. That makes a whole difference. You can see Yabby actually playing anti-flash in anticipation of a, of a second player towards the ramp side. All right, well, gun round number one in their pocket. One more of those required if they can wipe the board of FaZe to help level things back out. But FaZe with the save rifles have been able to get back into a full buy of their own. Diffuse kits, full nades, the only thing they're missing is a broke AWP, but we've seen his rifle work do wonders so far. No one yard here from Astralis, despite the wall of smokes. Yeah, hoping it's just respected. They just cleared one towards yard, likely didn't see anything behind it, so might be battening down the hatches, but this top side's leaky. Carrigan's close. He wants to just try and get one and done. Bro with the bomb, not going to overextend. Is it a double pump? That is possible. Here we go. Second wave. Carrigan Trade. waves goodbye to Bro. Into the site. Stair, solid. Looking for that main player. Planting open, but the smoke should cover. Not if he pushes. Huge oh. from Rain. Provides the double. Yabi has equalized. Those nades did nuclear damage towards heaven. Device into the site now. Yabi in support. This is a big duel. Robs has managed to get Yabi low with the ding through the board. Device underneath. It's really hinging on this brokey flank. Robs, there's no secret about his heaven op occupation. He's screwed now. Yeah, you're going to be pushing out a grey screen. Waiting for Brokey to Brokey's see if he finds pausing. something. It feels like Astralis have done enough for seven here. Bomb's halfway gone. Oh, maybe he can use that. Confirm some of the angles. Nah. Brokey's given up. Back it off. 
Yeah. Get on the site. Doesn't matter. Thought Rain had done enough to make this interesting, but I think as the HE's landed heaven, there's one on the exit. Rokey will take that, just can even keep the finances limited. They didn't wipe the board. Lost bonus building for the CTs now. Brokey, 100 bucks away from being able to drop a silenced M4. I think we're likely just to see them take partial investments behind the two saved guns. But it was the double wave. And you just go just to go through the thought process and something like this. So you do the smoke wall towards yard. If they use the rotation or they don't, there's probably likely still somebody tending towards outside just in case. You do the double set of mollies because you're thinking in that type of a rifle round where they saved guns, maybe they're lighter on in util. So if they do a smoke molly defense of their own, if they go for extinguishers, if they try and use their mollies to delay your push, when you go for the second wave, now you have the advantage. That second layering of the util as well as gun out, now they just have their guns to work with, might be out of position. And actually, FaZe have already burnt their second tactical timeout. So uh, discussing the brittle finances that we just highlighted moments ago, and they will just limp in with a couple of pistols, knowing the 2400 into the next will result in a full buy. Australia should be able to get past this unless something crazy happens. Bro into a MAC-10 with a good spawn. Yeah, deliberate. Knows it's not going to be a fantastic investment. Exposed head. Straight out hut. He'll get flashes. He's just going. He is just sailing. And it's good work from the dual Berettas of Frozen. A P250 on Carrigan. So not going to be too much to say about this one. Confident response as well. You know there's two saved M4s. If you go for a standard default round and they have a cheeky boost or a cheeky move, they pick one off, they spam one through a smoke. I understand that going hard top against a lighter buy is normally a risky thing to do against pistols because you're giving them favorable types of fights. But when you have that confident first player in with the MAC-10, even though Bro goes down immediately, he gets the space, gives the info, they trade immediately, and then they overwhelm them. So very good play from Astralis to make it a one-round game. I think Rain's ready for this. Look at this crosshair placement. Hello. And goodbye to Rain. Boosting up as well. Really just diligent stuff we're seeing from Astralis here on their T side. And it, it's nice to see them sweat. It's nice to see them working hard for it. Just want to highlight the kill distribution for Astralis. The high end is 11 on Stown, the low end is 9 on Yabby. Everybody else has 10. So it's a team effort. Oh, that is old school. Some of the players I used to play against back in the day, mate. We're going back in time. Ooh, okay. Raga has decided to take a tactical timeout. They know that FaZe will be buying. Raga, the newly appointed coach for Astralis. A device is the one actually doing all of the talking, so clearly wants to be able to convey something for this next gun round. It is a chance for them to not only tie things up, but take control. So an important moment to take pause, but that also allows Carrigan and Neo to stabilize the troops on the CT side, discuss the options of maybe what could be coming their way. What are the contingencies on the CT side going to look like? Brokey's AWP is out to play. M4s, Util, Diffuse Kit on Carrigan, everything they need to contend for a round. But Device took this timeout, so how technical is this round going to look? An initial smoke wall towards Yard. Double HEs. No connection. And they did this last time, right? It was the double pump in towards top. They did the smoke wall, nobody went out. But Device is lining up the same util once more. So that is four of their smokes dedicated just to Yard. And look at what util FaZe are left with. Three smokes, a molly, a couple of flashes. Already one player down towards lower. That's Brokey's AWP, but we've seen him love the vents with the AWP earlier in the tournament. Very intrigued to see how this one ends, because they've got the util double molly, backside top hut. Frozen's options to be limited. They've even wall banged on his way out, but Yabby's the one to take down Carrigan. Astralis have drawn first blood again. Doing it again. They have the double mollies to do the exact same thing once more. Feels like they've got infinite util. They've done two smoke walls and now two Molotov to XX top. And there's not a single nade left bar of smoke Everyone's on Frozen. On fire. Here we go. Frozen. He can extinguish. He's going to get spammed. No, he still takes one. Prior to the flames. Burning him to a cinder, Brokey in the vents as you discussed, but this already looks great for Astralis. They're planting no options available for FaZe Clan. This is masterful. A harassing topside, not through misdirection, head on. And this topside of Frozen and Carrigan, again, we spoke about this the other day. Well, hold up, we got the hunt. 
This would make a big difference if you can take out Brokey's AWB. Yeah, kind of... yeah, Frozen used to be the yard holder on Mouse. Wait, are they going back in? They're going back in. They're going to go for this. They're going to go for this. They, oh. they got the kid on Brokey. They're going to give it a go. Nami's holding. Brokey down. Ding comes back. That might be enough. Yeah, that will be enough. Yabi. Sacrifice the orb. Of all things. I mean, he had the kit. I understand why he had to be involved. On the off chance that they could catch and surprise Astralis by going for it. But yeah, that has resulted in a lost AWP. <sighs> yeah, they're shaking their heads like, okay, well, we'll take that. Little bonus. The fact they're trying something cheeky like that is insane. Well, they give it a go. That's the Yabby frag onto Carrigan in transition. Tried Thought to extinguish. extinguish. Yeah. yeah, it was too deep. See the gap that still prevailed. Yabby gets all three. Well, lost bonus. Maxed out four in a row. Yeah, can't believe it. I wouldn't be able to believe it either. Oh, Astralis T side, man. This is uh, four consecutive bomb plant successes. Brokey has been able to get out another AWP. Thanks to Robs. Very big round now. Can FaZe kind of stem the bleed here? A slower start to things. If you don't win this one, it feels like the next CT gun round from FaZe has to be direct. Has to be them setting the tone, taking a fight, going for a push. But they still have five smokes, Chad. It's I a mean, completely different look to how the last few completely. went, right? They've been doing the smoke walls early, trying to force that early rotation. Up something a bit different this time and with intent behind it. Well, at least it looked that way. It's just going to be Stout. It's deception once more. Now, Ropsy's Molotov and Stout speed walking to try and take this space upon the flame fade. Undetected. Ropsy has to know something's coming. Yeah, he's playing the uh, smoke fullback, but that's actually perfect. This is exactly what they wanted. Yeah, he's puffing up his chest. Needing the smoke to really apply the pressure. And now they pop top. They're hoping that this forces an over-rotation from FaZe. Again, they want to abuse this site on Frozen. He's dropped off from the hut. Can't find a safe haven. Good cover from Rain, but spun by Bro back. 25. Bombs loose. It's time, their greatest enemy here. Bombs on the floor. Stown still towards that lower side of the map. He's battling for Robs, keeping that fight, keeping his boots planted. Good find from Robs. Bomb still top side. Oh, no. A team kill. It works out for them if they can just get the bomb down. Time, seven, no chance. Lockdown, FaZe will take it. Nice round, well handled. Important kill from Rain through the smoke. So many different it, flavors from Astralis though. Yeah, they're adding in different looks, different tempos, different timings. Where Not, did it fall apart? I, I think they got stalled out. That yeah. was the, right, they, they just... Yeah, you gotta do it. Yeah, of course. You have to do it. I, I think that... Faze holding on to their U-Tool for a little bit longer. They didn't feel the pressure, and that could be because of Astralis' tempo was later in the round. Bro's going to throw out a squeaky Lurk Smoke for Yabby to work with. So a different flavor of harassment has dropped straight down towards lower again. So he completely leaves ramp. That means he can contribute towards this yard defense with Rain, who we can see under pressure from top silo. Well, they got across, but that's what I'd be saying. Stan, you made it across. Why don't we come with you this time? Why don't we do exactly the same round, but with a bit more time on the clock? Oh, and Nate exposes him. That's a great counter. Team play from FaZe. Bank accounts light for Astralis. They're out of funds. They have to stick the landing on this one. Oh, I like this from Carrigan. He knows he's got a man advantage. Why not play in a disruptive forward position? It could be isolated by Yabby. It depends how good he is. That's a quick one. And instead of being early to receive the exec, now they've got a 4v4. Frozen takes his place. Claims at his feet. Aim mapping out of squeak. Rain with a power position. It's good from Frozen. Rain as well. Solid work. Last bullet. Could be Bro with a multi. Can't Expect that from Rops up the vent. An 11th for FaZe Clan, and it's really starting to look like Astralis' funds are broken. That 12th seems imminent, Jad. Look how fortified that top site was. Rain dropping all the way back from Yard. His early exchange to play from Heaven could rotate in towards that A site to assist. And Astralis, they're out of options, right? The finances for them it doesn't exist. 
They don't want to give 12 over for free, so they're going to shove all in a complete force fight on round 21. They're going to have to force fight in back-to-back -back rounds. Oh, yeah, pace change. Brokey, he loves this. Just immediately racks up a frag, make it a double three. Flashed players pulling the trigger successfully. Carrigan clears, it is sportless. A flawless conversion with a full investment from Astralis. <laughs> Brokey was in the right place right from the get-go. They used the top rush out of confidence, and now they used it out of desperation. 2,400, no bomb going down. Second jaunt on Nuke in this tournament. And Carrigan feeling the energy today, has his star of Brokey on form. Frozen sits bro in his ass. That's 12 confirmed. FaZe are about to take a map off of Device's new face to Stralis, the return of the king. Yeah, and we get to see what happens when they are the ones clawing it back. We've only seen them with the dominant position. This is Brokey. Perfect position and timing on that one. He was full flashed. And the fact he gets the second one, that is stunning. But we get a, a look at how Astralis handle, uh, you know, being down in the mud, thrown down, a map discrepancy. And I'm not getting ahead of myself, but perhaps I am. There's still, of course, a Tank 9 and some pistols in the mix. Yeah, but unless they go for something similar again, I think Carrigan will lock them down once more. It's going to have to be something a little bit trickier. They, they can't just go all in. Mm. Uh, but as I mentioned, when they tried it again in the back-to-back -back rifle rounds, do the same smoke wall yard and, and try and go down secret with Stout. See if you're able to actually breach through secret. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Different smoke wall, but maybe same intent. Yard control from Rain, and well, we dealt with Stair easily. Oh, Stout. Had to make a play, didn't he? Yeah, understandably. Brokey unable to connect the second, but it's Yabby through the smoke has caught Carrigan top hut. There could be a twist in this tale. What's a gap for FaZe to acknowledge? Oh, Robs. He knows Yabby's around. This changes the dialogue of the round completely. Yeah, Yabby's position becomes even more enticing. Drops unprepared. Yabby, he's even anticipating. Frozen not getting the glimmer in his eye for the rifle. Frozen, however, finds him. Oh, braves the vents. Device is low HP, but he can't even contribute. What's he supposed to do? Brokey into the site alone. His teammate. Nades, though. He has a smoke. Yeah, smoke and a kit. And they both have deagles. Smoke and a kit. If he gets to. Oh, he just swapped away. Device playing the gap, <laughs> charging at him with his knife out. And Astralis have won the round. Even yoinks the all for good measure. Can he get away? I don't think uh, so. Bang. Back oh, what? Backside, backside plan, not an Astralis plan. Okay. Oh my goodness. He'll take that any day of the week. Brokey feeling a bit foolish after that one. That's a nice little cash injection and a weapon they wouldn't have had otherwise. So just two rounds the difference. Astralis would need to take us to overtime to keep the conversation going. But great work from Yabby. Stown and Yabby both making plays to keep Astralis in it for now. And the pressure turned up again on FaZe. Oh, I can't quite believe they've done that. Yavi, cheeky man with the Tech 9. There they caused chaos all across the map. They gave themselves multiple avenues. And I love Device's understanding of where the three players possibly are. Just run towards the lower site with the bomb and, and reset the round. If you just waited and they tried to hunt out all their players, they had the firepower advantage. So they would have been able to win out most of those duels. Then the 40 second clock begins. It's like, all right, boys, you're on a timer. You can't be as diligent with your clears. A good partnership as well. One we haven't really addressed is that Runger and Device have known each other for a very long time. I think this team can be vindication for Runger's coaching career in a roster over there with, a, uh, with OG, say a roster. Name the player, they've probably been in the team. No success in what, five years? Yeah, I'm sure Runger has an opinion about international teams, that's for sure. Well, Astralis, you win this, you wipe the board, you take us to OT most likely. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a universe where Device can catch them out here. Oh, but Brokey gets a nice angle there. Under the scope of Device, he spots him out towards the silo. So there's info that favors FaZe and Rain. Know about him. He's taken down Stown, a smoke to evacuate. 
cautious with it, but they've got the man advantage by virtue of Harvard Nygaard. One of the playmakers down dead. Somebody else going to have to step up and fill that void. How do they battle back into a number disadvantage? He's up towards Ram, starting to aggress. Yabby up next. Oh, wow. That was perfect from Robs. He nails the headshot. Astralis now really off kilter. Smoke wall will land. Class had to go all the way back from Silo to T-Spawn to lob that out. Yeah. Oh, Carrigan goes down to stair. Maybe this 3v5, now four. Could still take shape down towards the low site. Not a single member of FaZe Clan yet to address it. Now Rain will. Down the vents just in time. Stairs across the line. And Fetch. Oh, anticipating that is Rain. That might be the first nail in this new coffin. He's down here as well. The time for this is such an issue. 20 seconds. Yeah, you think they've almost got no hope now. Rain, he's doing such a good job of just staying alive. Device the one to change that, but it's Brokey's orb to seal the deal. With 13 seconds, there's nothing here for Bro. And Astralis, they've lost their very first map. And Intel Extreme Masters, Jungdu. Base Clan, a map away from the Grand Finals. And another Grand Final. Another Grand Final, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm very interested to see where the rest of this series is going. You end up joining Astralis, and then the whole community says what they say, blah, 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 blah. You know, what do you think, man? How do you feel? How, how do you feel on the inside about it all? Spill your heart to me. I mean, we're feeling good. I think we... Oh, no, no we. You. I'm feeling good. Um, we uh, on the team now. We, we have the roles that everyone wants and plays the, the best CS in. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of the CS wise and yeah, yeah, team wise and CS wise, it's really good. Uh, I really enjoy playing with the other guys, and it's been uh, a really nice structure and and friendship in the team. So yeah. But yeah, that's fun. Like okay, so Device takes over his IGL, blah 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 blah. blah. Um, how long have you been watching a guy like Device play Counter Strike, and what does it feel like to play now alongside him? I mean. He was the one of the reason me and Stone joined. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty it's pretty crazy playing with him, uh, and I think he he's uh, really that player I thought he was. So that's that's just nice. He lives up to the expectations. Um, but what was the other question? Well, you heard him say right there, Device really is the player that you thought he was. And well, for Device and company, this is going to be their first L in China. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters. I'm here with Yanko, Elfish Guy. And for FaZe, the map up in the series, Nuke, their pick. Probably another day in the office for him. Well, yeah, when it comes to, to the stage, right? And we see why FaZe didn't decide to take the veto anywhere else, right? Despite losing first time on, uh, first time around on Nuke, and it was a 13-4 scoreline.
uh, but a complete opposite of that game here, especially on that T side, right? In the group stages, FaZe was getting a lot of opening kills, couldn't close out rounds, and here they managed to claw their way back into rounds, grind it out, and have, what, seven rounds on the T side without pistol. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, first loss in the tournament as well for Astralis, so it's going to be a big wake-up call, or not necessarily a wake-up call, but perhaps even a crash back to reality for this Astralis roster after things were so good for such a long time. Now they've got that uphill battle. So Astralis is forced phase here to, to respect them and give them that sort of a recognition within the map. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. I, I think FaZe doesn't care really, like because we saw some of the things from them in this game that we usually see. Some of the FaZe BS, right? Like 2v3s, 2v4s and whatnot. Brock and Rob's really doing a lot of work in the first half. And so uh, I'm just going to quote, actually I had to write down what Sponge said, because sometimes, you know, you guys from that part of the world, I don't know what you're really saying, so I'm still kind of trying to decipher okay. it. This is what he said. All Astralis faces look like smash crabs, and I, I'm just quoting Chad. Have you ever seen a smash crab before? It's not something that right off the top of the head. Anyway, we'll round crabs. seven. Give, uh, yeah, we don't have crabs. I don't have crabs. You don't have crabs. I'm talking about round cool. seven and what we have going to, to look at there. Brokey, Rop, salvage a situation that's otherwise uh, a rough one. Well, I mean, I, I, I wanted to highlight this one because this kind of feels like where it really starts started to get going for FaZe because it was looking pretty rough for them. Astralis got off to a good start. It took five rounds for anyone but Rops to get a frag on FaZe. And you look at it here, you freeze frame it right here and it's 5v3, you think, oh, well, I mean, it's just another one for FaZe and everything's going to keep on going. But then if we continue on, Brokey gets one, Brokey gets two, Brokey gets three. And all of a sudden it starts to fall apart. Rops is able to chime in there as well. And it's Yabby who unfortunately gets stuck in that one on two. And Brokey mollies himself, but luckily, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's why Robs is still alive, gets the dink and finishes it off. And I think this is what you see from FaZe a lot of the times in playoffs, especially these two guys, Brocky and Robs in a 2vx. Doesn't matter how many guys are alive on the other side, they can get it down. And yeah, in that T side early on, Brocky, tons of impact. Yeah, there's tons of impact for Brocky across this map. Well, that's the X Factor Brocky that we're talking about, right? We were sort of discussing this a little bit yesterday and we were saying, yeah, he had a pretty good day yesterday, but we didn't really get like that X Factor, you know, that difference maker. And that's what we get today, 21 and 10 on the first map. And not just a great KD, but a huge impact as well. A lot of those clutch rounds, multi kills coming through from him as well. And what I really appreciated about this as well is a lot of it was on the T side, you know, it was going poorly for FaZe. And then he pulls these rounds out of nowhere. He's doing it with the AK and he is pulling FaZe, kicking and screaming through the early stages of the map while a couple of the other guys are really starting to get rolling. He's running out squeaky and aim mapping at a certain point, right? Yeah, and I think Astralis did a good job on their T side in a sense of how they approached it, what the plan was. They were switching switching it up and they were finding openings. But, you know, this round that we showed was a big one because it was basically an eco with, an hero, with a hero AK and previously, you know, the 2v3. And they just let some of these rounds where they had an advantage slip through their fingers. And that's the difference between playing FaZe on stage compared to playing in, in the groups. So tell me a little bit about that call from FaZe. They got three alive. They try to regress through a ladder and get back into the site after you know what we considered was a save uh, cheeky play yeah wanted. they're trying to you know i think they're never going to try it again in china because here people they just get so excited about whichever play but uh yeah uh, i think they even have a call for it i think a team did it against they're them right. yeah and then now they have Chinese like, team, by they the way. just have a they just have a name for it right and mm. because of the economy situation just feeling hey maybe if we could get that one kill and get on the bomb we can steal one away but as soon as Brokey died they just went for the save yeah. i lost the op in the process but hey no harm no foul face pick up map one we now hear from raga on the astralis side the last time these two teams faced against each other, FaZe managed to get only three rounds. This time, they were more successful. Ruga said that when they lost the fourth round, that is when the momentum changed. And in the end, FaZe are the ones that took the whole map. They most certainly did. That is absolutely right, Heku, doing a fantastic job with her ear to the streets uh, as, as the teams go in between these maps. Is signing something? Did I see that? Possible. Right? You know, it wouldn't shock me. I've seen it all here. Whatever. But I think, you know, you go into the second half, and that's where The Rock steps up. That's where Rain okay. shows up, right? Playing uh, still on yard, which is a good thing, right? That's one of the positions that he kept for himself uh, and really was the crucial player, I feel like, for FaZe being able to close uh, Nuke out on that CT side. So let's talk about this Ancient here. Uh, it's a Astralis pick. We talk about a FaZe CT start. What are we looking for, Jordan? 
Well, certainly looking for Australis to kind of keep that role going on this map. They've looked pretty good on it at this event so far. I don't know necessarily what to say about FaZe for Ancient. I mean, we didn't really get to see too much from them. Uh, obviously, that loss to Australis, that'll be on their mind, but maybe not a massive factor. A win against FlyQuest, I don't think you can really take too much away from that one. It, again, it feels like a bit of a different beast now that we're here on the stage. But what I do want to say is that Astralis, I mean, they were competitive enough there on on Nuke to make me think that this isn't necessarily going to, again, just be a whitewash 2-0 for okay. FaZe. They seem like the kind of team at the moment that is really doing it tough. They're, they're taking their time getting through a lot of these series. And I feel like if they do make it to that grand final, they're going to be pretty buggered by the time they get there. So I'm still thinking this is going to be a tough uh, one to close out. Yanko, what he said there, same light, same notion. You buying into that? You are you believing? Complete opposite, Trace. I think this is where it's over for Astralis, right? I, I think one of the things that they had going for them in some of these series, they were stomps, right? So they didn't have to dig deep. And they will have to dig deep here against FaZe. They already played two Ancients. I trust Carrigan and Neo to come up, come up with a good plan. The individuals are playing well. I think this is where Frozen steps up and takes FaZe to the Grand Final. Yeah, we're going to keep all our eyes on the prize, just like FaZe are trying to get themselves into a Grand Final. So many semis for these guys. And well, now may or just be the time that they can put a straw away. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. We'll be right back after this. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris three flick, no. oh, the Mickey one by one, sex, no way. He wants to... Oh, my God, who <laughs> does it? Perfectionist, energetic, generous, intelligent. I think it's a device. I'm going with device. He is a now he's an ideal. Everything needs to be perfect, uh, and uh, he's also a, a crazy guy. Outside CS, dragon. Pick, caring, generous, smart. Some good things and it's some bad things. I'm going with uh, Stown as the pick. <laughs> he's a he's a really caring person at least to, to me and uh, the people around him. And he's also a really, a really smart guy. Materialistic, I don't think he, he is, but uh, the other three is, uh, is close to him. And I need to choose two players from yeah. this. I don't know what the other one is, and I don't want to give it, if it's a good one, to uh, bro, because uh, this one is uh, me and a uh, star. Easygoing, empathetic, creative, impulsive, disorganized. Yeah, that's fine. That could be bro. Yeah, I think that fits bro. He's a, uh, I mean, it has been easy going getting here on the team. He's a really good player. Fitting really well with the things we want to do. Wow. Monkey, that's the coach. He is intelligent for sure. Um, optimistic. I can, I can see that as well. He's a, he's an optimistic guy. Some great humor around the team. That's actually Raga. What the flip? <laughs> what the flip? <laughs> What the flip, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, some of the things, yes, but I think the other one is uh, fitting him as well. The dragon is, is him, I'm sure. This is wrong. It's going good. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. I guess I'm the, I'm the monkey then. Disorganized. Maybe outside of CS, but I think it's CS, it's, it's okay. Secret risk, yes. I think my list is better. And the right one. Don't believe what you read, not all words are the same. Not everything you see, you can't trust anyway. 
All the thieves dressed as sheep tell you they know the way. So bite the hand that feeds you to the wolves as prey. Uncharted waters for Astralis here at the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu. They've lost a map. The first one of the tournament. And the first one off the back of a double boot camp. Missing the major, but with coming in with a vehement passion and with victories without a single opponent finding double digits. Now, myself, Machine, and Chad EB, otherwise known as Sponge, are here to witness FaZe Clan, a map to the good. Yanko saying, if you want to lift the trophy here in CS2, you've got to beat FaZe. Well, they have to do it the hard way now. Astralis, there's no doubt that many expected to see them in the grand finals. FaZe Clan just about securing themselves to the semi-final position in a tough and battle in their quarter-final. Now we find ourselves here. They're a map away, Chad. And the map is ancient. This is Astralis' domain. What do you expect? It warmed into the game. It got awfully close. On Nuke, let's see if they can pull their socks up. Astralis, this is their home map. This is the map that they chose more often than not. And this is a map where they're hoping to get back into their winning ways. Set themselves up with a direct B execute. Smokes in the air into a four man stack. This is hefty. Device giving some, something to work with. Brokey certainly does. In combination with Rain, it's working out wonderfully. Carrigan, extinguish and reposition. It's Device on the warpath. Overlooked, frozen. Taps the head of Bro. You get that bomb back if Device can. He certainly could have. At this point, it may be Whoa. too little, too late. Robs is hunting. Yabby's head. Oops, perfect. Popped. And Device, an impossible task. He's already done more than expected with the double. But they have the bomb. There's no reason for them to take an engagement here. Unwinnable clutch for Device, isn't it? Would have to also be the ace. Yeah, no. Uh, and it was all off of that tap onto Bro. Frozen just being overlooked. Now Karakin knows where Device is. His position is noted. Trying to bait them out. He's going to do everything in his power. Don't forget, a bomb plant is essentially a victory, regardless of how the round goes down. I think in the bigger context as well, this is going to be another pistol for FaZe uh, against Astralis. Now you return to the series they had in the group stage. Astralis won all of the pistol rounds and the conversions. And FaZe it, getting both CT pistols and denying both bomb plants is a massive boon. It takes a huge weapon out of the arsenal for Astralis to stay competitive early. And not just pistols, right? Clutches uh, in their last head-to-head. -head. You said four? Five to one. Five to one, damn. So, yeah, if you're, if you're winning all the pistols and winning all the clutches, I think Device was aware of that We're in the interview. We're uh, also dominant as far as opening duels went. So they had them covered in all of the stat lines. But this was a four-player B stack, so this is uh, FaZe with some homework. It's going to be just one flash for Astralis to contend in a full block round. Device having to do the U2 again. Just making sure he's got the lineup just right. Flash is over. Carrigan was safe from it. He might collect a lovely sequence here. Just racks him up. No one going down. Rain holds on just about. Be happy with that one. So what is the tone that Astralis are going to set on the first gun round? 
they didn't have issues doing aggressive mid plays when we covered off in the group stage. They were able to do a donut smoke, a red smoke. They were able to biff their way out middle. Those type of plays, I, I would say, are essentially 50-50s. There's three SMGs on the other side of the server. Oh, talking to mid. They've thrown out the extinguished smoke. Whether or not they use it remains to be seen. Into Actually, a. No, it's not extinguished. It's just down mid. They'll push through it. I don't think that's landed as desired. It definitely was meant to keep these mid players focused and has done regardless. With the response time of Rops, he's rotated towards CT spawn. Oh, Rops. Oh, lovely dink, but he hasn't finished him off. He does find Stair. Good stabilization of the aim. Now, his next fight's a big one. Stout's going to clear it, but Rops just completely disrupts. Oh, just getting the bomb down. He's gone now, frozen with the flames. One HP, one V5, not going to happen. Essentially flawless. A great defense of the A bomb site. He was at CT and alone. How has he managed to find that so much impact? There's no noise B lane. They have full mid control, right? That smoke, like I said, I don't think that's landed as intended. A bit skew if so they know that nobody's contending towards middle. And then when it's awfully quiet everywhere else on the map, you are going to respond to this. The dink initially onto Bro, the course correct onto Stare, and then the follow up onto Stown in Temple. It's a thing of beauty. The bomb went down, it will enable Astralis to get themselves some lighter pistol investments, but this is exactly what you'd hope to see if you're a FaZe fan, and there's plenty of those here in Chengdu. That's the mid-lurk smoke. Heichi to harass, lands in the center of two. Trying it again. Let's see if we can get the same result out of Robs. He's got a lot of confidence to hold such a long-range angle. CT smoke, but they're ahead of it. Good strafe. You can see how little of a chance he gets. Brokey charges in, puts his head right in the vice. And Stair slams it in shot. Bomb will be going down here. Look how fast fight. Carrigan is on this. They're still just directing the boost. I don't think anyone's going to consider this. It's not even crossed their mind. And now Carrigan can put his bullets into theirs. It's a double. Stair finds a rifle. This is still grounds for an Astralis conversion here. You've got Kev. You've got a rifle on Stair. It's planted well. He can disrupt the defuse. He's worried about it already. Bomb about half gone now. Another smoke and a kit on Ross. Elevated over the smoke. If you go too far, you're in trouble. A fake... Stair, he's still doing damage here. Rops is low. Awkward now. Defuse coming in. Frozen holding it. And Frozen pulls it across the line in time. Content with that one. Had to swat them away multiple occasions. Harassment, pressure of the bomb ticking away. But FaZe stand tall. They do not drop the round. Brokey getting a little bit overzealous with that swing. Wanted to be ahead of the play. He got flatlined, but Carrigan's flank for the double that causes so much strife. Makes the retake a possibility. And Rain, what a pivot into the second. <laughs> That's a thing of beauty. Yeah, nice. Up. Good work for the replay. We got to see that one. Stunning work. Okay, here we go. Guns out. Sun's out. And and flex on him. Pushing. And that's not gone to plan. He's been so good from the Frozen's long range him. angle. This is an interesting smoke from Carrigan to peek around it, but Bro's already beheaded him. Looks like Astralis might be getting there first. Frozen's playing in the elbow fade smoke in middle right now. He, he won't be able to find Stair, who's actually gone back to T spawn. Interesting. So I wonder if they play to contain, if they get some kills, they give it a go. Stair's already trying to hunt. And considering the damage they were able to find, this is going to be very interesting. Device has been hurt. He will lose the AWP. Stair is between them. And with the way Device was running, if you're frozen, you think something's a little bit fishy. Yeah. Well, sleeping with the fishes is Stair now. More damage done. Two bodies in the dirt. Three to survive from FaZe. I want to talk about something interesting with the way that uh, FaZe have been opening up these rounds. Carrigan's been middle in most of them. Brokey's been over towards B. So it's been Carrigan, Frozen, and Rops holding middle, and then Rops tending to A immediately. In that round, he just started A with the aggression. This was the opener. Great shot from Sound. Helped enable them in towards that side. But Brokey over towards B, and Rain's still playing K. So right now, the CT defense very mid centric. Like a movie. You can see a lot, almost every seat filled for today's entertainment. Good way to spend your Saturday evening.
They've actually brought these double orbs through. It's a miss CT elbow smoke, hard B. Very hard B, yeah, Brokey. Molly nails it, gets away as well. Clearing the smoke, no one's gonna be exposed. It's Bro with the bomb, considering a plan. Two of them in cave, Brokey forced into Jag by the Molotov. Oh, swap into his nades, device caught out. Sure, the bomb's down, but you've got five members of FaZe Clan. On the boxed. retake, boxed in, indeed. Carrigan spots another, it's down. He'll contribute. Bro spotting this AWP. YouTube doesn't want to put all these nades. Oh, no one's looking. Oh, Bro will get two. A third is crazy. Oh. Bro can come on, clutch. Outrageous from Bro. <laughs> Gets them unstuck. A huge disadvantage, and it's Bro, new addition in the Astralis jersey with a heroic multi. No one's checking. No one's looking. Oh, bro, no more. What a correction into the final. Massive one on four. Not a spectator <laughs> in this one. That's some impact right there. Crazy. Actually crazy. There was five members of FaZe on the retake. We were saying they're boxed in. It's bro just shreds them. I wonder if the CT defense changes now because they went with that same setup again, didn't they? Brokey getting caught off towards Cave, still found that opening pick over towards B. That should have been phases round every day of the week. Oh, they know that. We know that. It's just Bro who seemed to not get the memo. Yeah, most definitely impact player. Will they nail the smoke this time? One more to a standard hold. Rops A, frozen mid. There's the extinguish, it lands. Yeah, that applies so much pressure to the mid defense. They've got to go towards A. Rob's big box, he's tried aggression, he's tried passive, and the big box down. It's Bro's round, he's got the opener. Stair catching the rotation of rain, wasn't ready for that position. Brokey's in the smoke. This can go wrong in so many different ways. Bomb's already down, Brokey, you're going to give up the AWP here. Carrigan's nowhere to be seen. What are you planning on doing? No scope, dead after one. <laughs> okay, Astralis, they are definitely back after a 4-0 start from FaZe. Astralis, they have found their footing. Three consecutive. That bro round may be a bit of a statement piece in this T half for the Danes. We'll see how far they're able to run with this. While these rounds have been accrued, the loss bonus is also building 2,400 into the bank balance. It's not enough for FaZe to get a full buy. Frozen and Carrigan both just shy of being able to drop Silence down fours, so likely to see just some pistol upgrades. But Bro closes down rounds and opens up this one. I'm st I still can't quite believe that, I mean, from the outside looking in, it seems their game plan is to abuse drops. I mean, why are we hitting A so much? This has been A-centric. I've definitely been applying a lot of pressure. And the thing is, if the idea was to soften up the defense, so, hey, that they were having to start more players towards A, they already have been. Yeah. So they've been able to get the defense looking as they'd hope. Oh, on the yeah. clear, Stair just gets caught. That's a nice mix-up, Frozen. Quick aggression with only the, one of the two rifles, but Device's Orb is going to be quick to the draw. This time, B-Sight is the name of the game. Oh, Rain. Forced into the fight by the Flame. So one to deal with in cave. Frozen's M4 loose. Oh, if you spam, that's gonna wake up Yabby. Thank you. Down goes the rifle. I mean, yeah, Romps will he'll, he'll recover one. Yeah, that's the AK from Stair that's now been picked up and likely retained. I think so. Brokey's just on a mission to find one of his own, but Yabby's bodyguarding nicely. Whoa. Heard those steps, so. No, an individual was up towards ledge. Darting towards spawn is device with the AWP, but he's on his own. He can't go any further than this. The only way he gets a kill is if Rops oversteps the mark. And saying that about Mr. Cool seems extremely unlikely. A donation of a 5-7 for Brokey. At least if they come his way, he's got something to fight with. That was the eco around the saved guns. We're all tied up. They stopped the streak of Astralis. A necessary one back as Carrigan trying to stay active with his saved rifle, just gives one over to Device. No 
Here we go again. Ryan Carrigan B, broke his AWP towards A. Rom throws the middle. This is much more standard, that mid-extinguish from Spawn. Stair trying to be as jarring as possible. And there you have it, a missed elbow smoke. Oh, plays around there. Smoke to perfection. How has he done that? So comfy. I mean, the crosshair placement as well. There was no adjustment needed. That's a nice nade onto Stair, but <laughs> his double kill, it will have uh, echoes. It will have reverberations. Goes for a jiggle, loses his head, does rain. Job done, mission accomplished. Brokey's got to save. And this is the type of round, if I'm Astralis, I'm definitely calling for the hunt. B's clear, the bomb yet to be planted. Bro still over towards middle. You can start to put out this wide net. See if you can clear the investment of phase. The streak from four to five. This is the type of round where it is actually very important to take everything away. What? Nice shot on the jumping Yabby. Flash doesn't do too much, but Brokey's just still going to have to stand his ground here. There's a chance he could get ahead of the play. Good peek into the vice. Goes for the no scope. Will get run down. Did everything he could to try and hold on to the AWP. Carrigan could be the next victim as well. Stown's not letting off the gas. He's coming. Bomb still yet to explode. Carrigan, this is a clear. Stands ready for it, nails a third frag, call it five for Astralis, and that is in consecutive fashion. It's a really important hunt, right? I understand a lot of the time we're talking about that, it doesn't feel like it makes the biggest of deals, but with Max lost bonus in play, two players staying alive and Rops with a save gun from the last round, that's two drop rifles plus Rops having enough with a 3400. That's a full rifle round again. Right. So what was going to be a massive threat, oh, hold up. Not worried about the DHL drop, don't you worry about that. I'll give you uh, some knowledge of what's going on with the buy. That extra cash that I was just prefacing in Rops' hands has resulted in a brokey AWP. A tactical timeout has been called, the second of phase. They can just have this bogey orb, but they don't need to invest other than pistols around it, right? They can literally just run with this orb and some, some lighter upgrades, knowing they get max loss bonus in the next again. So this hmm. could have been a much scarier round, sure, if those guns got saved, but... Will Astralis be ready for an AWP? And will it even matter? Yeah, well, they're not starting the same way. I say that with Red Smoke and uh, Donut this time. And they just waltz on out. They know there's not going to be too much util for the CTs, so they'll take the space for free. So Carrigan's banking that the AWP showing its presence would stand them in towards an A stack. Well, the AWP hasn't had that opportunity just yet. Stair's been able to push up very aggressively towards Red. He'll be able to hear those rotations, and Brokey's already coming back over to address it, so the B-bomb site is completely empty. As Yabby and Bro walk on, work on cave control. Brokey's tempted to show the AWP that Stair's done a lot to keep the CTs inquisitive of middle. Brokey will catch him. Yeah, okay. But he was heading B. That's what Brokey's saying. He was trying to get up to B. I don't have any smokes for B. Well, there's one. Yeah, well, Bro... Oh, nade on it. No vision, no chances. Device has found Carrigan with his, his AWP. As well give this one a go. They can throw everything in. Oh, we'll definitely give it a go now. It's Number advantage. Shot. Device. Oh, oh. what oh. HP. A long range MP9 puts Device in the ground. It's up to Bro to save them now. Getting overwhelmed. They're pushing up long. Two from long side, one from short. It's Yabby and Bro side by side. Fragging them up. And Brokey can't do this now. They line it up. Double swing. Astralis, they recover. It got so awkward. <laughs> so scary. Sweaty for a moment, wasn't it? But that's two rounds I'd like to ascribe to Bro, this time with Yabby's support. But on that B site, he's been closing. How did it get awkward? So Robs gets a kill with a Deagle through the smoke, and then Device fluffs his lines in middle. Right. Those were the two kills that made it a 2v4 situation. I love the poise from Bro and Yabby late to go for the double swing, and great to see Bro getting involved and getting fired up. <laughs> this is a great game of counter so far. What phase got for us? The rifles are out, as you prophesied. Let's see. This is more of a standard round. B lane control, mid control. This is standard CS. Yeah. First chance we get to see Rain and his master mastery of the cave control. Brokey Donut. Wow, you're right. This might even be considered a, a standard setup. They haven't just gone all in. Oh my it God. hasn't just been a biff. Ooh. So a, a default spread, essentially. It only took us 10 rounds, Chad, but here we are. 
Frozen's just housekeeping red. That's the most passive way, I suppose, you can hold it when you've got Froki spotting the mid cross. There's the Molotov out. It's a good way for your A main player to show a bit more presence, isn't it? So it feels like a bit more of a threat, especially if you're clearing out that tree position and there's no intent behind it. Carrigan's hit the emergency button as far as the fragging department is concerned. His org has come out to play. Rain and Carrigan on Anubis yesterday. A miserable showing, one I'm sure that they'd love to forget. The corralling cave, the second smoke lands. Time starting to become the issue for the Danes. 35 seconds as they will have to pivot. Looks like they want to try and split over towards A or at least search for a pick. Rops is passive in Donut. Brokey playing from CT. They need to call a finish. Device, the pressure's on you. If Molly Pillar, they're running into the rain. He could be able to get one or two. Oh, it's comfortable for rain. Make it three. He takes that device as well. Locked out. It's rain's round. It's rain's domain. Get out of cave. Four kills from him, up to ten, and FaZe now just making it a one-round game. What a great job of corralling where they wanted to finish. Smoke in the cave, smoke again, time just being soaked off the clock, and then Rain chomps him up, <laughs> spits him out. Thanks for coming. Lovely wide step as well. You can see Device just had to try and take the shot, didn't anticipate Rain to keep moving. 400 damage on the nose. Both Stown and Device throwing flashes. They really want to get Stare out middle. They'll get him across towards Tetris. It looks like they're going to go straight in towards an A play. Rops and Brokey. This yeah, is a strong what, setup. That was working for them, right? But they never had to run into Brokey. Is he really going to walk through Donut, anticipating a gap? He is. And Rops will take first contact, but that means they're not ready for Brokey. They are now. He fires off the shot, but Stare braves the Donut smoke. In combination with Device, there's a man advantage. Stretching their legs into the site, having a good time. Frozen put on 40. Three of them congregating towards CT. If you push too far, you could go down to a down spray. Up and through. Off the flash. Oh my god, he goes so wide. Device will collect and Astralis one frag away. It's Yabby to close it. Seven T side rounds. Almost all of them in consecutive fashion. Six on the trot, a seventh for the cherry on top. Astralis losing their first map in this series, and now we find ourselves in their turf. And a convincing start, seven T rounds here on Ancient, which is their map pick. What are you saying, Chaddy B? The third of Inferno feels like it's just around the corner. This is a map where FaZe have shown struggles in recent times, even banning it. Not for that today. Four mid. Behind it, bro just tap, tap, taps away. They're out, they're in his face. It's a lot of pressure on the bro. Wow! Couldn't track for a second. Messi. Down, down! Gets nothing! Empty handed with the dual barrette as they invested into him. And he couldn't connect the dots. It's Device and Yabby who make light work of a 2v4. Now with the bomb on the floor, and Yabby putting Rops there too. It all rain falls was. to rain. It's been spotted out. Device is going to clear him. Wow! How have they done that? Confident Counter-Strike on the pistol. Happy to take those fights. 
It looks messy from Yabby, but he copped a goosh from Rain on B lane as he was taking that mid jewel. So he had 180 degrees. Actually, that's 360, isn't it? Yeah. Had to so worry about everywhere. The bomb goes down. This is the clear. So Carrigan gets caught. Whoa. Yabby nailing headshots. And Device the same. No yeah. doubt about that. They're looking in it to win it. They want to take us to three. And the pistol, a key indicator. In the absence of the plant, face, stomach and eco. Ops invested. P250. Oh, sorry. Do excuse me. And Brokey has a Zeus, all right. What am I saying? What am I saying? Twelve hundred bucks. Nice cash for the rest of this one. Oh, a nade right at his nose. Four HP is a ringing. Oh. And he still gets it with the P250. <laughs> Didn't get the sound cue, I suppose. Lovely. It's down one to upgrade anyway. Yeah, yeah, it was all part of the master plan. Didn't want to carry that MP9 through. Oh, there will be two MP9s, one for Bro, one for Step. AK's now invested by Mouse. By Mouse? This HUD is killing me, man. You've got... I have Mouse versus no, Monty as you my had logo. You Monty on versus HUD. Mouse, yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's kind that's... of killing me here. Does, does, what happens when you refresh it? You know why I think this is happening? Because Bro is on one side, because that's why we get the Monty logo yeah. and Frozen on the other. And it just freaked out. Yeah, might have to restart that hard. Yeah. Well, we can we can swap seats. Yeah, that could be cool. They left the bomb in spawn chat. What does that tell you? It tells me that they're not doing anything fast. Well, they are brain farting. I forgot the bomb. Yeah. No, I, think, <laughs> I think your first assumption, bang on. Okay, cool. So allowing... Astralis to rifle through their util. Would you say this is becoming more meta in the sense that T's are, are, are more happy to concede early lane? Well, yeah, because I, I think FaZe are one of the teams who have some good util to go for the retake. They're able to do smokes and flashes from outside of the doors in combination. They're actually going to try and pipe mainly through mid, so I would expect to see at least a red smoke, maybe a donut smoke as well for good measure, but they have to take fights on both fronts. Down's done well to avoid the flashbangs. Bro's taking one down. Even trades. It's down with heavy impact. It's oh. Brokey! Sprays them down. He's an absolute monster on the rifles, is Brokey. Another AK 3K from Brokey. How many of these is he going to get? Just keep counting them. Well, Stair, I think he'll give this one a look. Currently doesn't have a kit. Finds a rifle upgrade. And has a very good time in that bomb. Being loose. Slight issue. The T smoke indicates that Rops is crossing now, so he's a bit of ahead of the play. By getting into cave, and with Brokey towards long side, it's if Rops goes for the plant, which he will eventually have to go for. Is he covered? He, oh, he's banged! He's stuck out! Ten seconds. Like a sore thumb! Is this another clutch for Astralis? It certainly is! Stairs turn in the sunshine! First Bro, now Stair. Astralis, they are making FaZe sweat. Brokey did such a good job with that triple kill on the AK, but Stair actually just pieced the entire round together. He knew that the smoke was being thrown lane. You see, he didn't even acknowledge it. He said, well, I know exactly what you're getting up to. You needed to get the bomb. You needed to make it towards the site. I just need to find Brokey. And then you see that Molly come in deep. You assume, because the most powerful position you'd play for with early site is deep towards the death cube. You isolate the... Rops essentially, by planning so open, gave him that one. Brokey. Brokey's mad. Brokey's pissed, and he's been punished. You try to change the pace on us, that's an early first blood. That was the only rifle. This is falling apart. Stair just peppers them with some spam. Carrigan next victim. And one by one, they are just torn out of this round. Choice of plant spot as well from Robs. That, yeah, that's what I was trying that's to That's where my head's going. But th th I think th the thing is, his biggest issue is the flank at that point, I guess, right? Cave was always susceptible. I, I guess he d be thought if he was. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I, yeah. Because there is a safe plant for long side behind the concrete pillar. He was exposed, got wall banged, and, and they lose the round because of it. Great play from Stair. Take nothing away from him. Door smoke. Here we go. Is there anything left from FaZe, or will this be kind of Astralis returning to uh, their dominant ways? Oh, Frozen, Frozen, white Not screen. Cleared. In the smoke. 
And pushing into stair. It's a big fight. Yabi built upon it. Oh dear. Brain gives them something to hold on to. Rob's nearly found Yabi there. Oh, he's pushing. Brain should have him. Good work. Oh, pushing. Yabi's behind two of them. How's Three he gone away with this? How has he gone away? He just slips, evaporates. They have no idea where he's gone. And now Broken Prophet, he takes down Rob. This could go horribly wrong. Yabby's not coming back. He's actually going around the world to the wrong side. Okay, well, you've got device towards the A side. He's but actually he's stopped acknowledging away. Donut. They're noisy. They're so noisy. Brokey and Rain. Let's see what this brain trust can conjure device up. Device has no idea. They, they think it's B. They've misplayed this. Well, now... Well, yeah. They still think it's B. They'll work it out now. Well, Hello. they should. Hello. It's, boys, the, the bomb's not ticking. Somebody make the call. Um... This is unheard of. <laughs> now it's, the penny's dropped. The penny has dropped. And so is Brokey! <laughs> oh no! Rain, what still, can you do? Still no kit. Ahead of the play. Messi spray. That is gone horribly wrong for FaZe. Oh. That could have been ugly as all hell. Oh. Imagine if they kept clearing the site for moments longer. Oh my gosh. Deary, okay. Well, this is the dominant Astralis that we had in the group stage. And they're back. They're back in full force. And they are just turning mid and B lane into deathmatch with utility. Everyone's least favorite type of deathmatch, actually. <laughs> Oof, that had to be a really clean headshot there from Rain, yeah. Great map from Bro, has to be said. That 1v4, he's continued the impact, 17 kills in total. Smile, yeah, what else can you do? Okay. Well, FaZe. It's a long road back into Ancient Inferno. Just a single round away for Astralis here. And they've actually sent a device to be responsible solely for the A site. The orb couldn't be a better weapon for the job. The only way to force him off this angle is a good well-placed flashback. It doesn't know. I don't doesn't look like Robs is gonna do that. Device throwing util almost kind of role-playing, cosplaying as a rifler. I wonder if the round call was just to get a main control or if they plan to finish. Second B door smoke, top of the first. Stown has an extra as well. Oh, bro, very lucky to be alive. One HP. Feels like he has to get out of there. So H is to harass this park of the bus from FaZe. ET smoke achieves nothing. That smoke, however. Ooh, could have led to Carrigan getting out. Stair's fighting. Yeah, only for a minute. Stair one, make it two. Stair just again. Locks down middle. He's got Bro in support. Bro with one HP. Stair searching. Brokey loves that smoke. Works his magic around it. Bombs loose in middle. Bro good for the trade, despite that one HP. If Rob's can find him, that gives him some room. Covering the bomb. Some support. Absent now. Rain, big one. Rob's and Rain. Turn this round around. Elevated, oh, what oh, a oh, shot! That's a device special right there. Oh, yeah, we can stop this, just needs to walk back up ramp. This is it, this is the map. Certainly looks like it, the smoke maybe obscures the immediate rundown. Yabby, what have you got for us? He's gonna spam him away. Robs is down, the round is won. We're going the distance, folks. Dominant from Astralis. And Inferno awaits. They ask the question, how would they respond after losing their first map at IEM Chengdu? Well, they responded in kind, a dominant victory. And I guess at the moment, the Intel Grand Slam sign that's open, you want to get into another final. I'm sure you would love to win a final. So, like, you look at your group, you look at your opening game. Are you you worried in the best of one against Namiga? No. I mean, it's a bit of one. I mean, of course, anything can happen, but I'm not worried. Okay. And then uh, you probably play Astralis in the second game. Have you practiced them much? What do you think about Astralis? Uh, we played them on Vertigo on practice before Spirit game and they fucked us, so we don't play Vertigo against them. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So no vertigo against Australis. Uh, who else do you think is going to be a threat at this event? No spirit, no vitality, no Navi. Probably Mouse, no, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they seem yeah, to suck on stage matches, though. Monta, maybe. They don't even have five. Yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs>just can't believe how many of you were sleeping on device here it's unbelievable scenes and by that i mean this semi-final is going to be going the distance three maps now deciding who will be joining that grand final tomorrow of course phase dropping the ball here uh, on the second map of ancient not really what you want to see but for astralis good looks and good team play welcome back to the intel extreme masters it's elfish guy it's yanko and my name is trace 13-5 the scoreline indicative to the action that we just saw yeah, fantastic stuff. I mean, obviously, Astralis bouncing right back. They went a little bit missing toward the back end of Nuke, but everyone was on point there on Ancient, and it felt like FaZe kind of just disappeared a little bit. I mean, Brokey, he had his moments again. He's been having a really amazing playoffs run, but when it's just Brokey really doing the magic, there's just not quite enough there for FaZe. Listen, Trace, let's just get straight into it. Straight into the meat <laughs> and potatoes, <laughs> right? What, Art, FaZe, what FaZe did to Astralis on Nuke is what Astralis did to FaZe on Ancient. Okay. It was that one clutch that just took all the wind out of FaZe's sails right early on where you're thinking, look at this, it's 4-1 for FaZe, everything's going great, and all of a sudden, Bro in a 1v4, no one's really aware he's in between CT and K, right, finds four kills, and that's just such a shocking round to lose, right? You were supposed to be 5-1 up. After that, Astralis are they even going to be able to buy? Maybe they have a half buy. We're rolling again. We're owning them. We're already in the finals. We're finally lifting the curse. <laughs> Frozen. MVP and has the trophy. All of a sudden, all of that is gone. Mm. All of that is done and dusted. You are the ones who have to, you know, e-core, have a weird buy. Astralis has all the momentum. After that round, FaZe only won one more round. Yeah, it got a little little dicey. I'm not I can't say spicy. It got just straight dicey from the side of Face Clan. You you look at that round right there. Uh round 10 or excuse me, round 6 where Bro just kind of holds on. He plays it pretty well within positioning the smoke itself. Uh and then yeah, it takes a little bit of discipline as well. I mean, I think it's really good to see obviously on the behalf of Bro that he's going to be able to do that on the stage because I suppose as far as the Astralis members were concerned, he was the one where we were sort of wondering, okay, what is he going to be able to what is he going to be able to bring to the table? How is he going to facilitate the players, you know, like Yabby and Stown? Uh, obviously we've seen a lot from those kinds of guys in the past but bro rolls in and he's looking good so even then it's not necessarily a case of what can he do to facilitate others it's more so just what can he do himself what an incredible leader devices bro wasn't doing that in monty and he did it again a couple of rounds later on right astralis on a streak now but phase might come back on an eco with one save gun 4v2 situation right but bro and yabby now a little help from yabby there they step it up again and they keep winning these rounds trace i can't remember well i i don't think i've ever seen in mr12 phase lose so many clutches mm. where they had an advantage and you think it's over in the first half no of course we continue into the second as is the game itself, and which would take us probably to round more, 13, more if, I had, of, if more, I had to guess. More of the same. Again, phase now, T side, right? They get a couple of really good trades here. You're thinking it's all going to go wrong for Kerrigan. He somehow finds that kill. 4v2, right? But Device and Yabi, they don't stop, right? They understand the situation in which they're in. They have to try to find some kills. They have to try and recover in this round in order to have a chance. And I love this from Yabi. Still fighting, right? Okay, Device is close, but... Don't play too passive, you know, play to win. And yeah, they bring back the all important pistol as well. And you know, that is kind of where where things start to get a little strange too, because we even saw instances of being called wrong bomb sites after plants. Like we saw weird things happening here. You know how you know that it affected them? There was even one more clutch that happened so late we don't have it, but it was the stair one v two where we were like Rops is planting and he's open to cave. Yeah. Like, you know, when a guy like like Rops has lost his awareness, you know, phase is like a little bit mentally checked out.
Uh, can we call uh, Stayer the menace in middle, or how are we going to go about that? I mean, you can call him whatever you want at this moment. I don't think he really cares what you call him as long <laughs> as he continues to turn up in the in the server. But yeah, I mean, it, it was a very, very messy game just on all facets, particularly in that second half. I felt like everyone was kind of losing their marbles a little bit. Astralis, they tried their best to actually give FaZe a way back into that game as well. But again, FaZe just, I mean, it felt like they just sort of lost the plot a little bit. So something that they're, they're now having to probably have a conversation about out the back and try to figure out before they go into Inferno. Which is exactly where I want to take us, because there's a real chance that we do get that sort of insight, courtesy of Heku. Let's hear what Neo's up to. Oh, I got an update with Neo just right now. He said that basically when it comes to Ancient, unfortunately for FaZe, Ashraz got into their comfort zone. And we saw it like, in the second half, it was really hard for the guys to stop whatever was happening. So it's the third map. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty pretty well uh, apt put there from Heku. Uh, yeah, we look at the last map of Inferno, uh, and having gotten here, now we have a, a series where in which Astralis probably feels infinitely better. Ooh. Inferno Decider, FaZe Clan on stage against the team they're supposed to be beating. What could go wrong? I've seen this <laughs> I've seen this happen just a couple of weeks ago, Trace, but yeah, absolutely. I think FaZe, the most important thing is being able to brush this map off, right? Because it was a lot of situation in, situations in which they're actually very good at, you know, clutches, just situational counter-strike that they've messed up. So now going into Inferno, you have to just be able to reset mentally. Yeah, I mean, that's something that FaZe should be pretty comfortable doing, right? They've been here before, they've been in this situation plenty of times, so they shouldn't necessarily have too many of those, like, sort of mental fortitude issues or whatever you want to call it. The, the interesting topic for me here, actually, on uh, Inferno is going to be what is Astralis going to be able to do here? Because we haven't really seen them actually play this map at this event. They haven't played it in the last couple of months. So that's a question, obviously, for us, but that also means it's a question for FaZe. So does FaZe just worry about playing their own game here? I mean, I guess that's what they have to do, but can Astralis just come out the gates really strong and show us something surprising? And no, thanks to Brocky, we also know they haven't practiced Inferno against Astralis. It was only Vertigo where Astralis was making sweet love to them. So yeah, I, I think they'll have to rely on their own game, which is probably a good thing moving into an Inferno decider, right? And just sort of trust the players, trust the individuals. You know, we talked about you know getting Device in this IGL role, how that frees up his, his, some of his teammates here. Uh, we obviously looked at Stown and Yabi for that. Now, when it comes down to it, we've got Bro and Stayer in there doing exactly what they need to do on Ancient. And I think that's a testament to that as well. Yeah, great team all around, players contributing, but this is where you want to see Stone have a game, right? Stone find impact because we're on the stage. He's one of the more experienced players, right, after Device. So, and it was all the things about Heroic was struggling sometimes on the, in the big games, right? Or maybe he was being held back by KD and that's why he didn't want to play with him. Well, prove it now. Show it to us now, right? That this is the team, this is the environment in which you can thrive and take your team into the grand I mean, final. Now, now is the time to continue to build that storyline about this new renaissance era, if that's what you want to continue to call it, right? Astralis, they yes. have a big opportunity here on the stage. They could be the first team to stop FaZe from making it to a grand final in Counter-Strike 2. And it has to come from this map. And poetic being device versus Kerrigan, right? In different lights, that is. Yanko, how does it end up? After what you just saw, how you just experienced and witnessed what they had on Ancient, how does I, it end? I know, Trace, there was some voodoo going on on, on on Ancient, right? I think on Inferno is where we get back to normal, back to base, phase goes into grand final. Well, start of the day, I did say 2-1 to FaZe, so I'm going to have to stick to my guns on that one. I want to be a romantic. I want to believe in Astralis. But you're not a maniac. At the end of the day, you can't go past FaZe on stage in a match like this. I want to believe too, but that doesn't mean that UFOs are real. However, they are. And now we're going to be going into something just a little bit more unheard of. That's right, FaZe being challenged in map three of a semifinal. Can it be Astralis to stop them making it there? We're going to find out when we return. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. Life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of 
counter strike. Up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris three flick. Oh, the Mickey one by one sets no way. He wants to oh. <laughs> but who does it? Miles away an opponent in the grand finals that will be going down tomorrow. A third map for us here. It's Astralis. It's FaZe Clan. And a dominant ancient. I mean, truly dominant. FaZe had no chance whatsoever. Sure, Nuke, FaZe, that's your home turf. You'll take that one. But what happens here? Inferno. We haven't even seen Inferno before, Chad. Yeah, this is the thing. The black box for Astralis. It runs deep. FaZe. Win the knife. Select to start on the CT side, and they are going up against the unknown, looking for their eighth consecutive grand final since the change to CS2. Will Astralis stop them? It has to end at some point. But is it today? 100%. Look at the odds. They have leveled out dramatically over the course of this series, as Astralis have proven their metal in the playoffs. A lot of utils, so a kind of intense one from Device. 
but it's only one smoke. Uh, he's been throwing a lot of util devices. The Lion Share, I would say, on all of these executes. But is it just going to be a CT smoke and go? Will the Molotov be used over towards Coffins? They're going to fight CT. They're yeah, going to well, fight it's a good They're flash. Fighting it's a very good flash. Frozen was completely blind. He couldn't back away. And now they're hunting Carrigan. He's got no chance here. Good support from Brokey. He needed a kill there, though, really. How is Carrigan still standing? He's bought time. He's bought an awful lot of time. Brokey's down after one. It's down. Standing his ground. Could go down! Oh! Last bullet! Stunning work from Stown! And Carrigan, the last man, he was the first one to receive, and now he can come up clutch. Carrigan! Coming up clutch in the third map of the semi-finals! Found his energy today, didn't he? The crowd gets absolutely raucous off the back of that one. We'll see it from Stout as well. Check this one out. Lovely work from him. Tracking. Three, two, oh, and one left spare. Carrigan in the 1v2. Two of the sharpest tools in the Australia shed. Running him down, Stout and Yabby. It's Carrigan that's heroic. They mollied him out of position. He still survived and he clutched out the one on two. Is that a tone setter? <laughs> I mean, for sure it is. I'll answer that question for you. Well, they're going to farm them up here with the MP9s. We've spoken about FaZe post-major. They're still fighting through. They don't stop when they're tired. They stop when they're done. And Carrigan's made no secret as well that he feels like his individuals, his whole team, they've been at, you know, 75, 80. He feels like there's still an extra couple of levels to FaZe Clan. What do we see in the interview? He's saying, oh, yeah, before I got on the plane to come here to China, I'm having to tell myself, yeah, I'm not at 100%. Yeah, this is going to be difficult. But this is another tournament. Uh, this is them getting the opportunity to go to eight back-to-back -back grand finals since the change of game. They've been the most consistent team we've had in CS2. Sure, not all of the trophies have landed in the cabinet. Yeah, I mean, the hardest part is staying at the top. Well, FaZe Clan have consistently been at the top. However, the trophy lifts in those finals, a different story and a story for another day. The question is, will they find themselves there again? Well, they're learning with us. Right now, we get to see what the T side default looks like for the Danes. Who's going to be taking that banana control? Who's going to be working on the apps and boiler space? Well, at the moment, nobody's leered forward. I wouldn't be surprised to see Stare, the individual taking the banana control. Yabby looks like he's going to be heading over towards Apps. Device has called the troops rallying behind him to be up the guts of middle. There's three in defense, two porch side, one long. Yeah, it's actually romps on porch. Oh, turns the flash. And his teammates bailing him out with a lot of chip damage on that HE. Felt an awful lot of the threat there with that damage on terrain. They'll all... Scale back towards the site. So job done. Astralis have been able to push FaZe off of middle. Now they're working on the banana control. So flashes through. Fast steps from Stown. Charging top banana. That's a CT smoke currently in play. The rotation miles away. Yabby on the lurk could be deadly. It will be a B finish. Brokey's responsibility. And in the meantime, they'll break through. Oh, just as easy as that. Striding into the site. A frag each for Stair, Yambi, and Stown. And there goes as the round. A phase clan humbled into the first gun round. Did a lot of phase checking there to buy respect. So Australia's definitely going to be confident in their individuals. We know that there's some huge names in this team that can pack a punch. And take a look at the top left of your screen. Look at that web closing down on these two remaining CTs. Rops and Rain. It's about to be R rated on the A site. himself to their rain before going down but full clear of the coffers you see stair playing an awful lot large role as well in just to motivate the troops got a good frag there down up to six as well if stair is for banana control his comms are going to be instrumental as part of this t side i love the the pace at which they took that as well coming through that smoke a bit of an explosion it wasn't so telegraphed you could see it catching the cts off guard so well executed into gun round number one. Rain had 5.6K. He's dropped Brokey in AWP. He's been an X-Factor with the rifles in this series. 
is going to have to do it with the biggest gun in the server right now. It's an M4 for Rops, pistols for the rest, an MP9 for Frozen, and light util. Or it might be a shock to the system. Didn't see that one coming. Face check that one. Oh. Uh, Brokey. Might be having a mouse issue, but they're two to the good. Frozen, got to back away here. Or not. Yabi will punish Robs. They know Frozen was there as well. And he's just, whoa, he's actually walking into this. They're ready for it. Oh, but no, they're not, bro. Down to a push from Frozen. That was audacious. Some would say unnecessary, but he's definitely given him a leg up. Double kill from Frozen. A flash for a re-peak. A re-fight. Carrigan goes down. Puts there on just 19 points of health. A re-smoke. They're very brittle, aren't they? Yeah, and they're heading over towards Rain. A solo hold right now. He'll have to just burrow into the apps. He'll be able to hear this. I'd have to give away the plan. He's thinking about it. Or just trying to catch a good timing on this fight right, as they room. clear. Oh, oh, Rain! He's fumbled that one. Keeping attention drawn. Facilitates Brokey. Connect one and another. Do we dust in his sensor? Do we? Yeah, do we see a tech just to deal with that? Or maybe he had to plug the mouse in? I don't know I've either way. I've seen him do it before as well. Like, it's not the first time I've seen that kind of looking up and spinning. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> He's like a Beyblade. Well, he was the X Factor in the round, wasn't he? What? <laughs> What's going on? It's like his in... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Releasing the demons. <laughs> yeah. Three in the round from the drop door. Thank you very much, Rain. Facilitating nice. that. He's, he's going to be a playmaker this time. With the AK-47, he's coming in, clearing out top banana early, and loses his life, loses his rifle. It might fall into Stown's hands. He's trying to get a smoke retrieval. Can't find it. Oh, Can't find it. Well, a, a fourth round imminent. Brokey has in, got a bullet on him. How is he not dead? Yeah, Bro will finish what he started. That's something. He's going to lose his teammate momentarily, and it all falls to just the deagle on, bro. Well, Astralis with the first rifle round worked hard for it, then had to deal with a bit of a bogey round, not expecting the drop to AWP. Lose that, and now they're the ones financially on the ropes. So, in a bit of trouble, the Danes. Baze will have already grabbed four in a moment's time, bro. Just giving us some light entertainment. Dies from behind in three, two, one. It's three in the round for Frozen. Showing up at the right time, isn't he? That was the uh, exhibition game, as you put it. Steel helmet. Steel helmet. Well, device with the Hero AK, you can see it getting moved right in front of your very eyes, means now he has to operate with merely a deagle. Definitely has been inspired by James' approach. Yeah, he's trying to keep Fates humble, but hasn't quite gone to plan. They are juggling a lot of nades over towards B. Frozen doing his own. Carrigan asking for a few pieces from Rain. Top banana control already taken. Frozen playing Ozen? ahead? He's edging. He's across. Bro, may not be anticipating this. He does actually catch a whiff and catch a headshot. Awareness. Really nice from Bro. That nade does significant damage. They haven't gone for holes and boiler control, and that is known from Brokey alongside of Rops with that app setup we just highlighted. The biggest gap at the moment is middle. Gabby's throwing out some util. Stair's going to park in a very strong position, top banana, to call out any key information. If they go short side, they will go back into that Brokey AWP. He's in a great spot to get one fall. 50 seconds, so with that smoke already thrown out towards Abs, it seems the device wants to maneuver its forces back towards B. Carrigan still has an incendiary to stall this out at the B bomb site. He's on the boost, so if they go with the same initiation they did before, oh, he'll be able to get it off now. Incendiary in four, rain pushing. He flashes himself through the smoke. Stair to be cleared here, nice taps. Good restraint, Rain looking for the multi. It's just two. It could be insufficient. Yeah, it has to be the save. Inferno still 
one of the hardest maps to get the retakes, especially if the rotation hasn't even started. So Broki and Rops will hold on to their goods. Sure, they lose a round, but are still two in the lead at this current juncture. This is the opening kill from Bro. Very good awareness of what Frozen might be getting up to. A necessary trade from Device to make sure Rain doesn't activate for more. Yeah, lovely crosshair placement on Bro there. You saw it play to perfection very quick. The Inferno third map decider. Hmm. Let's hope that it delivers. We saw it getting an awful lot more play once we made it into the elimination and playoff stages of the Copenhagen Major just a week ago. We were crowning a champ. Yeah, and yet, well, unable to qualify without device IGL, without Pro on the roster, now finding themselves in the first playoffs under their new leadership. And this is their first real test, right? The group stage. They played against strong Counter-Strike names. I, honestly, the most convincing for me was making VP like game look comfortable. Like they didn't even, you know, we always say VP all the rounds, paid blah, by blah, the blah. round. Not, not for Astralis. No, no. They, they made that look real comfortable, real cushy. All right, well, they have phase again on the financial seesaw, but can they punish? Can they capitalize? Look at him. This is Device feeling himself, leading the charge. So with vision obscured on rocks, pressure, multitudes, oh, down and out of bullets. It's frozen to keep it level. Either team wanting to give up control for free. Rops is about to be under pressure, arch side. Yabby playing in the fade. Device is there for the trade. Okay, he's press cross that placement right now. Oh. oh. These two have had some cheeky smoke jewels. Go back to nuke, ramp. True. Is Brokey re-aggressing? They need info. Yeah, and that's what he's pursuing. Device and Yabby are anticipating this. Yabby covering Device on the hold. Good conversion, but it will cost him his life, and look how quick oh Device God. is. He's taken both smokes. Is he going to throw them both out? That puts them completely boxed. Brokey versus three. Brokey surrounded. Knows what's up. Can't do anything at the hands of Bro. Pushing in, causing the pressure, and causing a round conversion. It's going to be a one-round game, folks. They did capitalize, so that uh, Tita of the finances has been taken advantage of. Lost bonus into the next, only 1,900. If they do retain the rifle on Frozen and Rain. And Rain would love to get something a little bit better than a Famous, won't he? But I uh, yeah. don't think he has that option available. Kind of feel a bit hard done by there, having to use so many bullets in his dual Yabby there. He just got run down. I likely to see phase force. Rops will be able to buy a silenced M4 and armor. Brokey can get himself in with an MP9. And they can drop something across to Carrigan. So still an opportunity for phase to remain threatening, but is that going to be the decision made? Is a timeout necessary to discuss it? As freeze time ticks on down. It is called Neo, allowing them to have the discussion for the chunk of the 20 seconds. And he is actually conferring, not just letting them call their way through this. Hey, boys, maybe we consider our options. Raga, Chance on the other side also issuing some orders. Doesn't look like that silence down for investment from Rops is the decision. have kept it relatively light behind the saved AK, the Famous, and now Romps into an MP9 with armor. They're setting up the deep mid smoke from Carrigan. So will Romps, with a good spawn, try and charge down middle? How are Astralis going to respond to this constrictive play? He is charging. They've been throwing the smoke consistently. Time. Rob's trying to make a play around it. Safe from the clear of the HE initially. Oh, device is aware of the possibility. Yeah, for sure he is. Hard with the AWP though. Could go wrong. Rob's gives it up. And he's going to be cleared by Yabby. So good awareness. Diligent stuff from Astralis' T side. And Yabby had support with the second mid hole. Bro on the bridge. Meant that Yabby could be freed up to worry about a few more of those pesky corners now. 
So they take this B space, a flash forward to apply pressure, but they're doing it relatively dry. Jiggling out as we can see the frozen AK-47 in play towards the back of the site. Carrigan's also holding a smoke, so if a molly lands, we'll be able to extinguish. This could still get a bit frisky. Certainly with this angle from Frozen. There's the molly. Oh, okay, <laughs> well, it's down, he's smart. He's sharp. And he's got another. Only one from Brokey's USP, but that's to be cleared. You can see the push here from Stair. Oh. Wow, Brokey, Brokey! Oh! Ridiculous! Only a USP, and he's taken down three. The bomb's ticking, rains miles away, but heroic from Brokey. He's had, he's done it with a rifle. He's done it with a USP. I don't know if he's yet to do it with the AWP oh, in no, this series. No, early, early on in this, he brought out the AWP from Rain. Gets three kills, nothing that insane. <laughs> Put that in the mix. Jesus. Craziness. Got those headies on lock right now, Brokey. Wow. Well, it doesn't result in the round, but it results in an awful lot of damage and Rain inflicting a little bit more. They picked up the AWP, they'll be able to scavenge that one for device. Bit of run, boy! Bro be dead. So huge damage. An AK, an MP9 and a Famous are able to take down four of the Astralis members, but we tie things up. They'll be happy with that. Oh, I mean, Brokey certainly will be, but yeah, Robs, you can see, gets cleared out. Good awareness, good setup for the start. This. Did not go to plan. Oh, what a great clear from Stout. It's all Brokey. He's the conversation. This one here, this was incredible. Body shot, head shot, then another. I mean, truly. Thank goodness for Bro, otherwise things would have been absolutely <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> well, keeping smiles on the faces under pressure on the stage. Yeah. Stare and Bro newer to this type of environment. That's true too. Hadn't give that too much of a consideration because it hasn't really been visible, hasn't been notable. Certainly not an ancient. Device demands the boost. They retain top banana control. That allows Stown to edge, walk through, grab barrels, play anti-flash. Brokey, last time he was on this line, the way Astralis have been taking the face towards the mouth of banana has been without a flash this time. Now he posts, and still, Brokey gets the better of device. Orp on Orp. So oh, good. Well, Device's responsibilities aren't over. Good exchange of Util in mid. They can still retain control, so as we trade key pieces, both have been able to hold on despite Map control utility has to be the Bigo. Rotation on the way from Carrigan. He has a flash. Keep your eyes on that. Yeah, it's Brokey as well. They know the AWP was beat, but is he still there? That's the question. The flashes are good. That's even better from Frozen. Puts Doe both down in combination with Brokey. It's Frozen on the defense. Triple kill, shut down, maintains the AWP for Brokey. I think Yanko the other day was talking about a rotator on this map. Their best weapon is a flash, and you saw it right there. Carrigan had three flash assists. Right, it really allows your B defenders to play ahead and catch them as they're pushing in towards the site. So a great job from Carrigan, but your players still need to hit the shots. Nice. So Frozen and Brokey continuing to find this impact, both up to double digits, alongside of Stown in the server, the three of them with 10. And that damage of the USP from Brokey just two rounds ago, that is being felt immediately. Take a look at a Deagle, a couple of Tech Nines, a Galil, and, well, some lost utility device. Lost his keys. Oh, no. Oh, it's gone. Well, he's dropped $400 down the side. Or has he? Ladies and gentlemen. The world's strongest bottle. <laughs> it's going nowhere. Well, how important was that molly? Well, it has resulted in a very comfortable Carrigan. Maybe not going to be molotov out. <laughs> they have been quite technical with a lot of their executes, so... Does that either take away the ease of map control, or does that make the finish a little bit harder? Well, it's going to be an apt pop with three. Currently a void towards pit. Rops to... Oh! Oh! Carrigan just takes the fight head they on. They have to go now. Yeah, Rob's not Rob's, blind. He's got a good angle. Tracks perfectly onto Yabby. Needed a multi. It's Brokey to pick up the pieces. 
Good shooting. Stair drops into the pit. They're ready for device. Too easy. Comfortable conversion, but a bomb plant. A bomb plant. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe yes. They're in trouble. There's no way out. Pressure from short. They're running him down. The trades. It's going to be oh. there. It's a nice attempt. He'll take one of them, or two of them in total. But it's a sixth for the CT side of FaZe Clan. They're looking solid here on the third map of this semi final. I think seven is a lock. Well, here it is as they're leaving spawn. Okay. Well, I don't know how much it really cost them. Yeah, I don't think that would have saved them from that uh, lockdown on A. It's been a tough T side though, hasn't it? They it might has. only walk away with four in total. It is just going to be an eco. They'll go for a buy. Carrigan to mow him down and Banana gets nothing done. Frozen under pressure. Good incendiary. That really just stops them in their tracks. They don't have a smoke to extinguish. They need the smoke for the cross. They can reset, but if they go back, look at the push down mid. Oh, yeah, you're walking straight into this Robson Rain setup. Interesting. They'll give Yabi the P215, just park him. And the rest, anticipating CT aggression, they're not completely unprepared for this. Jumping across, Robs and Rain. Robs will have a look. And there is an AK. There was an AK. Robs with the spray. And Stout. We know where you are. We've got the bomb in our grasp. There's nothing for Stown here. And it should be another one for Rops. He'll leave with four. The disrespect or the confidence depends on how you want to frame it. Knowing how he's up against unarmored opponents, just swings back out with the A4. Mauls them in middle before they can start really playing the round. So decent to get the opening kill, but that's all Estrada's going to get. And feeling the pressure, Rugger into the first tactical time out of the first half. Device, listing a tent leap. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, a big round in the grand scheme. 7-5 sounds a whole lot better coming into second half. You win the pistol, game on, but the void of an 8-4 on Inferno, no less. This is a map all too familiar for FaZe. Their CT side locked down. How many has it been? Three in a row. Of course, with that eco conversion on top. Might it be four. The AWP available. We're going to go double. Brokey and Carrigan equipping that. So maybe going to be looking to fire off a shot, get them trying to avoid the AWP. Rops with a touch of aggression to start. This is his typical flight path. Well, he does choose to aggress. And oh, Car oh, Carrigan does not impress. Caught off, cut down. Good work from Stown. Forces the rotate of rain. Rops will have to tuck in as well. Smokes will fade. Oh, very preemptive on the incendiary there. Well, the AWP has found a lot of success over towards B. Now, Brokey out of the play for now. Okay, Nade, solid. They are just congregated in Banana for what feels like a finish. But they're very aggressive. And they're nailing the first at least. Rain back, turn, it's there to find him. Astralis have broken through. Have to go for the retake now, don't they? Yeah, what have you got for us, Brokey? Robs. They have some utility. Clear the smoke. That's the plan. And oh, he's missed it. Goes for a quick one onto Sturt. Gotta get many more opportunities like that. Certainly not. I think the hard work is done in our final round of this. First half. Rops. Straight through the smoke. They Maybe have to there's push. more to go off the flash. Broke safe from it. Covers nicely. There's no secret where Brokey lies. And there's no time. Astralis. Close that gap convincingly. Down goes Brokey. Call it five. Okay, game on. Game face is on. Still no answer as to who meets Mouse in that grand final. Stay tuned.
grand finalists in every single Counter-Strike 2 tournament they attend. It's FaZe Clan looking to do it again. And on the other side is Astralis. A change that has immediately brought them closer to being in contention for those trophy lifts. A semi-final upon arrival. Here in China, no less. This time they were here, they were the champions. Device, the only individual remaining from that roster back in 2019. Beijing, Haidan, 100 Thieves, a different time. They would love to be able to get this pistol. Carrigan stole a CT pistol away with a beautiful one on two. Yeah, to leave with both, that would be a key indicator, key contributor. Once again, back on his signature P250, Carrigan. Starts to feel very comfortable with that and a whole set of util for stare. You can see he's left a cache of nades. They're applying pressure top banana. They use the decoy to help clear out. Another decoy. Still trying to bait out util. Stoic is there. That was the fight Rain was waiting for. And oh, and a quick, immediate adjustment. Taking him down. Rops combines. It could be another pistol for FaZe. Maybe it should be. Oh, Yabi covers. But down goes Device. It's 2 on 4. Wrapping. Yabi, so much to do. Going back B. Yeah, that will get Stare. Head to head. Frozen dead. Can they turn this around? This would be something special from Stare. Ahead of the molly. Proactive. Cut down. Good work from Brokey. And it looks like it is going to be another phase pistol. Yabi with an opportunity to disrupt. He closes the gap. Carrigan falls off to establish. Oh, a recovered nade. It does find Yabi. He's saving. He wants to hold on to that Kevlar. So at least in the force by for the next, he has something to work with. But FaZe, they grab eight. And this is really, Rain with the opener is great because then there's so much focus on him. Look at Robs, he gets a free kill. Stan not even looking, not even aware, trying to deal with that of Rain. And you can understand Stair, he knows in this situation, they're down in such a disadvantage, has to play ahead of the util, tries to make a miracle happen. Did great to be prepared for the Frozen first. Rain might find him on the hunt, getting close. The block from Rain to take the Kevlar, no. Gives a kill over, Yabby stays alive. Put someone 2600 as well. Hey, why not? Yeah. Just back the winning team. That's one way to always have a good day. <laughs> G2 didn't quite make it. Well, we've been talking about Device, his stats, his contributions. Right now, three kills. Map three, pressure on. Down three rounds, four spy. This could still get Astralis back in the game. But yeah. they have to put up some real resistance. These T side second rounds, they are terrifying. AK, Galils. You've got nothing to your name but a couple of pistols. An SMG. Stan throws out the nade. It's well placed. Damage. It's very well placed. Carrigan and Frozen now. A bullet to the head from pretty much anything in the server. They're dead. So the three you've got to worry about, Rain, Brokey, and Rops. Pressure towards B will bait out some utility. An exchange of smokes. Two more smokes where that came from. And they're not going B at all. Are you going to play ahead of this? Yeah, this is going to be very testing. He's made no secret of his push. Tucks the nades down. Deleted with the pre-fire. All on bro. Yeah, what can you do? Misses his first, nails the second, taking down Rain. He'll be swung on. He knew it was coming, but Brokey's too quick with it. He had one more. They might consider going for this type of a retake, but Device, Stare, and Yabi over towards B, marooned. The bomb goes down nine for FaZe. Very convincing. And everyone's present. You know, this is how the score ideally reads. 13, 12, 11, and 10. You were uh, talking about FaZe and all of these finals. We can read off the laundry list as we change the CS2 Sydney event number one. They picked that one up, down under, over complexity. Thunder pick online. We'll still give it to them. Yeah. CAC, Shanghai, China, over Mao's when Frozen was still in that jersey.
Oh, we could be setting ourselves up for another Mao's versus Faye's grand final in China. Four finals, world finals, Katowice, a loss to Spirit, and then the major. Just a week ago, they went in as favorites against Na'Vi. And it was Bit who walked away with his, with his second. Damn, that's, uh, that's an achievement. A very short list of those that have done that. Two different teams, two different games. And an opportunity for some resistance from Astralis. Or a phase really going to be sailing through. The only way this gets exciting in round 15 is going to be something to do with stair or device. But they've silently boosted into Boiler. He can't stay here forever. Yeah, he's got that internal timer. He's aware. He'll back away. Frozen low again. Yeah, a bit of a nade magnet is frozen today. I'm going to limp around round 15. Last round was the A finish with Carrigan leading the way, finding the entry onto Stown. This time he's surging up Banana. Very procedural. Isolates the potential sandbag player. Nade towards Yabby. And it forces out the smoke, so 55. Broki's already cocking potential CT smoke of his own. Looks like Frozen's going to stay and maybe try and sell something B. He's been gifted the P250. Tuck in top Banana. Coming back, 40 seconds, Rop still investigating out Boiler. Looks like it has to be B now. Yeah, and they've managed to get Device over here as well towards Emo. So there is something to be done here, especially if Yami can disrupt. Not today! It's frozen! Just the P250 manages to find an opening. Rain builds upon it. Turning back. Ooh, but yeah. Bro's still in the site. There is a world where Bro with an unarmored D could do something. Plant. Device, he's done well. Just deny the plant. He won't be cleared. Rops is not going to get there in time. Nine, eight. This is a fumble. This is a fumble. No time to plant. And they've won the round by virtue of the clock. Astralis will take that. That's a little bit of a slip up from FaZe Clan. I'm mismanagement. Getting denied as they head over towards that B site. The late rotation towards A. Bro, not biting down, not rotating over after Frozen does this. Low on HP, rips off Yabby's head. Device. Tussling top banana as well, but it is this shot. Takes down Rops. Brokey cannot plant default. Jumps wide. No time. Impact again from Bro. A lifeline for Astralis in map three. Yeah, lifeline indeed. They phoned a friend and, and then Bro picked up. Now aggression. They want to twist the knife. Feed the tilt. Beast. For FaZe Clan. They were on cruise control for a while there. The manual breathing. You no know, devices AWP is in the mix. How does that change things going forward for FaZe? Still have four smokes remaining for the finish. That is one way to completely remove the contributions. and Bro in combination on this short side, having to deal with the leaks out apps and up short. Happy still playing for info, top banana. Stare essentially just supporting with a flash in his hands, but we're at the 50-second mark. Yeah, nice angle here from Device. So if they test long, he should be good for one. Minimum. Has to be smoked off. Yeah, he's ahead of it. Oh, knife out! Didn't go down on a re-peak. His audacious cover for the flash. Oh. It should delay him. What's happened here? Oh, no. I think he just got disconnected for a second Double there. tapped. He very well might have. Hit the Windows key. Still, it's down one. Round is on. Not anymore. Rain has found Bro. And phase into the site. What are you to what are you to do here? You got Yabby. Yeah, he's backing away. Oh dear. The thing is, he moved immediately back, After. and because he got put under so much pressure, I'm not saying I know what happened, but that looks like a situation where you see the smoke coming, you try and jump ahead to get to the play, you miss the shot, now you're frazzled, you're trying to leap to get back, you're mashing the keyboard somewhat. A little pinky maybe. Maybe, maybe you know, I, I, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. Obviously that, that look, I saw him looking away from his monitor for a second. That's costly. 
Uh, very much so. Well, the lifeline taken away immediately. Phase 10. Looking to keep that conversion rate of playoff runs. A third map Inferno. We'll see it here and again. Misses the shot under so much pressure, right? Think about Bob. how... And then immediately starts moving again right now. Well, yeah, which is why the old So he didn't disconnect. Ooh, okay. Oh, there it is. Well, that tells me he probably didn't ult tap. Yeah, we're gonna get a tech pause. There's a monitor. That one might uh, be the hardest device monitor here we've seen. Sometimes it's a love tap. That was um, the opposite of love. Pure hate. How do you shake that one off? How do you shake that one well, off? Well, we want it to be an in-game leader. You have to deal with the pressure. We know that Device is an individual who can succumb to that type of tilt. That's not the first time. Maybe if you tune in for the first time, you will have seen that. The tournament's gone so well for them up into this semi-final in the group stage. They only lost 26 rounds over five maps of play. Now they're under the pressure. They lost a map. They responded on Ancient. It looked great. Yeah. They win a round due to time and some great blocking on a lighter buy. They have an advantage to try and lock phase out, get on top of the finances, get them back into map number three. And that happens. You still have enough for another buy round. You're still in a position where you can contend. But is the mental there? Is yeah. it in check? I mean, you know, far better than I, that when your, your leader's tilted, the, the calls can be affected. Well, you're on the CT side. He's having a tough time, wasn't he? You're had right. like, what, four kills? You're right. Yeah, that too. I mean, we also can, you can attest that that too plays a part. Especially when you're used to being a star player. And you've, you know, you've come in with a, with a game plan. You've come in with a mission. Your objective was to kind of start strong. <laughs> and you lost both pistols. A Carrigan one on two. Start strong. I was thinking more at, on a tournament level, as in you show up. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, and they have. They certainly did. But here is a, a, a real, like, a, a twist. A twist in the story. Like you said, this is the first time we've seen Astralis tested in the as a whole. And, and the other conversation, we were definitely having this during the uh, Astralis versus Phase group stage game. When the stakes are at the all-time high for Phase, you, as we mentioned, seven grand finals consecutive, it's not that you don't get out of bed for a group stage game. It's that the pressure of these type of environments is where you do your best work. Yeah. So when you are just going into just another game, against another team who didn't play the major, was able to boot camp, prep an entire strat book, be able to prepare for you as you're still coming down from the lowest of lows. Hey, I can't believe they practiced for one day, right? I, I cannot believe that at all. The, the, the fact that FaZe, you lose the major final, I'm not plugging the mouse and keyboard back in for a week. They had to get on a plane four days later, fly to the other side of the world, deal with jet lag, it's been hitting everybody, screw their head back on tight to grind out the lower bracket. That's what makes it so so impressive and admirable that they even got to this point. I truly thought that, you know, it would be a very easy loss to dismiss an early exit here with all of that said. Looks like he's back in. You can see the buys have completely taken shape. I did say there was finances to go again, to contend. It's about screwing their head back on. The in-game leader, the newly appointed. He's got his choice weapon again. Yeah. AWP, saves Galil, MP9 for Stair, M4s for Yabby and Stown, Diffuse Kits, Utility. It's not futile. Broke Elite. More than one of his five a day. He's had about three or four of his five a day. His impact throughout this series has been fantastic. 13 kills in this map. You were highlighting the contribution of the stars. 
a phase. Yeah, I mean, everyone's present. Everyone is present and correct. A new challenger emerging, though, for FaZe. You know, there's a, there's a list now of teams that are, are vying to, to disrupt their consistency in making finals. And here we stand in the final half of the third map of another semi-final for FaZe. Do they keep this up? They have got an advantage. It's 10 to 6 now. Just three rounds separates FaZe from an eighth consecutive grand final. Well, after the extended tech, Attack is being called from Astralis. They're second. Raga had a lot to say, probably reminding them, we're not out of this yet. This is not done. We win this, we win the next, their money's wiped. It's only a two-round game. MR12 can get away from you quickly. Astralis, Here we to go. get back into things, or FaZe will be running away with this. Yeah, a deep breath. A call made. Will Astralis put up a fight into round 17? Monitors punched. Desk slammed. And we go back into the fray. Carrigan burrows in deep to contain middle. Damn. Frozen the nade magnet continues. He hasn't been able to play a single round. But, I mean, isn't that just more testament to his contributions? He's managed to stay at 14 frags despite swallowing nades round after round. Yeah, and the fact that he still has been able to grab top banana control is very key. This is key. This down and bro crossfire. He's mollied. He's mollied. He's mollied. Does he get out? Yeah, I think so. Counter incendiary support. So there's a good idea as to what's going on here. Bro playing this tiny gap. Need info. They have no space, no top mid, no banana. Oh, they're playing towards the long smoke. Now, Stown's just playing a jiggle defense. He just wants info. But Stown's got it. Oh, that smoke. It, it channels them. Anyway. They, they walk through it, you surely a dead man. Not with stare down and stout on the reload. Carrigan! Oh, wow. The hero phase need for this one. It's only Yabby with contribution back. It couldn't have gone any better. Not Rain going for this. Finds him through the smoke, so Stown spam is punished as well. Then he doubles up as well towards the mini pit. Oh, that's brutal phase in form. Oh, now you have to try and hold on to this AWP and A1S. Something we neglected to highlight, but third map Inferno. Last time Carrigan was one of them, he did. He struggled to find anything. Bit of a blowout, wasn't it? But look at him here, making plays and being rewarded for them. This time, Stown overstepping with the spray. Caught on the reload, round falls apart. Frozen's even hunting. Need everything. This kill, very important for Yabby. Elfish brought this up on the desk, right? FaZe are going to have to come in and play their game because they don't know what to expect from Astralis on the map, and they're doing so. Great response to the Stown smoke. You know, that didn't change the plan at all. Didn't it was almost essentially the what they wanted yeah. anyway, right? So it gave them an even greater yield. <laughs> That's cheeky. <laughs> they put his face on some snake oil. The memes transcend. Yeah, I guess so. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, Astralis. They're copping it left, right, and center yeah, guys, at the moment. Guys, they're pulling no punches here. The Stralis have gone all in. They fought behind the safe guns. Device has still got that AWP. Still only got four kills. That smoke is really cheeky as well. Needs to change. By throwing it deep towards mid, it... Oh, no. Nate swallowed. Device. Got to get out of there. His presence noted by the HE sound cue. Just can't see the pace as a phase. Oh, it's good spam. Stown timed it well. Brought Carrigan to 50. The thing is, they can always still finish on either side. Like, phase haven't made up their mind. Yeah, Just... but they've taken full brackets as they look to take top banana. They're browsing the menu at their leisure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a well-timed incendiary. It, it, it slows the crawl B. Bomb's still on back of Brokey, and Device could give him that head-to-head. -head. It's not in his best interest. More dam nade damage this time onto Carrigan. He does give him the fight. One of the defenders down. It was the Orpa as well. Now a 2-2 split of the defensive. Carrigan's calling the B finish. He, loves he wants to be flashed through. And Wolf gets better for them with Stown gone. 
Rain applying pressure. Yabby instead, and Owatsu on the other side of this smoke there. Gonna kiss in the smoke. He walks straight past him. Have they worked it out? No one's aware. No one's looking. He's gonna get at least one. Can't adjust. But there's the 12, folks. So he's one round away from continuing their grand final dreams. Continuing and making it eight. Well, you've got Astralis right where you want him. There's Device again. Steps out, needs info. Reeks of desperation. This has gotten away from them. And you just have to return to the pistol round to start this map. A Carrigan one on two clutch as the tone setter. To get themselves seven CT sided rounds. They've kept Astralis to just one thus far. And again, they have to shove all in, invest all of their pennies. It's just MP9s. Device wanted to be the in game leader. This team is still very fresh. They've showed better form than the previous roster had. Yeah. Positive signs. You want to go all the way to the grand final? And to be the man, you got to beat the man. He's on the other side of the server right now, Mr. Finn Anderson leading the team. Ouch. Ouch, there it is. Frozen finally succumbs to the nades. And in a crucial juncture of the game, Carrigan, what are you doing? He nearly gets away with absolute murder. He runs into Yabby. It's a big one back from Robs. Could this really go wrong? No, not on Stown's watch. He'll take the upgrade, take the frag. Brings down Rain. Pit occupied, but bomb, bomb. Roki needs some combat orping here. Good Molotov to force down into the fight. Got the Tech 9 for it. Can't do it. And so a seventh round with only MP9s takes shape. They will take it. And this would really, this would be very telling if Astralis could somehow claw their way to overtime from here with all of what has transpired on this map, that would say something about what this team is capable of in the grand scheme. Lovely double nade to start. It's about time they finished Frozen up with some nades. Right. Huh? Half HP more often than not. Oh, the first of what is going to have to be many. Yeah, at Five least they get their weapons out. on the out. trot required. Yeah, well, hey, it's not the first time Device has had an orb. How many shots has he hit? That's true too. Carrigan can call whatever he wants as the finishing blow. This is going to be Poppy mid. Device to be tested. Falls away. He's, He's made some heroic plays from short side. Hasn't he? <laughs> I just got a flashback. <laughs> thing is, they're just losing so much space on the map. Here he comes again. Yeah, not deterred by losing the previous duel. Rob's rarely overextends without a trade potential. And that's an ambitious oh, start. How has he done that? Kept level. Ooh. Oh, audacious overstep. Stair will go down. Is this really how it ends? With his knife in his hands, Frozen catches him. Bro goes down and FaZe. Flood into the A side. Yabby down and FaZe take an eighth consecutive grand final. Aragon likes the way that one feels. What a strong finish. The in game leader leading from the front. Found his energy today. Great recovery of form. Burn out, burning the candle at both ends. Two weeks in Copenhagen, a day of practice off the China. And still FaZe Clan reigns supreme in the semi-final, taking down a hot Astralis, a new Astralis. It was an impressive feat to get this far, to take down the names you did. But FaZe, they're called the big bad boss for a reason. And they continue. You could have made every excuse under the sun of why it could have come Chung done here for FaZe in Chengdu. But they hold on. They secure another grand final and Mao's await. I'm a player, and FaZe Clan! How do you play Wow, we will give you a little bit of Rain, you win this match and you go to IEM Chengdu final. How do you feel? I feel it's really good to be back here in China and uh, thank you guys so much for being the awesome crowd you are. I love you guys.
and this time you face you face the mouse and last time is say say this time have different or you can take this trophy of course we beat them once before we beat them again Woman Chan Chan Yi Ji Hai Face Clan All right Face Clan Face Clan All right Win It's your time Sign on the camera Well, FaZe have to do, they have to dig deep and they find it on map three, Inferno, going their way. And of course, for Astralis, this is the run that ends with a semi-final appearance. That's correct, Amundo, isn't it, Yanko? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some unfortunate circumstance, very frustrating. Nope. Uh, third map for Astralis has to be set, device especially, but that's something that, uh, you know, you just have to deal with. You have to take it as you go and FaZe was able to come out on top in the end. The run doesn't end here. The run does not end nope. here. We kept questioning, will it finally be the time for FaZe to miss out on a final in Counter-Strike 2? But not in China is the answer. Eight consecutive finals. You know, that speaks a volume, but I'm not even sure what volume it might speak, Yanko. Ah, it's crazy. I mean, it speaks of the consistency of FaZe Clan, right? Yeah. And the quality of their players and uh, the coaching staff, everyone involved, right? It's very difficult to be within striking distance of lifting a trophy, right? Across different lineups, across different changes to the game, mm -hmm. right? Other, your competitors are making changes uh, to, to be better, to improve themselves, right? So FaZe, once again, in a position, but it's not gonna matter un unless they get it done, right? Because that's what FaZe Clan is about. It's about winning those championships, not being second best. Yeah, because if you're not first, you're last. Isn't that right, Jordan? In theory, that's right. But I think it comes down to really that uh, skill, like, flaw, I guess, that FaZe brings, right? Their worst game generally is still better than a lot of teams' best games, and that's, I think, where they do manage and to get that And you'll see it. It's never form. perfect, you know? It's, all, it's always true. into the quarters first. It's never yeah. straight to yep. semis. It's never, you know, two O's all the way. It's always a little bit messy, but they get it done. That's the most important thing. It does beg a question, right? Because we're talking about a series of second-place finishes, and, you know, you're almost there. Uh, we have seen teams with this weird sort of bridesmaid tale go on at the end. We saw it with Heroic, the old Heroic, after uh, Rio, I believe it was. So is I mean, how does that stop? Or, I mean, how does that not happen to a phase plan? It's tough. Rain was here. We asked him. Yeah. He couldn't really put the finger on it. It's just a little bit more focus, a little bit more energy for that final game, right? Like because sometimes different players go missing at different points in these in these finals. So it's about just everything coming together at the right time for FaZe. I mean, maybe it comes down to just a little bit of time off as well. Like they've just been go, 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 go this entire year. And Obviously, you get to this point in the tournament. We've been talking about it the entire tournament long. They've been tired since basically the day they showed up. And again, here they have to play another long best of three that goes to three maps. And they're going to go into that grand final tomorrow again, probably quite fatigued. So maybe it does come down to a bit of time off and then they come back and stronger than ever. But also commiserations. So for Astralis, mm -hmm. right, they've already probably done way more than uh, anyone would have placed them to do here in China. I think that can go without saying. And then also you look at uh, just some very unfortunate events for Device. So with the Molotov behind the texture, you've got the whole thing where it looked like an alt tab. We don't really know. We may never know. The monitor's not going to be happy about that. Yeah, I think it was a really good first showing mm -hmm. from Astralis, right? They're going to be disappointed that they didn't go further. They had their chances in this series. But we see that the people are more comfortable, right? All the players are more comfortable. We'll see with device. The one thing is, like, regardless of, of what happened, right, the frustrations, you, you need to overcome that. We know it's a signature device monitor punch, right? But when you're the in-game leader, you can't allow that to get to you to the same extent, right? You are, he's a human being. He's not a robot, yeah. right? Like, uh, he has emotions, but you have to find ways to keep it going. Yeah, look, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same kind of storyline as what we were selling for Liquid, right? They've done what they came to do, essentially. They came, they didn't necessarily fully conquer, but they did prove themselves that they've got a decent level to bring. It seems like the system is working, the individuals are happy, everyone seems to be 
basically a team again, right, in Astralis. And so that is a positive sign going forward. And I feel like this is really the base platform that they now want to build off of. The foundations are solid. Now it's time to, you know, build that house, Trace. Like put the bricks on top of the blocks and top of the concrete. Yeah, the foundations are there. Uh, and it does speak a little bit of a testament to everybody involved, especially, you know, we talk about Device and seeing some of his stats where he was a IGL before, not anymore, and how that all pans out and plays into effect. So, you know, it does tide well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it pans out moving forward, right, when the sample size is bigger, right, and they get uh, some more games under Tier 1 opposition under their belt. But, you know, the first foray into in-game leading for Device and, and the first uh, big tournament went well. I mean, it's refreshing, isn't it, right? He hasn't been necessarily, I guess, at his A game for quite a while now. There, there was that whole NIP departure as well and what's Never been happened. going on there. So, you know, it's kind of nice to see him potentially not... We're not saying he's back at the top just yet, but I feel like they're on the right track, you know? And I think that's kind of what everyone wants to see, especially from a player like Device. So it will be fantastic to see if that ends up being the case later on. It also looks good, you know, when you're looking in the Department of Stair, right? Uh, and some of the, like, Bro, for example, or even just activating Stone and Yavi. This does uh, lead me to believe that there's a chance going forward. Yeah, I was calling for Stone to, you know, just go ahead and, and grab it, right? And, <laughs> and he did have a decent game, but, you know, lose both pistols, the game just goes sideways for you uh, in a lot of different moments and just one of those games. Yeah, I mean, he almost did, right? He was looking pretty good, actually, in that first half, but unfortunately, just not enough, right? When FaZe gets rolling, FaZe gets rolling, and they're a very tough team to deal with. Yes, they are. In fact, they're not here to talk to us right now. I can assure you that much. It's going to be Kerrigan. Finn joins us on the desk. Uh, oh, boy, Finn, uh, how are you feeling today? A little bit better than yesterday. <laughs> yeah. um, I was surprised that we didn't go, uh, didn't lose a few rounds in the end down Inferno. So it felt kind of strange to finish it off without uh, much excitement. <laughs> yeah. Look, man, well, uh, I want to start this. I know we're going to start in Inferno. Let's just start in the, on your little <laughs> pistol antics there on Inferno. Uh, Inferno. Walk me through a little bit of what happened there. I think it was uh, strange. I think there was missing a CT smoke, and they execute kind of a strange. We knew one guy was ruins and. I, at some point, I thought it was a fake, like the way I was running around, and then in the end, it ended one and two. And yeah, uh, I'm always without armor, you know? So running around shooting, and uh, <laughs> that's the best way to play without armor. So I have a lot of experience with that. So, so it's a good one tap there. Um, so it felt good to start off the game like that. Yeah, back on the stage, <laughs> Inferno Decider. Didn't go so well last time. Oh. Must have felt great to already, you know, Double your kills in the pistol round? Yeah, I mean, wow. uh, going straight to the point. Uh, I mean, uh, I think uh, that's one off in the way the thing went down Inferno. I think now we played super great, right? So I'm not scared of our Inferno since we switched me and Frozen on B side. Uh, I think our CD side has been very stable and Rain is doing a great job on A, right? So it's a map we've been very comfortable on uh, since uh, Frozen joined. And I think that showed today as well, uh, besides that one time. Another grand final for you guys, obviously, as well. So that's a big conversation point. I think that's eight in a row. And we've talked to you guys as well about the fatigue factor and how you guys are pretty tired after the major and all these matches that you've played. But how do you guys keep this like skill floor so high? Because I feel like that's where you have a big difference against other teams. The, the level which you guys can bring in your worst games tends to be a lot higher than most other teams. Yeah, I think we have a blunder here and there uh, on maps. Red Energy, I think uh, the way Astralis kind of like, it's the first time I feel like they kind of destroyed the mentality of our team. Like the way the rounds were ending, fast A rush, fast B rush on Ancient, it was kind of rough to, to handle because normally it comes down to duels and we need to be strong there. So we have to win, uh, see what, uh, what happened there. But I think I told the guys, let's just keep focusing. That was uh, a map that they can, they can rush and uh, end in early situations. But Inferno is way different. You can't play really fast on the map unless you are really... Uh, playing aggressive banana, but that's uh, that's rough. Um, so I think it's just a map that suits us better. And I think what I've seen from Device so far, not a lot of mid round calling, but getting early situations, and then they played rounds from there where they're playing really great uh, mid round situations uh, from the from the clutches. So uh, I, let me ask you a little bit about your teammate in Frozen, right? He seems to like to catch grenades uh, a lot, actually. Uh, is that frustrating for the guy? Does he vocalize yeah. that at all? Yeah, I think yeah, he said after uh, first Antigo, he's low. And then the second round after, he said he's low again. And then I think Neo said, I think they prepared some anti for you. And then two rounds later, he got double nated again. So, <laughs> nice. uh, yeah. So I think also the issue is that we haven't seen them play Inferno, right? So we have no idea. And when you're a banana player's T, all you do is watching how they take banana, and we had no idea. Um, so it's obviously a hard uh, game for, for Frost to find the impact, but I think we found impact other side of the map, and we're moving around uh, better. And yeah, this is how it is as a banana player sometimes. So, Mouse tomorrow, right? They finally got over that hump. 
uh, in the playoffs, some initial thoughts about the matchup? Yeah, I think uh, every time playing Mouse is an exciting game. Uh, I mean, obviously the the match have been one sided lately, um, but I always believe that <laughs> you you always gonna have one sided. At some point, it's gonna go the other direction, right? And they're gonna believe that this is the time, right? Uh, and obviously, we're not playing our greatest right now, but we are powering up in in the playoff here. And as long as we don't have a complete day off as we had in the in the final last time, uh, I think we have a good shot. Um, but definitely, Mouse has surprised me the the last few months since they had a Broland, so they're definitely a dangerous team. Can you talk to us about Brokey a little bit? I mean, I feel like he's been having a fantastic playoffs so far, right? These first couple of games that we've seen from you on stage, he feels like he's been the driving factor behind the team. I mean, is he doing anything different? How's things going for him? I think uh, we're just like powering up as we always do, right? I think uh, he brought a lot of energy uh, to the stage, right? And he's sometimes quiet in group stage. I think in, in the major, he was the driving factor for sure that we made it to the playoff. It was some tough games there. But I think right now that broke his shine is also because we are powering up as a team and he's playing and doing great moves. I think uh, he bought on Hero AK on, on Nuke and, Nuke, and yeah. kind of turned around, right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's taken that initiative we always wanted. So in this rounds where he's very confident just going for the hero K. It creates another dynam dimension of how we play and it creates a little more air for me and uh, me and Rain and, and that's where we play the best when Sign. some of the other players are doing plays. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad day in the office when he's just busting out the squeaky door and just aim mapping up in the <laughs> upper sight, right? Like that's kind of what you want out of the guy. Hey, look, I'm going to get you out of here, but uh, is there anything you want to tell these folks at home? I just want to say uh, thank you guys for supporting and I know uh, uh, we are not signing and taking pictures here in the channel so much. Everybody is super drained and we're just trying to keep us in the practice room and focus on what's important and that's winning a trophy. Um, so I hope everybody understands at home that the guys are really going through a rough time uh, as we've been turning around the world and played over 1,200 rounds uh, this year. And uh, so, yeah, love you guys. Yeah, wow, when you put it like that. Thank you very much, Finn. We're going to go ahead and switch around a little bit, though. We do need to give our respects and our commiserations over to the Astrala side. Let's hear from Device. So, device. The last time you played against Phase Clan, the team was unstoppable. Right now, it feels like I guess Phase got like the stage boost. Is that the case? I don't know. I think uh, we didn't play our best on Inferno. I think yeah, I didn't call so well. I didn't play so well. So, I mean, yeah, they were the better team today for sure. I think that we we were okay on the first two maps, especially on Ancient was good. But yeah, wasn't good enough. And uh, I think they also played pretty well. And Ruga gave us an explanation of what exactly happened on the first map, but I do want to know, like, from your perspective as an IGL, how did the first map feel? Like, why did they manage to like so successfully take so many rounds on the T side? I mean, I think they broke the economy uh, with some the, the Peter 50 round, the Hero AK, and then we had some some small like uh, X on Xs that we could have won. I don't think it was too bad. I think we played actually really well. I think that we had maybe three Ecos, if I remember correctly. And yeah, then they will get a lot of rounds. So didn't hurt too bad on the new CD side because we knew our T side was pretty good. And yeah, I think if we, maybe if we won the pistol, we could have won that. Uh, we had some good rounds that we string together. But I mean, I also think that they played well. I think that they had some good reads mid game on, on their CD side. But overall, I guess like, it's really, really like, Early to say like if like to or to even ask you like if you're like, happy with the overall performance because right now like the adrenaline is like flowing through the through the body, but if if we we try to maybe like zone out for a moment, does it feel like because like I'm gonna be honest like I think the expectations were like, were mixed because you're a new IGL but you managed to get to the playoffs and get like those guys to free maps that this looks very promising. Yeah, it does. It does. I think that. Uh... We played good down here and everyone has done amazingly as well. So, yeah, it's a learning process as well for me. It was my first time on stage uh, as an in-game leader and some of the guys first time on stage overall. So, yeah, we just take it step by step. I think, as you said, we are proud of our result. We wanted more and we feel like maybe we could have gotten more, but this was not the time and yeah, maybe next time. And what's the plan? What are you going to do to make sure that next time you'll be able to do more? Maybe to reach the grand final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean for sure, uh, we are watching all the games and talking through some of the details on the games. Other than that, maybe also try to relax a little bit. I think Pro League is, is, is we travel almost next weekend. So, yeah, try to take as much as we can from the good and the bad things and just move forward and, yeah, do our best. And I think for sure we have the potential to, to go wherever we want if we just keep putting the hard work in. Looking forward to seeing how the team grows. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Yeah, Device saying it there to keep that ball rolling. I think they're well on their way, and I think this is one of those events where we can probably look back and say, hey, you know what? We didn't really know, but now we might know. Yeah, I think, as we said, uh, two teams on very different trajectories, right, at the moment. I don't think Australis really minds losing to FaZe at this point in time. Three months from three months from now, though, yeah, they, they might mind. They just might, and it might be time for you all at home to get activated on Twitch. Check this out. It's the DHL MVP, and I'm going to be asking for all of your Twitch channel points. You can use those in the chat and submit your vote. Our candidates, I got just three of them for you, and they're going to be from one of our grand finalists. I can guarantee you that of a Brokey, at the very minimum, as he has definitely done his part in work today. Yeah, absolutely. Brokey has been great in the playoffs, in the tournament, right, uh, showing a little bit more initiative perhaps but yeah in some of these clutches mid-round situations he does some of his best work just loving playing around the squeaky door right there i mean that he helped out on nuke immensely jordan i love it i love it he's doing it with everything isn't he he's oh, really cool. all over the place it doesn't matter the map it doesn't matter the round it doesn't matter the gun he can get it done oh i like that that's got a nice little cool. kick to it <laughs> also a very cool thing going on here robin cool to be exact rops uh no stranger to being a candidate for the dhl mvp yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was one of the most, if not the most impactful uh, player for FaZe ever since he joined, really. Now, maybe getting overshadowed a little bit by Frozen, but Rob's another guy you can really count on, a very cerebral, cerebral player, rather. And yeah, one of the MVP candidates. A cerebraler, because that's exactly what Robin Cool is. Hey, check it out. Rain, Howie, after yesterday's woes, a little, you know, he had some tests there on Anubis. He finds himself now as one of the candidates for DHL MVP. Good game player, isn't he? And this was a big game. I mean, he steps up again and again and again when it comes to the stage matches. And so no doubt we're expecting that to continue over into that grand final. But very, very solid performer in this semi-final and a big reason why FaZe is able to make it into yet another grand final. And Harrigan said he thinks Rain is the most underrated player uh, probably in CSGO history, right? And he's done it again. I think he did most of his best work, CT side nuke, really bringing that home for FaZe Clan. Yeah, kind of manipulating that outside area, if you would. They had a, a field day with that at certain points. Either way, that is your DHL MVP votes, or your candidate, rather. We want your votes, and we want you to use your Twitch channel points to do just that, because we are almost completing the playoffs here. Tomorrow, just one more matchup between our grand finalists in FaZe and Mouse. So let's take a look at that bracket, just to kind of tie all the loose ends. We've been going pretty hard at it all week so when the playoffs came around Yanko what we get we got uh, quarterfinals first race face clan versus team liquid right who had their first showing on the big stage managed to grind that one out on the other side g2 vp rematch from the 2-2 game at the copenhagen major g2 disposed of them and yeah in the semifinals not so good not so good. I mean, we had some pretty competitive games. Uh, for G2. The board. Oh, yeah, for G2. Yeah. <laughs> sure, for G2. G2. Okay, I see, where, I see where you're going with that one. And fair, yes. But as far as the games are concerned, yeah, very competitive. I mean, only one of them going 2-0. Uh, and, and obviously that grand final, I feel like that that has a lot of question marks still over it. I mean, Maus and FaZe, they do match up quite often. And a lot of the times it is going to go the way of FaZe. But there's obviously still a consideration to be had for Maus and whether or not this is going to finally be their time to manage to get a win in CS2, but I guess it's the same kind of conversation actually for FaZe. FaZe Clan versus FaZe Academy. <laughs> yeah, we've heard that one before. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is a little bit of something with that one, but I, I, I'm fair to say, I believe, that we probably would have put both these teams close to the grand final, if obviously not in it, for a FaZe Clan. Yeah, for FaZe Clan, definitely. For Maus, it was the same question from the beginning. We know they play good CS, they have good individuals. Can they do it on the stage? They finally get over that hump uh, today against G2. And yeah, it doesn't get any easier against the final boss. We did put FaZe 1 and Maus 2 in our predictions at the very first day of the tournament. So oh, I don't want to say too look much. Look at you guys. Okay, okay. We must have settle okay. down, settle down. We're going to call it a day here. We've all got to go get rested up and ready for a big grand final tomorrow. And in the words of, uh, what would probably be frozen after being grenaded every single round. I know I'm going to get got, but I'm going to get mine more than I get got, though. Good night. Scooping me, people twisting up the truth.
new, this ain't new to me Since the age of 22, I've been losing it Like it's fuel to level up Like it's champagne in my cup Like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams There's a vision in my mind, it's consuming me Take my confidence, combined with opportunity Mix it up with unity Soon to be the greatest of my generation Operation Victory Fight or fly, we will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight Dangerous, dynamite Dynamite, setting fire to the clouds At the speed of light Going up the coming down Screaming Superman's kryptonite A lot of fights, big dreams met with bigger lies. It ain't what it seems from the outside. On my downfall, they pray. Will I surrender or will I betray? Given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins? I never complain. I boss up and do it. If there's a battle, I'll fight my way through it. If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it. Cause what is a blessing depends how you view it. The fruits of my labor are in abundance. Indispensable, I'm not redundant. Incomprehensible, the way I've done it. When the struggle pushes me, I'll shove it. I'll rise above it. Fight or fly, we will stay. Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Setting fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up the coming It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead at this late in the game? Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...up the set to try and win it in a 1v5. Chris, three flick, oh, they're making one by one sets, no way! He wants to... Oh, <laughs>
Thank you.